a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does the stupidity what I did to my fingers cutting onions earlier. So you remember, if you're following me on Twitter, you would have seen beginning of the year, um, I posted that my wife bought me a massive meat cleaver for Christmas because she's an awesome wife and she knows what I want, obviously. I'm no longer allowed to use that meat cleaver without her supervision. Um, I, I nearly took off the top of my finger earlier. So yeah, uh, <laughs> don't don't buy your husband sharp things if you want them to live. Um, there's that. Oh, hello everyone. Thank you for coming back once again. I'm sure you are going to enjoy this show. Um, I'm debating somebody tonight who I think a lot of you actually have seen on Facebook, uh, and um, I've certainly been told a lot about him on Facebook. Uh, his name is Garrett, and uh, he's here to debate me about the Flat Earth. Garrett, how are you doing? What's up, Greg? How are you doing today, man? I'm doing really good. Let me just get you on stream. Uh, there we go. Thank you for joining, Garrett. Um, I apologize for the previous attempt to get you on. Um, my internet is powered by hamsters, and if I don't feed them enough, I get an out of cheese error. Um, so, so there's, there's that problem. Uh, why don't you just take a minute and introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Garrett. Um, I'm from the United States. Uh, I live in Michigan. I'm surrounded by the largest bodies of water in the world. I spend a lot of time in the water. I'm a water, water person. Call me a guppy. Um, but yeah, I, um, I was, uh, I've, I've been a globe believer all my life up until a few months ago. I came across some things that I would like to say uh, are solid evidence. I uh, found myself curious and uh, scratching the surface of uh, what that silliness was about because I, I, I made fun, fun of flurfs myself. And uh, yeah, here I am. I find myself uh, talking to you now to uh, see how deep we can get into this, uh, this topic. So. so just a few months. Uh, to be completely honest with you, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's been a few months since I've been into the, uh, the ideology that the earth might not be a ball. Absolutely. You're a, you're a newbie. Fun. Um, mm. Well, m maybe I can help you today. Right, well, um, let, why don't I just give you some time then to uh, go over what you would say is some of your biggest points, um, and then we can just have a back and forth discussion about it. Um, I see the mic to you. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you 10 minutes. You don't need to use 10 minutes, but you can have 10 minutes over to you. Okay, absolutely. And, uh, and like I said, um, you know, I was a glow believer all my life. Uh, just like every single other person that went to second grade and uh, they were taught the heliocentric model. And uh, I think that's obviously the majority of all of us. Um, you know, for me, living in Michigan, uh, again, living next to the largest bodies of fresh water in the world, I spent a lot of time in the water. Um, I wanted to challenge every flurf that said that the earth was flat. And I wanted to have something to, to go by. One of the first things that, um, you know, people in this community might recognize as a black swan. The first black swan that I came across was the fact that I could see Chicago 
um, all the way from the west side of the state of Michigan. You know, living in Michigan, that's not a that's not an abnormal thing. Um, I have friends that live on the west side of the state. I can say I do not. But I have friends that live on the west side of the state. They tell me they can see it all the time. I've come, I've came across pictures. Uh, I pl I'm planning a trip this summer to spend some time and take as many photos as I can over the course of a week um, to marvel that spectacle. But when it when it really came down to it, I started to question how do you know if there's curvature or not? And there has to be some type of mathematical equation based on the heliocentric model, which for me, it was pretty simple to figure out. We all know. The Earth is, uh, you know, road, we, we've known it to rotate around the sun every 24 hours. So there's, there's math attached to that. The Earth spins at 1,000 miles an hour. That kind of puts, puts together the math pretty quickly and simply that we rotate uh, around the sun 1,000 miles an hour. We all know that. So questioning that, you know, um, what's next? What, is, is it flat? How could it be flat? So I started to put, put together the formula of a 24,901 mile ball to find out there's multiple different formulas to figure out this mathematical equation, not one, multiple. Um, I resourced to using the internet, of course, like the, everyone else does from YouTube to web pages to mathematical calculators to curvature calculators to, you know, um, uh, figuring out what is a parabola, which I do know what a parabola is, but how do I use a parabola? I haven't used a parabola in a long time, so let me figure this out again. So figured out how to use a parabola to figure out that the common census for the curvature of the Earth is approximately eight inches per mile squared. And it's squared because after the first unit of measure on a ball, of course, everything has to square. Otherwise, you'd be dealing with a slope. A lot of people get that confused. So they think, you know, after 10 miles, that would be 80 inches when, when really it's, it's actually a lot larger than that. So, you know, that was one of the first things I started to um, take a look at. I started to uh, see several different black swan, not just in Michigan to Chicago, uh, but all over the world, from the mountains in Hawaii to, um, you know, the Appalachians, all different types of things where these, these objects should mathematically be under the curve. Now... I know everyone runs to it. It's the very first thing that comes out of everyone's mouth. We all say refraction, you know, that light is bending, you know, and it's, it's, it's actually coming around the, coming around the, the globe and we're seeing things that are completely on the other side of the curve, which in the world of physics for me, didn't quite make sense. So digging into that, you know, um, I started to challenge it all. Um, obviously, um, you know, you, you think about what would you ever need to observe at a long distance. And one of the first things that came to my mind was, you know, possibly military to find out that there are military site weapons that can see can see targets that are over 100 miles away. That's an astronomical amount of curvature at 100 miles away. Now, now that to me became very, very questionable to fall down my rabbit hole, which, you know, for me, it started off with military. I started to learn about Admiral, Bur Ad Admiral Richard E. Byrd and his exploration to the ice wall. Yes, I was very suspect about that. Um, then I started to learn about um, um, radio waves. You know, radio waves travel straight. They can't curve. You know, they can't curve around the ball. You know, the Germans used uh, bombing beams where they X'd a spot. Uh, one beam several hundred miles this way, another beam several hundred miles this way to be able to coordinate uh, when... Um, uh, German bombers should drop their their bombs over certain cities at nighttime. You know, how is that possible on a globe? You know, so all, all of these things started to add up to me. Um, you know, I, I, uh, Marconi is another person. Uh, Marconi, who sent a signal, a radio signal over the Atlantic. Now, mind you, he was a pioneer in 1901, sending radio signals over the Atlantic. I know, I heard it all. They're, you know, they, he refracted it off the ionosphere, which is pretty much the equivalent of shooting a laser beam up into the sky, then bouncing it down and hitting directly to your, your target. You know, the, uh, the, the master and the slave, which, you know, are the two different coordinates that you can have on a radio. So that, you know, I found that being absolutely impossible as well. Those simple things alone, you know, were enough for me to say, I don't, I, I, I know there's something fishy here. The math doesn't add up. Either this, this ball that we are on is a lot larger than what it is, or we are not on a ball at all. So, you know, um, I, I love my country. I am an American, um, but I, I'll be, I will tell you this. I do not believe that anybody has been to the moon either. And, uh, you know, after, after observing several hours of footage, um, after watching the behavior of the astronauts that have 
said to have gone to the moon um, after analyzing the physics of a fish trying to swim in air, the equivalent of a rocket ship trying to fly in space. Um, I come to the conclusion to no longer believe that the Earth is uh, a round sphere traveling through space at two and a half million miles an hour, chasing the sun, moving in four different directions while satellites revolve around us and the moon revolves around us and the stars haven't moved in thousands and thousands of years. So my mind has completely changed about my my third grade feelings of uh, the uh, the Earth and the moon and the and the sun and the whole entire solar system. OK, is, is that you? Um, I, I, I would say, I, you know, I, I could go on and on. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll come to the conclusion of my introduction of, you know, a few of the things that were direct things that I find as solid proof uh, that the Earth is not round. You know, I, I don't think any of those physical things are possible. I don't think laser beams can curve around the Earth. Um, you know, Marconi, obviously, in 1901, uh, sent a laser beam, or not a laser beam, but a radio wave. Um, radio frequency completely across the Atlantic. Uh, you know, that's not possible on a globe, and this is 1901. So I, I just have, um, I have my suspicions. Um, I don't have all of the answers. I can't say I'm an expert by any means, but I feel like I know enough to know that the basics of, you know, if this, if this plane that we're on is round or uh, curved, it's definitely a flat plane. I don't think it's a round sphere at all. Okay. Um, wow, there, there was a lot there. Uh, and, you know, it, for me, it starts with eight inches, not to cut you off, but for me, it's yeah. just directly the curvature of the earth. And that I, I and if I could just put it in elementary school terms at, from a six foot six foot observation. So if I'm standing on the on the, the coast of a, the water line and the water is nice and perfectly still, supposedly the, the water curves around the earth because of gravity, you know, and I, I've never seen curvature myself in any instance. I've been skydiving. I've been in planes multiple times. I've never seen curvature myself, but from a six foot observation, that the horizon line should be approximately five kilometers or in American terms, three miles away. And living on Michigan, I'm six foot one. I can see, I can see boats that are definitely further than three miles away from my observation. So that, that to me is again, another su suspect thing as a Michigander. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so your main argument is that you see things that are too far, right? I, I will say yes. Uh, I mean, and you, you've you already pre-dismissed refraction as an explanation for that, which is is a very flat earther thing to do. You've already pre-dismissed that as the reason. Um, therefore, you've limited the evidence that you will actually accept. So I'll have to ask you, why is refraction not the answer to that question? I, I believe refraction distorts, like we're talking, refraction is hot and cold air creating some type of uh, bend in the medium of what we call air to, uh, to light, correct? So, you know, to, okay. assume, to assume that bending air and light is bending over a physical, around a physical occasion, then coming back around again, you know, from the plane that it could be on, from the plane of sight. We're talking a curved sight now. We're talking, you know, moving, moving something that could be 80 miles away and lifting it up several hundred feet to eye level. You know, that, that to me isn't what hot and cold air does. I, I think of more of uh, hot and cold air uh, on a pressure gradient, you get a storm. Uh, you get a hurricane, you get a typhoon, you know, you, you get some major changes maybe in your optics uh, that, you know, it, it, might, it might bend and distort what is in the distance. But are you magically making something appear from behind a curve or behind a mountain or behind a building or behind any object whatsoever? That to me seems, seems far-fetched and it feels like we're stretching and changing the terminology of what refraction actually is. Well, no, the terminology of refraction is exactly as it is. It's something that's been quantified for centuries um, since Newton, actually. Newton was the first one to do experiments with refraction to figure out what it is. Um, but the fact is that refraction doesn't always mean there's going to be a distortion. A distortion happens when there's thermal gradients that are different along your line of sight. If you have a thermal gradient that is constant, then the refraction is going to be clear. But refraction absolutely can bring things up from behind a curve. Uh, of a couple of examples on small scale, 
Um, and there's no reason why small scale doesn't also happen on big scale if there's a gradient. Um, and I just want to show you this. So this is a... Uh... Right. I'll just turn off the audio for it. It doesn't need the audio. Right. So this is on someone's driveway, right? Uh, and the driveway is, is very curved. You can I, I can send you a link to the full video where he shows the driveway out. Um, and he's got the camera on one side of the driveway... And on the other side of the driveway, he's got this um, this stack of paper with a clip on, right? Um, and what he does is he puts cold water onto his driveway to mimic the effects of refraction over cold water. Because if you've got a, a cold surface with cold air just above it that's getting warmer as it rises up, that will cause refraction and allow you to see further. So uh, I'll just play this and show you. So this is normal and then... He starts to pour water on it. Uh, so it's the curve of his driveway. There's the horizon of, of his uh, of his driveway. Uh, and you can't see the bottom part of that um, that clothes peg. So he pours just some cold water, just some cool water on it um, to reduce the temperature and make a refractive gradient. And what you see is as the refractive index changes because of the cool air, you can now see over the curve of his driveway to what was hidden behind the horizon. You now see the bottom of that clothes peg and the yellow bit of the paper that is underneath. Um, and when you see it from the full video, you see that's on a stack. You've got some colors. You've got yellow and black. But that yellow and that part of the um, peg were hidden behind the horizon. It's not distorted. There's some waves as, as it moves. But the actual sizes of everything hasn't, haven't changed in comparison to each other. A bit more water rolls along there and you can see a bit more distortion happening. Um, but in general, the sizes of those don't change compared to what they were at the start. The only thing that happened is there's the start and there's the end. The only thing that's happened is it's allowed you to see further over the driveway because refractions happened. And that's exactly, you, know, you said about um, uh, Lake Michigan, Chicago, right? That's exactly what's happening on Lake Michigan. There is, the, the, the water's cold, right? Pretty damn cold. On, on, on an average day, just above the surface of the water on that lake it's about zero degrees and then as you go up from the surface of the lake it gets warmer say the first 10 meters it goes from like zero degrees to to a little bit higher and that's called a lap the lapse rate and because there's that the um, of cold dense to warm and less dense it causes the light to bend down allowing you to see further so why why would you say it can't be the cause um I, I, I won't dismiss the fact that the bottom of the buildings um, at, at points of times with the, uh, the temperature, of course, over the water when it's hot and cold, uh, that's when you're going to see the most difference um, in the bottom of the buildings. Yes, yes. You, you very well could see more on a, on a nice, clear summer day with no wind. Uh, you're going to see less when the water is a little choppy. Uh, the chopper, the choppy water is uh, obstructing your uh, perspective view. Like I hold this pen in front of my my eyes right now, um, you know, it's cutting off a, a large portion of of the screen. And the closer I hold it to to my eye, of course, I, I see less and less of the screen. About half of the screen is blocked off, but the the size of this pen is not that big. So as as the waves, obviously, the the further you get away from a, a, a an object. In perspective, well, naturally, the, it's going to squeeze and become more and you know more smaller the the the, the further it goes out. And it Why would that happen on a flat plane? That uh, doesn't I'm make sorry? sense. It, it doesn't make sense that it would squeeze the bottom on a flat plane. The entire thing would reduce in visual size at the same time. Well, well, perspective well, doesn't make things disappear bottom up. There's nothing about perspective that says that would happen. Uh, actually, actually, it does. When when you look at no, something in the distance. If, when you look at something in the distance and the further it goes away over over a plane you're if i the further i pull this pin away from you eventually of course there could be a, a a plane directly to this camera on my phone as i as i pull this away eventually this this pin is going to disappear you know it won't, it won't disappear pin, bottom up though it will disappear in totality at the until the visual resolution is too small to see it there is nothing that would make the pen disappear bottom up um, that, that is how, that is how perspective works when it's... No, it's, it's really not. The, the mathematics of perspective completely disagrees with you on that. 
Um, I, I disagree with the mathematics of perspective on that. Well, I mean, you can't really I, disagree I with mathematics. Was, mathematics is mathematics. It's, I, it's I, something that's set. I, you can't I, just I, disagree. I, 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 I disagree with your perspective of mathematics on that. Um, well, no, no. I, I don't have a perspective on mathematics. I'm telling you what the mathematics says. Alpha equals two times the arctan of g over 2r. That means the um, entire thing will reduce in, in visual size at the same time. You, the, you, know, so you, will you will never be able to zoom in on something and bring the bottom of it back up. That can't happen. If, if something so, disappears in the distance, it's disappeared because it's got too small to see. The entire thing will disappear together and, and, until um, you can't resolve that image and it blends into the background. But it will never disappear bottom up. You this, could never zoom where, in on something and bring it back in from the bottom. This is where, this is where it, that's absolutely incorrect. If, if I were on the coastline in Michigan, standing at six foot, six foot tall, observing Chicago, and the tallest building in Chicago is 1,400 feet, right? So if we are getting a little technical here, right, from my eyes to the top of the building to the bottom of the building, perspectively and physically, which part of the building am I closer to? Am I closer to the top of the building or am I closer to the bottom of the building? If you're um, on the ground level, you're closer to the bottom of the building. But uh, let's just stop you there because this is an argument I've heard many times. What happens if you change your eye line to the top of the building and you're closer to the top of the building than the bottom? The top doesn't disappear first. There's nothing about an angle, a smaller angle, to a certain part of a thing that will make that disappear first. You have to take into the fact that the entire thing is visible and there is absolutely no reason the bottom would disappear first. Because if that was the case, you could zoom in on things and bring the bottom of them back up and that doesn't happen. That, that what you just explained, if the top were to disappear, we would have to turn the earth upside down in order for that to happen because if right I so perspective only happens distance, if it's on the floor if 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 i if i were looking at something from the distance let's say i'm back on the coast of michigan and i'm observing chicago and if i were to let's say in a in a little personal drone fly straight up in the air and now i'm at the equivalent plane of 1400 feet to the tallest building in chicago i wouldn't see the bottom disappear i would actually just see more of chicago I'm, I'm up. Yeah, and but now, now is, is that drone closer to the bottom changed. or the top of that building? I'm sorry? Is that drone now closer to the top or the bottom of that building? Um, from, from, the angular per, from the angular perspective, it's technically from the top. So why isn't the top also, of the building disappearing first? When if you were um, to, uh, you know, get, get further away, you know, that it should... What happens at the bottom should happen at the top if that's the case. But, no, like I said, if what you're saying true. is true, you would be able to zoom back in on something once it has disappeared bottom up. And that doesn't happen. Um, that, you know, if, if, if I, you're, you're saying that if, if I were to go up in a plane, I would see less of the ground? I would see less uh, According, no, you would see less of the top of the buildings according to your theory of the bottom disappearing first for some reason on a flat plane there is literally Whoa. nothing about perspective or physics that would absolutely. make in a, a you know the bottom of something disappear first Absol absolutely there is no there if, isn't there, there's again, simply you, know, you can say there is but you're wrong there isn't if, anything the maths and if, physics disagrees with you like i said if what you're saying is true then you would be able to zoom in on something once it has started to disappear and bring it back why doesn't that happen if 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 you were a photographer and you were six foot tall and you were standing i am and i am let's just say let's just say a hundred yards away from a 1400 foot building you would have to look up in the air to see the top of that building you would have to look up in order to see the top right yeah you wouldn't see you wouldn't see the top of that building you're too close to see the top of the building perspective that's a huge building now you could be on the same exact plane the same exact plane let's just say for a simulation one flat plane and the 1400 foot building is still up there right now again if you were to hold your thumb in front of your eye that would cover up half of the building that 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 is that is exactly what happens to the horizon you're you're walking away on a flat plane naturally but the so, horizon wouldn't it, cover anything on a flat plane because your eyes are above the horizon 
you, you're, you're what, what you're talking about is if like your eyes were half buried in the ground if your eyes were half buried in the ground then yes it would that's what would happen um, but your eyes aren't half buried in the ground at six foot if the earth is flat and a I'm plane saying, right know. hold on let me finish if at six foot if the earth is flat a plane right you will always be looking down at the horizon there's no reason the horizon would cover something from your eyes. From when when you're a six foot and you're looking at a at a something in the very far distance, can do you really understand like the acute angle that is? Like we're talking. Yes, yeah. The the, the, the angle doesn't a make a, a something disappear, right? And what what happens when a small angle? Um, reduces your you know, ability to see something. It doesn't make it disappear. It makes it blend into the background, right? It makes it, um, if, if something is too small of an angle for you to resolve, the Rayleigh criteria means that it, you know, it will just blend into something else. It won't disappear bottom first. And when you've got an entire thing like a building, the bottom doesn't just start to disappear. You need to take into account the, the, the size of the entire thing and the angle of that. Um, and the bottom wouldn't disappear first. There is nothing about perspective, the way that sight works, the way that physics works, the way that light works, that says on a flat plane, something would disappear bottom first. Because, and you keep avoiding this point, if that was the case, once something has gone behind the curve or disappeared bottom first, you would be able to zoom in on it and bring it back. Is, isn't that right? If what your claim um, and, is true, and, you would be able to zoom in on something and bring it back once it's disappeared bottom up, right? And you, and you know what, Craig? Yes, and that, in my perspective, has been observed, especially when I try to what? figure out how far. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. How far? I can prove to you that doesn't happen, though. The the geometric horizon to a six foot observer is supposed to be five kilometers, correct? Yeah, but we're seeing through a medium, so you know. Just just asking. Yeah. Should it yeah, should yeah. be should be so, five kilometers? Yeah, and, but and here's the thing. Talking, you don't see and, the and horizon let's, let's take, let's because you away, don't... Let's take away refraction for a minute. You we're can't take away refraction. Shape. You can't no, ever no, no, take no. away refraction. If, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm talking about the size, I'm not talking about the optics. I'm talking about the size of the Earth that you claim. Yeah, but you're yeah, looking at the horizon, the right? So you can't from, take away from, optics. From, from, but as I present my question to you, this is my presentation of my question. If we're talking about the size of the Earth, right? And especially if we're looking at the surface of the Earth... We can easily say that water is a very good tool to use for something that technically should be level, right? Yeah, water, water tends to be level. Water should be level. So if I'm a six-foot observer and, and, and I'm looking out on a very flat um, body of water, let's say Lake Michigan's very calm today, I should be able to look out five kilometers until the horizon cuts off anything behind it. After five kilometers, there's a pretty significant drop after that. And forgive me for not knowing the conversion. I'll admit I am an American. But after three, after three miles, there should be a six-foot drop. There should be a six-foot drop of observation. I shouldn't see anything that is five foot by, by physicality if, if, if this were a globe behind that. There should be a six-foot drop. And when you get further than that, when you get into observations that are 10 miles away, there should be a 66-foot drop. Now, when, when a six-foot boat can be seen at 10 miles out, when there should be 66 feet of curvature, that is, um, that's, becomes very questionable about it, the curvature actually being there. Now, I do not believe that refraction, I, I do believe this, refraction bends light. I'm not denying that. Reflection distorts light. Absolutely. I'm not denying that either. If I look out on, on Lake Michigan on a warm or cold day, I, I might see a different image in the background. You know, if it's raining. Yeah, sometimes it's I'm not there at all. Else. It's amazing. Um, but, but it actually is. And to say that it's not there at all. But sometimes you can't saying, see it at all, right? Um, of course. And, of, and yeah, sometimes no, it's, amazing. It's, it's, it's so refraction store. can make it be, it be those buildings be there or not. So does can can refraction <laughs> remove those buildings from sight? Um, refraction can absolutely remove those buildings from sight. But it so can't, right? Rain. So it can remove them from sight, but it can't so bring can them back into sight, right? But it but it's not moving them at all. They're in the same. No, place. It's, no, of course not, because not you don't see anything, and and your entire question is flawed because 
we never see the physical things. We see through an atmosphere. We, we see through a medium that has refractive properties. We see through a medium with a gradient of density that isn't always a perfect gradient, right? And then the light goes into our eyes, which also refracts that light and mm -hmm. you know, does things so our brain can interpret the sig signal. We are always yes. looking through refraction. So Absolutely. you're going, yeah, refraction exists. I just don't believe it but does that. It does that, right? So here's the question, right? Here's the question. At what point does refraction stop lifting things up? Um, I don't think refraction lifts things up. I, sh I showed a, a you it percentage. happening. Uh, uh, excuse me. I don't think refraction moves anything beyond a very small percentage. What percentage? Of, of its optical perspective. To be honest with you, I, there's I'm no such thing as optical will... perspective. Uh, yeah, there, there, there. Okay. The, the, Wait, we're the are we talking about perspective or are we talking about refraction? Which one? Because you, you're, 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 you're chopping and choosing, right? Yes. The fact is, refraction allow me, allow me happens. To, to I've speak, shown you that refraction allow happens. Me to allow me to speak and I'll answer your question. I, I, I personally believe refraction can only change the, the perspective of what is seen by maybe a fraction of a percent. I am what, not what evidence do you have for that? File it, 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 it's this is this is the proposal that I'm coming across, right? Okay, that, yeah. And I, have you got evidence for it, or is it just your personal yeah, belief? This, this uh, you know, I wish I, if I could play a video clip, I would. But there's a there's a observation you, from you, the you, uh, from, uh, you've got access from, to the screen. Share your screen, please. Share that video clip. Uh, let's see, let's see. And um. How do I I'll share my screen here? There's a big button that says share screen. Fact is, refraction happens, um, but you're just claiming it It just doesn't do it all the time. I've shown you that refraction can bring you, things back you, over a curve, if, if, if which I means the light you, bends. Craig, if I would agree with you, Craig, if, if Chicago was in two different, three different locations, but it's always in one location. I no, so, so, one sometimes Chicago, uh, uh, no, sometimes when you're looking at Chicago, you can't see it. Sometimes when you're looking at Chicago, um, you can if, see it. If, Sometimes if, you can I'll see the bottom of the buildings. Again. I'll answer right? that question again. Maybe if there, if it were raining or if it were fog. No, no, just yeah, on a standard day. I've seen it. lots of pictures of just a standard day where you cannot see it. Maybe clouds are in the way. No, no there's no clouds. It's, it's a clear day. It's, it's a standard, changed. normal, clear day, and you cannot it's see it because the, the refractive space. index are, are not is it's not right. Still, it's still in the same space. And, yeah, but you can't. Why can't you see it some days when it's a clear day? Um, because there could be moisture in the air covering up its no it was just a clear normal day i've seen plenty of just a normal clear sunny it, summer day and, 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 and you know it's what? not there's, there there's there's more days that you can see chicago than you cannot but there's you can there's, there is there. okay but there is sometimes where you can't see it right there is sometimes where you cannot see it right so and, and refraction has the ability to hide the buildings but not bring them back what we're also saying with this assumption of refraction can refraction is not an assumption uh, what I'm saying is, what we're saying is, refraction is an assumption that it can lift a building or lift an object to the eye level. Again, of the that's horizon. not an assumption. That's something that's been now, quantified. Now we, we can model it. Saying that li line of sight military weapons couldn't hit something because there is no line really of sight military hitting... weapons that you're talking about like that. There, there are line of sight military. No, weapons. no, no. There is no line of sight military weapons that can see over the curve uh military weapons that can see over the curve use things like gps targeting um or you know radar bouncing and things like that there is and, no and military radar, weapons radar uh, hold on hold on man, hold on there is no military right. weapons that can fire in a straight line and target something further than you would be able to see they have other it, means of doing the targeting and they, they don't usually fire straight they fire up and go down with gravity assists they would obviously have to shoot a projection in the form of an arc to yeah. get its yeah. maximum capacity of distance of course right? yeah and the, right. and then, and you use lots of things like gps targeting uh dead reckoning and gps targeting um, is all cell towers it's not satellite no that no, no, excuse me what a dumb thing to say why do planes have gps radars on the to uh, antennas on the top if it's cell towers uh, why can i get a gps have... signal in the middle of the ocean or the middle of a desert when there is no because cell towers around Marconi proved that in 1901, uh, 2,135 miles over the Atlantic Ocean. That's that's impossible. That's like 500 well, miles. No, again, you you actually answered the no question yourself. That ionospheric the, bouncing. In the early 1900s. Again, you they, answered they that you answered that question yourself. Yet. Ionospheric bouncing. GPS do you, do you does not really use think, radar. Do you really think? 
do you really think the pioneer of radio knew to bounce his radio signal? Yes, off the he did. He signal? knew that would happen. He did the calculations. And, 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 and do you do you realize how much curvature that is? Do you yes, and uh, that, that's Craig? why he used ionospheric bouncing. Five hundred over five hundred miles of curvature. Yeah, yeah, and he bounced the radio signal around the curve and, using and, the and, ionosphere. And Your incredulity so about animated. it that. Again, your your incredulity about it doesn't change the fact it happened. You can read the well, um, papers. You can even reproduce it yourself. In fact, they that's, use that's, ionospheric that's bouncing. Impossible. They, they, no, it's not. Get a ham fucking radio. Do in, it yourself. In 1901, he did not know what the ionosphere was. Yes, he we did. Didn't even have cars driving around at that point. He did not know what was he in the He absolutely sky. knew what to do. He sent a radio signal. Have you got any like evidence of that, other, of that? They were still trying to figure out radio at that point in time. Yeah, uh, and the he last, knew. The, he last still last knew that that would happen. The skill of doing is is projecting it up in the air and hitting a satellite uh, piece of air to bounce a radio signal off of air back down to a target yeah, again. That, that's, now, again, if you, the have you got any evidence it didn't happen? Because there's you're, evidence it did you're, happen. You're right in line, because this is the propaganda that Glovers believe. No, no, that's again, right. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're just going, it's impossible. It's propaganda without anything to back it up. Ionospheric bouncing is done all of the time. That I, I I can see where that could possibly be done, but let's admit in nineteen. Right, so it can be done. Brilliant. He was doing. Why? So uh, what, you've got any evidence done, of that claim? But... But that, it's like driving. That's like driving a car uh, 500 miles an hour in 1901. Is that possible? It wasn't possible. No, it's nothing like doing that. They're very different. Uh, ra radio is not a car, right? You keep saying it couldn't be done. He couldn't do it. What evidence it do you just have? Starting. It was uh, and what? And okay. Just so starting. why could it do the uh, ionosphere bouncing? Why could it not? What What was because wrong with rather, the radio that's, equipment that's, to do that? It, it's It's like. Learning how to put together a plane to flying a jet. You're at the beginning of this pioneer technology. Uh, yeah, and one. why didn't... He knew the Earth was curved. He wanted to try and get the radio signal across. He knew how to do it. Actually, actually, people told him that he would not be able to send a signal any further than 200 miles. Yeah, that's he why he tried to prove them wrong and did it. He, he proved them wrong on multiple occasions and he exactly, sent it directly yeah. across the ocean. Right, there's you're a, literally... Right, master, right, what you're doing is you're applying a fallacy here... A Right. What you're doing here is it, applying it, a fallacy it, called personal incredulity. That's it. You that's don't believe it. Yes, it is. That's, that's a literally fallacy. a fallacy of personal incredulity. It, 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 would, it would literally be like Marconi hitting a mirror in the sky. and then Again, more personal it. incredulity. You don't have any evidence for your claim. You actually don't have any evidence for yours. I oh, mean, I do. The I'm scientific sure papers and the, reproduce, sure you, you know, sure, the reproductions right, of it that right. are done all the time. I, Sure. Scientific paper. Somebody wrote a paper just like... Uh, and the reproductions like of the experiment like all of the time. Paid for most science. The fossil fuels are called fossil fuels because um, Rockefeller paid for that terminology. Right. Who cares? Tons of That's books. nothing to do with the fact that you can physically reproduce the experiments all of the time. That we know cannot physically be reproduced. You cannot physically absolutely one hundred percent can an experiment in nineteen oh one of bouncing over the ionosphere. I could bring up um, multiple and papers and examples with, of it being done with more and more accuracy with Marconi's instruments that he was using in nineteen oh one. We we could do it with those instruments, or we could do it with much better instruments. You are saying it couldn't happen with no evidence other than your own personal incredulity. I don't believe Cell it. Phones, Therefore, it didn't happen. Cell Cell phones to this day are still operated off of uh, of radio towers. They're, they're, they're yeah, yeah, you don't need to ionospheric bounce cell, cell phones because they're cell towers. What's that got to do uh, with Marconi doing his radio thing? Nothing at all. Because that's how radio waves work. They go over a straight plane. They don't bounce in the sky. That's but they absolutely do. Ionospheric bouncing is a thing that's done all the time. It, it, it'd be absolutely silly to think Marconi figured out how to get the very right Again, angle. personal incredulity. It would have been silly to think that. Personal incredulity, nothing more. Where's the evidence it couldn't be done? Um, it, it absolutely couldn't be done. If, if Where's I the evidence? That's a lovely me, claim. It, Please present evidence it couldn't be done. I, I, show me the mathematical analysis. Right, right, show me... show evidence you can be done. But I can, I, again, I can show you the scientific done. papers and the reproductions all the time. It's not and, hard. And obviously, I, I would love to see who, who funded those papers, too. Anyone. Know? The, the, the pharmaceutical industry, industry funds the oh, things. Oh, 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 Where, where's the evidence? Oh, the evidence is fake. Oh, my God, you've fallen hard do, do, into do the flirt. Do you expect a cover-up to be downloadable? Do, do you Anybody a file that you can, can reproduce the experiment <laughs> themselves. Anybody. The, 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 the Tuskegee experiment 
went on for 40 years in America. Yeah, you're changing the subject now. You're changing the subject that now. Was, that so that you're changing that the subject. Don't run away. Don't I, run away from the saying, subject. I, I, we're talking I, I, about... I, I, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Marconi. We're talking about Marconi and his radio and why he couldn't bounce it off the ionosphere. Throughout history, elitists have controlled the narrative by yeah. writing their books. Okay, uh, if you think that's the case, reproduce the experiment yourself. It can be done. It's done all of the time. When I did my degrees, it wasn't paid for by Rockefeller. I know that. I know that I did experiments myself and measured the Earth rotation. No one paid for me. Well, actually, the Royal Navy did because they wanted me to do a job. But to get the degree, you know, I had to do these things myself. And, um, it's clear you've never been in higher education. So... Actually, actually, I have. Thank you very much. Um, and, in and what? Gen and, and German German bombing beams are another radio frequency that proves a flat Earth as well. How how did they cross section bombing beams by bouncing them what all over the ionosphere until they found found the German angle? bombing? Could no, you uh, it was, it was, it was tell me about the German bombing beams and how they worked? Uh, it was it was radio frequencies with coordinates from one location directly over a city in another location and then they would take a secondary radio beam and cross-section that over another radio beam and they would find this lo location right over the city so when the german bombers traveled in from one direction by nighttime over and they, they would stay in the coordinates of of their beam if they went too far to the right they would what, what a beam of what a uh, radio beam a radio, radio doesn't make a, beam. Radio travels in a sphere. Um, radio radio travels in a straight line. No, it doesn't. Um, radio does travel in a straight line. It doesn't. No, curve. it doesn't. Electromagnetic frequencies travel in spheres. Um, they they may project outward, but it travels in a straight line. They don't. No, curve. it doesn't. It travels out in a sphere. I'm, I'm... Okay. And. And, and, and so, again, if it does travel out in a sphere, that means if there is curvature, and eventually we would lose the bottom half of that sphere and they would travel out into outer uh, space. And when, 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 what, what was, when did the Germans use these beams? Um, World War II. Uh, and what were World they called? What, what, time, you, what you, kind you of could, beams? You, you, could actually, you could actually look up a Wikipedia and there's information about it. And if Wikipedia is your, your choice of figuring out something to travel down a, a, a line to find the next thing. This, these were, these were top send of the me a link line for it. radio, these were top of the line radio frequencies. You know, the Germans had all different types of technology that was well more advanced than America at, at the time of World War II. They were way more advanced with a lot of different things. Part of the reason why we adopted them in project, uh, Operation Paperclip after the World War II, you know, they were, they were specialists at rocketeering and aeronautics. And of course, radio, radio and radio frequency, you know, they, they were on top of it all. And so how else do you get these, these perfect coordinates, radios coming from one direction, radios coming from another direction, black airplanes filled with bombs. They, they knew exactly where to fly over. They get the, they get the secondary signal, secondary signal would, would ultimately tell them this is where you drop your bombs and they would drop their bombs. They wouldn't even need to see the, the, the target underneath that that's advanced. Yeah. That's, okay. So that's advanced right. for its time. I think you're talking about the the X Garrett thing, right? Um, which was a navigational aid used by the Germans in World War II. Um, here's the thing: they're only short-range navigational aids, like pretty short range. Um, according to the research I've just quickly done, uh, as it was short-range navigation aid that was only effective up to a distance of about 200 kilometers, 125 miles from the transmitter. Uh, longer range, the curvature earth would cause the beams to gradually diverge, making it more difficult for the receiver in the plane to accurately determine its position relative to the beams. To address this problem, the Germans developed a longer range navigation system called the y gerrit which used a series of radio beacons located along the flight path to guide bombers to their targets over the curve of the earth. The y gerrit system was more accurate than the x gerrit over longer distances and could account for the curvature of the earth by using a complex set of calculations based on the aircraft's altitude and the distance between the beacons. However, even with these advanced navigational aids, bombing accuracy was still far from perfect and many civilian areas were hit, unfortunately, during bomb and raids aid at military installations. There we go. No problem. I mean, if, if you want to read that off of a website that you just study for 30 seconds and I were to just simply go along with it, just like anything else, I would say sure. Yeah, you're right.
Look, sounds legit. But yeah. in the measurement in the measurements of the coordinates of uh, measuring the Earth, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? Um, it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense that they would set up multiple different locations to send a signal to the next signal to send to the. That's next exactly signal. what they did. And if you research that, you'll find out that's the case. That was I mean, called sure. the. 30, what you were talking seconds, about first is just the X Garrett system, the Y Garrett system. Um, uh, used a complex set, uh, uh, used radio beacons located along the flight path. So there was radio beacons that the Germans would put in place beforehand to guide these bombers to their location. It's amazing and, what and just again, a really quick bit of research yeah, can do, isn't it? 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 It's it's a, it's amazing what thirty seconds of research will send you down to to tell you to stop looking and that's it. And the Lorraine. What system, I, can, the Lorraine is anything wrong? Right, is anything wrong with what I've just said? Can you debunk what I've just said? When they specifically um, talk I, about I, making it better to account I, for the curvature of the Earth to make it a longer navigational aid? Have you got any evidence I, that isn't I, the I, case, or do you just not believe I, it because it doesn't fall in line with your narrative? I'm, I'm completely open for anything and everything. I'm not completely convicted about anything in life. I've, I've changed my mind about multiple things in life over and over again. That's I'm great. So look at the evidence and maybe change it again, because the evidence about the German bomb and things shows that the Earth is actually curved, and they specifically took it into account. Well, you you actually took you took a statement from um, that Marconi, Marconi was able to bounce something off the ionosphere and just made that happen as well. When yeah, again, we can reproduce and, that and, with and, the frequencies and, that were used. Call, call me call me bias. Call me bias. You're biased. But in 1901, 1901, you're saying that he had some type of spectacular understanding to be able to do something that didn't even. We knew the ionosphere existed. And how how was that possible? Because we studied it. What did we study? How did we know? Because we knew what the density of the atmosphere how, was. How, how, much, how much exploration of the sky did we do in 1901 to say this is a matter of fact? We've been able to study that things were in the sky and we knew what the ionosphere was. We didn't know what the ionosphere was in 1901. Yes, we did. We did not. We did not know. What have you got any evidence of that? You're making claims, but you don't have any evidence. We, we, we didn't even have planes. What could we study from that far away? How do you study something that you can't observe or touch with your hands? How do you prove something like that? You can't. Just like every other philosopher of the sciences before them, they made an uh, uh, educated guess. That's as about as far as you can go with anything that you're not touching with your own hands, just like the sun, moon, and stars. You can make an educated guess at best. Right, so right, here's the thing. Um, fact. Uh, Mar Marconi actually came after someone else. Um, and he very well could have. I'm, I'm sure there's uh, other people that have... Oliver Haverside. Um, Al Al Oliver Havenside, um, mm -hmm. British physicist, radio pioneer. Uh, Haverside was experiment with radio waves and noticed that signals were being reflected back to Earth from the upper atmosphere. At a time, it was believed that radio waves could only travel in straight lines. So, it, the, you know, someone basically discovered that that happened, right? You don't need to specifically know about the quantities... Um, I mean, if, if you, if you think really deep down in your spirit that that is what happened, that in 1901, have, have you got any evidence that that isn't the case? I don't believe if, anything. If, if, I don't have beliefs. You, you, I base my Craig, position on Craig, evidence. Craig, you sound Craig, hopeful yourself. not Craig, 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 you yes. sound hopeful yourself. That well, I, I've got evidence. Couldn't... You don't. It's simple you, as that. You actually don't have evidence. You have something you pulled up on a web page, just like I. Yeah, up on a evidence well. about it. Yeah, and, I could, and, I could and, send and, you all the papers for... and everything and research it yourself. But the evidence I, that is have, easy. This is how easy it is to find the evidence. It took no, me no, no, thirty no. seconds to find the evidence that you are wrong. No, 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 no. That's not how research works. You can't just declare something that you looked up for thirty seconds. But the the research took thirty seconds. That's all it took. Marconi absolutely did not, in 1901, have a computer, have any type of instrument... He didn't need a computer! Exact, um, to, to come up with exact measurements of coordinates, you need some form of calculation higher than... Yeah, you can do that. You've got people who've got a brain. Com calculations have been done for years without and, computers, and so, dude. And, and so when you look up at the sky, and there's a blank open sky, you can see all these stars and the moon. How do you know how far the ionosphere is? How do you know how far the troposphere is? How do you know because we've measured it? This layer of the atmosphere. Again, this is gonna uh, again, I can sit at again, times. it was something that was discovered very close to the time of Marconi. 
they, they discovered, oh, wow, it appears that radio signals bounce off the upper atmosphere. Oh, that's amazing. And then and, and, that that was actually that was literally the discovery of the ionosphere because of what um, Oliver Heverside did. Right. And then Marconi took that knowledge. Right. And bounced a signal using the ionosphere all the way across the Atlantic. Over 550 miles of curvature, huh? Yeah, because it bounced around the curve using the ionosphere. And and it was still a strong signal, and he got a nice clean signal after bouncing. It wasn't that the... strong. It, it, it was a lot weaker than when it left. I mean, naturally, it's going to be no matter what. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right, no matter what. So I mean, and it wasn't like it wasn't like, like they were sending, you know, really high data. It was like clicks, and you know, um, and, 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 that was and, it. And, and, it's, yeah, they sent a letter S as far as uh, the, 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 the code goes, as far as uh, okay. um, sending a signal. So uh, a what, kind of, what, what, transmitter beep, did Mar what kind of transmitter did Marconi use? Um, you know what, exactly off the top of my head, I don't have the, I don't have the, the well, call. This is kind of your, one of your main things, right? Um, I do know that he sent a signal over the Atlantic, yes. Did yeah. I look yeah, into uh, the exact instrument? Did I look into the exact instrument? Okay, okay. so I did not. It is, is ionospheric bouncing possible, yes or no? Um, to my understanding, from what I read online, from what I read in a book, I can say that, yes, it, it is possible, but I've also been told that um, you, should, you should take this medication that's an experiment as well that didn't turn out so well either. So, me personally, I am very skeptical of that being honest and truthful, that you could b bounce something off the ionosphere. Even so though I'm it's skeptical. literally done all of the time by people. Um, you know, the... The people going into space, I see fake... We're not talking about people in space. I'm talking about, say, radio ham, uh, ham radio operators. Radio ham I, operators. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't believe that they are being honest and truthful. I don't really? Believe so everyone, like every single person in the world that owns a ham radio is a liar. Is that what you're saying? Um, Why don't you go and get one yourself and try it? Instead of calling that's people a, a liar, idea. that's an extremely I, I would, I would, dishonest love, thing to do. I've, I've, I've in fact, it's a pretty horrible, thing disgusting thing to do. It. I don't believe it. Therefore, everyone's a fucking liar. Do you know how many people in the world own a fucking ham radio? And according to you, they're all liars. What a dumb uh, thing to say. Bouncing, bouncing something off the ionosphere. Yes. I, I mean, you just it said it is reason. possible. If uh, I said, I said from what I read online, and if I were to do a thirty-second search, of course, that's what I would see that it's possible. But right, I so you doubt it's possible. possible. I don't believe it's possible. What do you what do you I, base I that so what do you base that on? Yes. Um it, it it doesn't make logical sense. Um physics doesn't care about your logical any, sense. It, right? It Could you explain any, to me mathematically make, why we couldn't bounce a signal off of the ion sphere? Because we're we're talking about air. Yes. Well done. Right. So so to me, this is another reach. To keep the globe together because what you're saying is you're sending even a laser beam even light for that matter they they have similar characteristics to radio so you're t also telling me that if i could bounce a radio wave off the ionosphere i could shine a laser beam up to the ionosphere and that would bounce as well that, no, that would bounce off the no. ionosphere or right, do you know do you know why you, if it's right, right okay media. stop one sec right uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you quite understand. It's not just that. Do you know why signals bounce off the ionosphere? Why do they? Do, do you know? Uh, why do they? Is that a yes or a no? Um, do you know? My my only assumption. I'm only my only assumption of the of the science. Um, which I would call pseudoscience is that somehow, some way, it's bouncing off some layer of atmosphere that has some type of property of median to allow it to do so. Other than some that, time, as, as some kind of property thinner thinner, of media doesn't make sense. Look right. Back. Okay. So um, the ionosphere is a layer of Earth's atmosphere. Uh, I know what it is. 50, I don't need a class. Is it, is it exactly 55 it to like 90? But anyway, um, solar, like the sun sends out radiation to us all the time, right? Uh, and it's hitting our atmosphere. The ionosphere is in a layer where that, that solar radiation uh, is it gets captured so that layer of the atmosphere becomes charged right so there's charged particles electrically charged particles in the atmosphere that's what that? they yeah the northern lights prove it 
pretty or is damn that fucking the story well. that you've been told that you obviously agree with it's kind of like a religion again the, this is your story we, yeah we like can test these things the story of jesus christ uh, again we can the test well, the floods we can test these things shut up we can <laughs> test these things it's not just in a book we can test these things to see if it's there we've been to the ionosphere we know that there's charged particles there right and it's those charged particles that bounce the the radio do we signals know back there? Do we yes know we've that? measured them we have yeah. And, and how are those measured? In nanograms, nanopounds? They're just charged... Why don't you, uh, why don't you look it up and, uh, and find out? But the, we know the ionosphere contains an area of charged particles. We can, we can, there's many different ways to tell that, right? And one of the ways to tell that is the northern lights. The fact that the charged particles in our atmosphere react to solar rays and give these wonderful displays of bright lights that actually recently I can see from where I live. And I live in Michigan. I could see them too. I'm pretty, pretty north to the. North. Yeah, that is the ionosphere and charged particles. Um, I mean, cool story if you want to say that. Again, sure, there's evidence but... that this is the case. We've measured that there's an area in our atmosphere that contains charged particles, and that is what bounces back the signal. Well, Again, yeah, now, if you're just going to go, now, I don't believe it. That's more of your you fallacy of personal incredulity. Do, does it sound far fetched that? This um this this charged layer of particles could possibly be the firmament. There's but no that, such that, thing as a sounds, firmament. I mean, right? I mean, that sounds far fetched to you because it's not in a book or on a web page that you can look up but, in thirty seconds. But there, so it's it's silly now, right? Firmament. A, uh, yeah, but firmament doesn't mean that. Make, Again, right? Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. If we're going to talk about firmament, we need to actually look yeah. at what firmament meant in the Bible, and in the Bible, firmament means expanse. I mean, that's one interpretation, just like there's many interpretations. It's literally what the original Bible. translation says. It's not I mean, an interpretation. If, if you want to say there's one definition for the word, sure, you could think that. Yeah, that's but what the original many... trans... Rakia, that's the word they used, which literally translates as expanse. And there's an expanded dome over... No, no, an expanse, Earth. not an expanded dome, an expanse. And an expanse of this space that we're in. Space, There's yes, that's pretty much what it meant. Space that we're in. But look, all you've got so far is, here, you know, here's sense. the things that well, happened, but I don't believe it. Have you got any now, evidence Craig, it didn't happen? Now, Craig, now if you told me that they bounced a radio wave off the firmament, and, they, and it bounced back down, and there was obviously proof of the firmament, then that would make sense that they bounced. Oh, so you'd believe that there was a firmament there? But you don't believe there's a layer of charged particles. You know That's I, you know called cognitive believe? bias. You know what I don't believe? You know what I simply just don't believe? I don't Anything believe about physics, bouncing. maths, tying your shoelaces? I'm that, not sure. It's, I don't believe that we're bouncing a radio signal off of air. I believe It's not air. It's charged air. particles in the ionosphere. I, right, we we just be, had this conversation. Well, uh, sorry, was there maybe well an be injury in your childhood that prevents you from converting short-term to long-term memories? Right. Because we just had that conversation. You can call it tomato, tomato. You can call it charged air. I call We're it not permanent. talking about salads. It's, it's, uh, it's charged not, particles. It's definitely, not, it's definitely not bouncing off of the, the sky to go back down to the earth. Uh, to, have you got any evidence of that? Because we can literally do it all the time. And, and if that was the case, what are satellites for? Because they do different jobs. I mean, really? I mean, yeah. Tony figured it out in Trains exist. Why that doesn't mean cars don't. Cool? They do different jobs. I mean, can't we just send a radio signal off of the, the, the uh, ionosphere? Everybody no, because that doesn't do I mean, all the jobs that satellites that? do. That doesn't do all the jobs that satellites do, so no. I mean, why not? It's, because it's just, satellites are up in space it's, to do different it's, jobs it's, it's than bouncing radio years. waves. We haven't mastered that? <laughs> like, come satellites on. do different jobs than bouncing radio waves. Uh, sure they do. And they're all suspended by helium balloons as well. <laughs> no, they're really not. You can track them in space yourself in an area that is, you know less than 10 to the negative 17 tour a balloon yeah, wouldn't work you there track them, you could track them and they're suspended by helium balloons and uh, again balloons would not exist in that place and they could uh, the balloons do not travel seventeen thousand miles an hour and you can literally prove that satellites travel that fast i mean if they traveled that fast that's faster than a speeding bullet and that's way absolutely... faster yeah yeah and that's absolutely insane to think that the Earth Why? is spinning traveling chasing the moon tidally locked with the moon and we and we ourselves put something so in more space personal while incredulity we're moving, while we're moving around hundreds of thousands of miles but it's more more personal incredulity i mean let's let's 
just be logical. Does that make sense to you? That we could tidally lock something while we're moving it's, millions it's of miles? It's been demonstrated that it's the, it, it happens. It's a lie. That's absolutely You got any lie. evidence? You got any evidence it's a lie? I, I, actually, you don't have any evidence that a satellite just floats in space. By, yes, we by, do. Like, literally, you're, you're saying that we yep. hunted them I literally know people that, have, uh, that, that track them and see them there. And, and, and I actually know people space. that put satellites in space. In fact, there's someone in the chat space. right now that put something on the moon. And, oh my god, I don't believe that. There well, you can believe it all you want. Professor Philip Bell literally worked with the Indian Chandraya mission to put something on the moon. It, it didn't really, it wasn't successful. It crashed into the moon and exploded. But, uh, technically, he put something on the moon. No one's been to the moon. They, they absolutely have. To the moon in 1960s. They absolutely did, 100%. Stanley, Stanley Kubrick directed one of the best movies ever seen in the world. No, he did not. And that's, that was, it was called... Well, he did direct Adam. one of the best movies, A Clockwork Orange. A Clockwork Orange was pretty good. And, and Space yeah. Odyssey came out a year before Apollo 11. He was completely cool. involved in both productions. Yeah, and look, uh, look at Apollo, Space Apollo Odyssey space compared space. to the moon landings. Apollo, Apollo 11 was Space Odyssey 2. It was, it you got, was like you got any evidence that Stanley Kubrick did that? Or are you just claiming things? No, because all you've got is claims. And, and literally, all you have is claims and personal incredulity. Every time you speak, it's a fallacy of personal incredulity. I don't believe that happened. That sounds stupid to me. It doesn't make sense. You not understanding physics is more of a you problem. I mean, I, I like to challenge science. I'm, I'm not a monolith. Well, you don't have the ability um, I, to challenge science, so you probably shouldn't. I, I definitely have the ability to challenge science. Absolutely, all the time. Um, I'm a human being. I have no, a mind. You, 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 um, you genuinely don't have the ability to challenge science because you don't understand what I, science I, does. I, I don't blindly accept science. I don't blindly accept. No one. I don't blindly accept science. I look at evidence and base I, my position on evidence. I mean, but you can't you look at the 30, evidence because you don't have the you ability to analyze it. Research. If you call thirty seconds of research looking at the science, that's your thirty seconds of research. I do a little bit more than that. I don't take medication that's expensive. Well, you, you, you say you've done more, but you couldn't even find out that the German bombing beams were only for short range and they actually had to invent a further method to account for the curvature of the Earth. You I, did research, totally but you didn't have, find I that totally, out. I totally, I totally could have grabbed my phone and looked that up myself as you So did. why have you I done mean, the that's, research? That's, did you not find that out already? Um, it, it was one of the little things that I didn't really look that far into the details. Oh, right. I mean, so you did the research, I, I, but you didn't I, look I, at the things I, I, that I, I found in 30 a, seconds. I, I, I do have a list of other things that I could totally get into more detail with you about, though. I mean, like that's what? one of the things I didn't I didn't uplift that page. And, I, and like I told you halfway through this podcast, I don't have all the answers. I just know it's not a globe. I know for sure it's not. Oh, a globe. I don't know what it is, know, but it's I, definitely not a globe. Um, yeah, well, how come I measured the Earth's rotation? How come I've confirmed the measurements uh, and the, the, you know, how, the distances? How come I was able to do those things? To, to do what again now? I, I literally measured the Earth's rotation myself. I mean, you can, you can perspectively say it's the Earth's rotation. Well, no, it absolutely is the Earth's rotation. It matches all the predictions of the Earth's you rotation. Can, you can perspectively say it's the Earth's rotation. You can perspectively say it's the sun going around the Earth as well. Uh, there's uh, the sun. In what, in what way? In, uh, hold on, hold on. No, I didn't use the sun in any way, shape, or form. The sun has how nothing to do with my experiment. experiment. I used a pendulum. I'll be more open-minded. How did you conduct your experiment? I used a pendulum. And what is that? Simple mean? as that. You what can use a pendulum and the Coriolis force is applied by a spinning Earth to calculate your latitude on Earth based on the data you receive. Right? See? Can I ask you something? Well, let me finish my point. Right? If okay. you start a pendulum swinging, as it's going backwards and forwards, it's a freely moving object and influenced by the forces of Coriolis. Okay? Okay. Depending on your latitude, different amounts of forces will be applied. At the poles, a lot more. At the equator, a lot less. Different in between. You can use the amount that a pendulum drifts off of a straight line path whilst it's swinging to find your latitude on Earth using Foucault's sign law. Because the Earth is rotating, it imparts these forces called Coriolis onto, these mo onto this moving object, the pendulum. It's something that can be done anywhere around the world and you can use nothing but the data you gather to calculate your latitude on Earth, which I've done, which thousands of people do every year, because everyone that does a physics degree does this experiment. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Can, can you apply Coriolis to any other thing under, other than your pendulum? Anything that is a moving object on a rotating frame has uh, Coriolis okay. forces applied. So I, the first two things that come to my mind, I think a bullet. If you say helicopter, I'm gonna I, scream. I, I think, 
Uh, yep, bullets and, and something traveling yep. by air. Like bullets plane, absolutely do uh, divert snipers that fire over a kilometer actually have manuals to uh, account for that. So do artillery manuals. They have man uh, manuals, that, uh, tables that will tell you how to account for the rotation of the earth and the Coriolis forces applied. Um, so like yes, snipers absolutely take it into account. Um, artillery right, fire takes right. it into account. Planes, however, um, are powered by engines which have much bigger forces than the Coriolis that's being applied. So, so, um, uh, in the Guinness Book of World Records, the longest shot from a rifle, um, I believe it's just over four miles. Now, they were from an elevated location. Um, they shot it. I think they took them three shots before they actually hit the target. Um, but he didn't account for Coriolis to do that at all. Yeah, he did. Um, yes. Yes. He, no, the guy that. No, no, he, uh, uh, actually, we interviewed the guy he and he absolutely did. Absolutely not. He didn't. No, no. We interviewed the guy because he. Um, Flat Earth kept saying that. We interviewed the guy, and he absolutely did. That he accounted for Cori Coriolis. Yes. And and and, but planes don't have to. Planes are powered by engines, which provide a greater okay. force than the Coriolis. Pilots are that, constantly that, making corrections so... for. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. Let me answer your question. Pilots are okay. constantly making corrections for all kinds of forces being applied, from wind, from pressure, from pressure changes, from temperature changes, from Coriolis. You know, you, you don't just wait. Oh, it's a massive thing that's happened. Then I'm going to correct. They're, you know, the the pilot and or the autopilot will be constantly making adjustments to keep the plane in a particular direction. The engines um... supply a force. Bullets do not have engines. Actually, in most situations, once a pilot gets to elevation, he's not really touching anything. He's flying in a straight path until he gets to. His yeah, end. they will do adjustments constantly. Hardly, hardly ever. Uh, and, um, again, um, there's a pilot in my chat that would disagree with you. In fact, I'd, there's many pilots in my chat all the time. Wolfie sixty twenty, one of my good friends, who's uh, you know a, a professional pilot and posts stuff all the time. No, pilots have to constantly make adjustments. They're they're keeping their eye on the thing. But so when they put the autopilot on, that's what it does, right? So you know, if the plane starts drifting off of the path, they make an adjustment to change it, right? That's what the, their job is. The biggest adjustment. That they would have to make robert greenlee in the chat right now a pilot is saying you are wrong so are you arguing with pilots if, 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 sure sure i i will I'll, I'll have a debate with anybody i mean so I you're arguing with feedback. pilots about flying the plane right i appreciate his feedback but it i didn't ask for it either but wait but so let, let me let me just clarify though you're saying that the pilot is wrong about flying planes what i'm saying right now is that if someone were to fly allison's here as well yeah south from north to south to south to north, they would have to adjust dramatically to the Coriolis effect. Flying from north Why? to south. Why? Uh, can you tell me the maths and the forces involved? Uh, Coriolis is a tiny, 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 tiny force. Sure. Okay. So, right? So and a plane that, person, has an engine that gives person, a really, really, really big force. Gun, the person that shot a gun would have to adjust for it, but a yeah. person flying a plane would not, you said. Again, a plane has an engine and the pilot is making constant adjustments. So a bullet doesn't have a projectile force? Like a, like a plane? The, uh, a projectile a is ballistic, not powered. Once, okay. a, once, once the bullet is fired, there's no more power being applied to it. It doesn't it's have an engine. At that point. Right. Yes. It's, it's consistently slowing down at that point. Yeah, a right? plane doesn't do that. A plane has an engine applying a force constantly. A plane is not a bullet. These aren't things I should have to tell a grown man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course not. A, 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 a plane is not a bullet. And, and that being said, a plane itself would have to adjust for curvature on a round ball. It wouldn't just fly straight. So uh, according to the pilot, in the, one of the pilots in the chats, there's actually a few of them there. Uh, Robert, Alison, a couple of others. Uh, he says, Coriolis has an effect of mean inches per mile. They don't care about it because they're right. constantly it's, making adjustments. It's such a tiny, tiny, tiny amount that everything size. else right. on the plane, you know, the, 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 the forces from the wind in the air Doodle is going to do more than the Coriolis. Something that's not measurable or testable or duplicated. It's absolutely measurable and testable because we but, can measure and test it. In a book, we're going to put it in a book so you stop looking for the detail. Uh, again, so you're, you're it saying, is measurable okay, and testable. It. You can measure it and test it. Right? Do you know why the Coriolis happens? Um, the, the story that I'm given is that the Earth is rotating. And that is why. 
and course, so and what does that do to something at the equator it's rotating at the equator at a thousand miles an hour so of course no you don't rotate you... in miles per hour um you, you, you there's a tangential velocity of a thousand miles an hour at the equator the okay tangential velocity of yeah. the earth that's what rotating on its axis at a thousand miles an hour right am, am no I you wrong? don't rotate in miles per hour it has a tangential velocity of miles per it, it, of miles per hour it's rotating around its axis at 0 0.000694 rpm okay and then at the equator the equator is moving at a thousand miles an hour yes correct? it has the tangential velocity yeah okay so as the equator moves at at, at a thousand miles an hour and the further you go north or south away from the equator of course the earth slows down right yes well done that's that's the, that's the storyline right i learned that in third grade right so depending on the distance that you travel and then particularly if you're if you're traveling in a very fast plane like a concord that travels 1300 miles an hour big hey, engine on a concord you, well i'm sorry Big engine yeah, on a concourse, very, very, very big much big bigger than the forces but, applied by Coriolis. But, but but you would also think that flying that fast, which is rather you know you're traveling a, a very fast distance, speed in a doesn't increase of an hour, the force applied. You you would have to curve down to be able to stay on the ball. Otherwise, you become no. a rocket ship and you. Oh my fucking to... god! You didn't just say that, did you? I mean, is it a rocket or is it a ship? What do rockets do any differently? A rocket. At what point? A plane isn't a rocket or a ship. A plane is a plane. Right? Planes fly by once they're at an altitude. Right? You can keep the engines at a certain thrust because then you've got the pressure of the atmosphere. You've got the um, the drag and you've got the gravity pulling you down. Right? Once you're matching all those, for, once you're matching all those forces, you can just keep it at that level, and the plane will follow the curve of the Earth because that's where the pressure goes. There's a curve this of pressure around the Earth. So the plane will just follow that curve. There's no reason it would go off into space. That's fucking dumb. Why would it follow? Why would it follow a curve? Because so does the straight? pressure. The pressure that the plane is basing its its everything on. You know, once you balance out all the forces for the you know the the pressure of the atmosphere and everything, uh, the only way to then rise or or you know rise or fall is to adjust for those forces and that because pressure band no dis that pressure band no wait, wait let me let me answer the question that pressure band that the plane is in follows the curve of the earth so if the plane is set to have its thrust and everything matching that pressure band it's going to naturally follow the curve of the earth of that pressure band it couldn't go off into and space because that would require the pilot putting more thrust at, at a at a at a at a point if a Concorde is driving, if flying at 1,300 miles an hour, it's either going to meet its maximum altitude or it's going to have to arrow the, aim the nose of the plane down. No, one again, other, it just follows the, the pressure band of the Earth. That's one it. One of the other need to happen. One of the no, other again, it just happen. follows the pressure band. If it is in the band of pressure around the Earth that also curves, the plane is naturally going to follow that. You wouldn't need to tilt your nose down. Because the, the pressure and the atmospheric density and everything that the plane is set up to be in follows a curve. So unless you then change what's happening, you add more thrust or reduce the thrust, the plane will naturally stay in that curve of pressure. You don't need to fucking put your nose down because gravity if, if pulls towards were... the center of the Earth all of the time. If that were the case, the direction it is of the case. gyroscopes... If, if that were the case... The direction and the position of gyroscopes would change from the point of takeoff um, and landing. Well, mechanical gyroscopes have things called pendulous vanes, which actually keep them in alignment with gravity. Um, other gyroscopes, it's interesting you should say about gyroscopes, because um, a good friend of ours did, did stuff with gyroscopes. If yeah, the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means wait, wait. that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. How much, Bob? A 
15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Thanks so if much. If the for that. Earth is spinning. Um, so, yeah, we can use gyroscopes to show that the Earth is spinning. And planes, modern planes, have like three of those gyroscopes, your pitch and roll, um, that actually can determine your position on Earth based on the fact that Earth is a sphere and rotating. And if a pilot tries to fire up his, uh, his plane and his position navigation computer doesn't match what the gyroscopes say, plane doesn't start. All, all gyroscopes do that or just the, uh, the new modern one? The, the, the modern planes that use ring laser gyroscopes, but mechanical so, gyroscopes so also mechanical, mechanical gyroscopes uh, also detect the rotation of the Earth. Because after um, those flat earthers bought that gyroscope, and uh, oh shit, that that actually shows that the Earth rotates. Oh, you know what? That must be some magic ether. What we do is we hire someone, an, a flat Earth engineer, and we get that flat Earth engineer to make a mechanical gyroscope because there's no way a mechanical gyroscope would be affected by those things absolutely so they, a mechanical they, they, gyroscope could be affected <laughs> um, absolutely so, digital things digital things have flaws mechanical things always have uh, flaws. but but, but um, I mean, a mechanical about, gyroscope a wouldn't be computer for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, a mechanical gyroscope wouldn't be affected by the same things um, electromagnetic forces or whatever magic they were talking about as a ring laser gyroscope because they're saying about how it would alter the path of the light and everything so a mechanical gyroscope doesn't use that it's a physical thing so the flat earth is like right we get this engineer to build a mechanical gyroscope and there's no way that that could pick up um, a rotation because it won't be able to register these electromagnetic heaven energies so that approved that the earth's not retained so they got a guy called stephen p to build this an amazingly accurate mechanical gyroscope, a beautiful bit of technology that he built. Problem is, when they span this gyroscope up, this mechanical gyroscope, it also measured the rotation of the Earth at exactly the same rate. And whichever axis they put it in, they even like pinned it in certain axes to see what they would get. And then they could use a sign law to figure out what, um, what drift they should find. And funnily enough, the flat earther totally agreed that this measured the rotation of the Earth. Do you know what the, the flat earther I showed you before, Bob? Do you know what he did? He tried to sue this guy and get this video hid. So uh, it's amazing that even flat earthers can actually measure the rotation of the earth, right? Um, I mean, if they can measure it, that's amazing. Um, in, in, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't calculate for me. Um, I'm, I'm Why not? Honest. Because you don't believe that it. Um, Honestly, because I have made observations of seeing... Because you've got a pre-chosen pre uh, conclusion yeah. that no other I'm, evidence will allow you to, to you know, change your conclusion, right? I, I'm, I'm open, but I'm left Clearly to not. believe NASA. I've left to believe NASA. And I, haven't, I haven't mentioned multiple, NASA once. I've, I've, I've watched multiple Flat videos. Flat Earthers love NASA fake, more than, than, than us. Flat Earthers talk about I NASA way more than we do. I've watched multiple videos of fake ISS videos. No, you haven't. Um, you just I, don't I, understand I, what's going on. I'm, I'm telling you exactly. I no, no, you just don't understand what's I've going seen, on because there's I've, no fakes. Seen, so when I see a rat in space, can you explain There is no rats me? in space. Oh, my fucking God. Um, let me just see if I've Hold on, why are you upset? Here. I'm telling you what I saw. You're, you're there is no rats. I, I know exactly what you're space. talking about. SpaceX, Falcon 9. Um, uh, right, so what you're actually seeing on that is... Well, I'll just bring up the website. That's easier. Uh, what you're and, seeing and then, is and, not a rat. Um, uh, it is a solid exhaust waste. Um... And I'll, I'll, I'll show you the video and, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't believe that flat earthers are still saying this. That must be how new you are because even other flat earthers don't go with that nonsense anymore. Uh, so I before mean, you, before I, you get into any harnesses, further about seeing rats in space, space. You, you haven't, you haven't seen the, 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 the fake, uh, uh, hairspray that these girls put in their hair and they're, that, well, well around, so why are there, why is their necklace floating then? Is the hairspray they, on they that as well? Like wigs? Yeah. There's, there's the guy that had the CGI necklace floating around. You know, oh, that was, that was CGI. CGI. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah. anyway, um, here's, come on, it, it, if, if their hair is sticking in one direction and, and flat earth WS is one of the worst propaganda pages you could refer to, honestly, propaganda, they have contradict, they have contradict propaganda, is that, is that it? And Pres yeah, propaganda. yeah, actually, oh. and, and, and actually Craig, if you could, you can go directly to the eight inches per mile squared, where it says it's only measurable for distances up to hundred miles. That's absolutely false. And it's absolutely wrong because the math of eight inches per mile follows, follows the curvature of the earth and it doesn't even deviate from a circle. The, pro the 
Pro, but it depends parabola. on how you're using. If you use it right, parabola, yeah. But flat earthers don't use it right. Eight inches. Let me just let me just finish my statement. Right, right, we're gonna do. We're, we're I, gonna do uh, one thing at a time. You're jumping around, right? You say, made I, I, a claim. I'm gonna stay, yeah, stay, stay on eight inches. And no, no, well, no. We're doing this about. first. We're doing this first because right. this is what you just brought up. But you it's said, false information. It's false you said information. That there, uh, you said that there was a mouse in space, I'm, right? I'm, and we're going to show I'm, you videos. Stop, stop, stop. I don't you're, care you're, if you like the website or not. It just contains information, all right? And I'm going to show you a video. Page. I'm just going to show you a video that didn't come from this page. It came from SpaceX, right? So you just said there this was a the mouse. propaganda page. Uh, you say it's propaganda because you don't like it. You you say I'll there was a mouse. It's propaganda that you say, listen, will you shut up and listen? You say there was a mouse. Just watch this before you, you know, <laughs> so, flat earthers say that it was a mouse. Uh, but, that, but, that wasn't what well, I'm no, talking. I, I, I I'm talking. I'm talking. Speed it up right. and have a look, right? And you can see what's happening. There's more bits coming round and more bits coming round, right? Oh, look at that. There's more. They don't look like right. mice. And then That's you got a camera. And then you got a camera on the other side, right? Camera right. on the other side that actually shows it dripping out of the exhaust onto the metal Thank and you. moving round as it goes, right? And wait until you see this next bit because this is the best one. Other missions have better lighting and the phenomenon is seen more clearly. Here we go. Does that look like a mouse to you? Does that look like a lot? Oh, what is that? An entire that's family of mice that, that, are, that are squishing together? Oh, is that? No, it, well, that can't. That's, that's not mice. That's and there it is falling off into space. Yeah, you're, you're, go, you're, you're uh, gaslighting me because that's not what I saw. What did you see? That's not the image I saw. I saw a physical see? rat. I when? saw an actual physical rat. When? I saw an actual rodent. And, and when? honestly, I wish I was more more equipped when? to be able to pull this up for you. When did you on um, what mission? On what mission I, did you see a rodent? Um, to be honest with you, Craig, I don't remember, but I did, and I'm telling you, there, this happens. Uh, you, this happens on kids, most missions. Would you Would you want to pull up a YouTube video of 25 um, ISS bloopers and take a look at that? Anybody that's watching this, go ahead and pull that up. Uh, well, have you got Have you got a link bloopers. to it so I get the right one and we can laugh at you? Absolutely, I'll, I can send that to you. Right yeah, send, away. send send me a link, and we can we can yeah. laugh at you. Because um, in, in in my observation as a as a former globe believer, when you see something like that, it it doesn't look believable. It looks fake. It, so it more more suspicion. personal incredulity, right? Is that right? More personal incredulity I, from you. I mean, I start. I have to start somewhere. Yeah, you, start you somewhere. certainly have, have to start to make, somewhere for your personal incredulity. That's right. I have to make my own assumptions. If I were to completely, and you've never tested what, them, though, have you? I, I've not, I never tested the jabs either, and I'm glad I didn't take them. You well, know? all the people that lived uh, are, are pretty glad they took them. And uh, um, let's not... And, and, not uh, everybody. Uh, medical not everybody. In, uh, medical... The vast majority... Right, but when medical stuff isn't to be discussed on this channel because YouTube also didn't like that, right? So let's not go down the route. Respectfully. Let's not go down that route. Absolutely. Respectfully. And there's the YouTube channel. I said that to the group. Right. 25 different bloopers... Is, of the ISS. Please, t please tell me this is my, And, and, and forgive me for that. My point, I just don't simply trust the governmental powers. So I personal, simply, more personal incredulity, right? I don't, I, see. I don't, I don't blindly trust doctors. I have a reason not to. So, so I am in a firm position to be more able to say that I like right. to do, okay. I, yeah, I like to do my own research. You've never done your own research in your life because you would have found I absolutely things. absolutely have done my own research. I know exactly Clearly how not. You didn't do any formula, research about the German bombing stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, right. and I and I also looked into eight inches per mile squared. I also looked into four different formulas to be able to equate that. Um, I do. I have done uh, my own observations, and yes, it is absolutely true. You know, you, you totally see beyond the the curvature of um of three miles over water. Yeah, because we that, well, that again, you've done the first reset. We discussed that refraction's a thing. Right. Um, where was the blooper there? Could you could you show me? Um, you know what? I don't remember which one it was. This is one of many videos that I've watched. This is one that I've watched recently. Um, it, and there's a bunch of goofy things. I mean, they look. They, it looks like a stage prop. This looks like so. Just personal like, incredulity. I think it looks like that. That's yeah, just someone going in a not, a, that's in not a hatch. Outer space. That's not but, outer space. That's a lovely so, claim. But okay, you, you, so, you know, I want evidence so I, of your if claims. I, if, if I showed you a treehouse. And I told you this was outer space. These are kids playing in a treehouse, and you were like, "That doesn't look real." I'm just saying, you know what? That's your well, own. Well, a treehouse with I'm kids sorry. wouldn't be in space. Um, astronauts a space uh, on a look space station thing. would be in space. Just floating, just floating yes. in a perfect. They they launched it perfectly. 
No, it was built in space. Not even a fraction, not even a fraction of a millimeter is it off in the distance of its from Earth, and gravity has it tidally. Actually, locked. they have to adjust as it all the as, time. As we rotate around the sun, and how does it move? How do you move something in space? How does it? How does it Orbit. propel itself off of nothing? Newton's first law. Move? How rockets does it don't. How does it adjust itself? Rockets don't need a medium. The rocket equation actually explains quite elegantly how rockets are more efficient in a vacuum. How do you, how do you move in a vacuum? How do you pr propel yourself off of? With Newton's vacuum? first law, you don't well, propel off. You don't propel off of air. That's not how rockets work. Displacement. What is being displaced in space? The the rocket. Nothing. The the the, <laughs> the rocket against what? It doesn't need to push off against it. It pushes off itself. It, the exhaust yes, mass. It listen. The listen. The exhaust mass is one thing. The rocket is the other. They push off of each other. And what is the exhaust mass pushing off of? It doesn't push off of anything. The, again, the rocket. The, the rocket equation shows how the, the rocket equation shows how rockets are more efficient with no medium there. Uh, when there's a medium there, it actually reduces the thrust available. Nothing moves in space like water, like fish don't swim in air. That's Again, the same rockets do not push off of things. Neither do jet engines. That's not how they work. Rockets work off of displacement. No, they don't. Rockets move off of internal explosions, creating a force inside the combustion chamber. It doesn't push it off creates, of air. It creates displacement. That's what's causing the rocket to move. Yes, the, the, the mass time. of the... Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. The mass of the fuel exploding pushes the rocket away. Every action needs an equal and opposite reaction. There, and there we go. So, mass in, exploding. Let me respond to that. You're, you're cutting mass me ex, off. Mass you're exploding. Me off. Let me respond to that. Mass exploding. Exhaust out of one end. Rocket moving the other way. Newton's first law. Equal and opposite. In, in the In the... Rocket, the mass exploding out of the end of it needs to push off of something. No, it does not. It I just explained. Right, it pushes the rocket. The, like, the rocket right, if, itself, right, if, yes. uh, right, if you stand, if you stand on a skateboard, right, and and you've got a bowling ball, and you throw that bowling ball forward, you move backwards, right? That's Newton's first law. It's the same in space, right? The 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 explosion of the, um, the, the combustible materials inside the rocket creates a force that pushes the rocket one way as the exhaust goes the other way. That's what's and happening. There, there is a chain reaction if I were standing on a, on a skateboard, if I were to throw a, a bowling ball, there's a chain reaction, of course. I'm not going to go far at all in any measure at all whatsoever. Well, yeah, because you have object, atmosphere and friction to deal the with. Object, there's no atmosphere the or friction in space. If I'm holding the object I'm throwing, how, how do I, how could I possibly move throwing the object that I'm holding? I'm, I'm not going to go anywhere. Uh, it's it's going to be dead. That's dead literally dead. what happened. Right, don't argue with physics. As as if you are only, uh, do you disagree with what I said? That if you're standing I on do. a skateboard and you throw a bowling ball, you move yes. the other way. That's I, literally I what happens. No. I, everyone does. Happens. Did you not do that experiment at school? I, I skateboard myself. I can't imagine throwing my, my hat or having a bowling ball and just throwing it and then actually being pushed in the other direction. I'd That's, need to be pushed Wait, why? Direction. When you fire a gun, why'd you get recoil? Because it's exploding out of the end. It's exploding yeah, out right? of the end and it pushes Which back. is right? creating a That's force pushing the gun back. It's the same, right. the force of you pushing yep. the, um, the, the, the bowling ball, right? That You're exactly right. Is, right and, and in space, the mass of the, uh, of the fuel is that bowling ball that is the then pushing is you back? The gun is stationary. The, the, the gun, gun is isn't stationary. The, 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 the pushing off of itself. Uh, the, right. It, the bullet coming out of one end creates a recoil coming out of the other. Right. Equal and opposite forces. It, the, the 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 gun is a lot heavier than the bullet by multiple multiple times as much. Number one, if if, if a gun were floating, if a gun were floating in space. And you could take a laser beam, say you had some type of uh, remote control, and you could just hit the, hit, hit a, hit the, the trigger pin. Bing! Right. Here the we go. Right. Would it would I'm, push I'm... off of the gun, but there is no possible way that that bullet is, uh, the, the gun is flying across town. Right. Here we go. So, yeah, <laughs> it's only a very clip, uh, very quick clip, but you can see yeah, that I as, this, as this guy... I can, I can... Uh, uh, I don't care if you skateboard. I actually skateboarded a lot before my leg was fucked, right? 
Um, oh, shit, the video changed. So as you can see, let me go back to it. All right, in this video, it's only two seconds long, but it shows as he throws that ball, he moves back and he's on the skateboard. Equal and opposite because force. He's, because there's a, there's a force coming off of his hands, down his body, onto the, onto his... Onto feet. the ball. Yeah. Yeah, right? So the force of pushing the ball forward pushes him back, right? I mean, now, I can, I can totally now, with now that imagine a rocket in space, right? The boy, the, the, the boy holding the ball is the rocket, okay? The ball... Uh, the boy holding the ball actually would be listen, floating. Listen, listen. He'd be floating. Yeah, okay, let's imagine they're in space and there's no friction and stuff. That helps me even more. But in this case, in this example, the boy holding the ball is the rocket. The ball is the exhaust, the stuff that's exploded and is being pushed out the back, right? So once this exhaust is pushed out the back, what happens? The boy moves backwards a little bit. That is the first law, uh, Newton's first law, the equal and opposite reaction. And that's what happens in a rocket. And again, the rocket equation itself literally explains how a rocket is more efficient in a vacuum than in a medium. I so, have to say that that's not a that's not an adequate twist at all. I can it's exactly the I can, same. I can just because you I don't can like shimmy it. My legs. I could shimmy my legs like this, and I'm gonna slide forward. I could shimmy my legs like this. He's not moving his legs. Back. His legs aren't moving if, at if all. He's, he's just if, throwing if, that if ball. He's pushing. If he's pushing that ball in order for him to stand up straight without falling over, he's totally. There's a chain of reaction going right down his body. Exactly. There's a chain of reaction ball. because the force is pushing him back. Um, that's, that's literally leg movement to stay on the, the, the... No, the it's the force from the ball. He wouldn't, right, he wouldn't how, need to use that. He, he wouldn't need move? to have that leg movement if it didn't have to counter the force from the ball, right? The force of the ball moving forward pushes him back. That is Newton's first law. Equal and opposite reactions. I, I, I see myself standing on a skateboard. Your knowledge of physics myself. is yeah, really it, bad. It, it, right, it, right. You not, are talking, right, let me, let me tell you understand. Let, just, so you understand just so you understand, you are talking to someone with a degree in physics, right? This is basic shit, right? Don't argue with me about how physics works because you don't it know. It's nothing to me. And, and when I'm on a skateboard, tell me what I'm pushing off of when I shimmy my legs like this and I start rolling this way. Or I'm standing on it and I shimmy He's not legs shimmying legs. his now, legs. He's standing now, still. Yes, he right, is. Yes, he is. Now, no, he's not. Right, we're going to play it extra slow. We're going to play it extra Let's, slow for you. If, if right? there were a bar, if there were a bar exactly where that, that bowling ball is, and he were to push off that bar with that much force, if he didn't adjust his posture, he would fall backwards. Let's say he wasn't on a skateboard and he pushed off of a wall with that much force, he would fall backwards. But since he's on a board as a skater... That push yep. is causing him to to move ever so yep. slightly. Yeah, yep. so there is a force pushing him back because he is throwing the ball. Equal and opposite reaction. He is right? he is stationary throwing he, throwing a... Uh, yeah, a, uh, he's stationary a, when it starts, but uh, I mean, I, I don't know why you're not getting this. Let's, let's show you. He's stationary I, when it... That, that's not substantial. That's it's not at, substantial. Just because you don't like it, that's more cognitive no, bias. It's right? not. Good. That's just not it substantial. Is, it is. Shut I, up. It is. You're I, being... You're just I, being I, dishonest at this point. Time. You are just I'm being not. dishonest at this point. Yes, you are. absolutely not. You absolutely are being... No, you are being dishonest at this point. You are being very dishonest. You are being very, very dishonest. I don't care if you agree. You are being dishonest then. You are being dishonest, right? We're going to watch it in slow motion, all right? The no, fact that he throws this ball forward is the reason he moves back. That's what That's happens. Not it's this is exactly not what's happening, and we're going to show not it a good again. Example. Right? You ball, might like that example. Ball gets thrown. I like that example. He That's gets. I don't adequate. care if you like it or not. Science doesn't care what you like. And how, and how much is he moving? I don't see any even movement going on here. Now you can li watch the board. In. He literally goes back. There we go. It's about oh, two man. and a half inches. Come on. Exactly That's the that amount that you would expect based on the force applied. That, that, I don't even see the guy moving. I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, you're not, now you're just I, lying. I, I see the guy about six feet away from a door, I, and then when he's done throwing it, he's still about six feet away from the door. His heel doesn't now, even now you're just lying. The skateboard literally moves back. I mean, really, though? That's, yes, that's what really. You're using it as an example, as rockets, the way rockets project the, themselves, they propel themselves yes. in space by pushing off bowling balls. Slash, look, look, I'll um, show you here. Um, oxygen. Right. You can literally see, look at the skateboard, how much it's moved. 
Mm. And I mean, is, is combustion even physically possible in a vacuum? Of you know? course it is. All, all, you need, all you need for combustion is heat and fuel. Right, and gravity holds air to the ground, right? Yeah. Gravity holds air to the ground. That's why, uh, that's why it breaks the second law of thermodynamics to have... No, it doesn't. What, you know, I bet you don't even know the second law of thermodynamics. Um, all pressure needs to be contained. That is not the second law of thermodynamics, no. No, that's what I. That's what I know. Humbly, that's what I understand. The well, then you're absolutely wrong, and I will educate you. The second law of thermodynamics says that um, a, an isolated system will always head towards increasing entropy. That's it. I mean, am I far off? Very. Am I very far off? Yes. The second law of thermodynamics does not say what you said. You're very far off. Again, I've got a degree in physics, and my second degree is in nuclear engineering, energy systems, and fission technology. So trust me, I know about thermodynamics. So, so when it comes to my understanding of thermodynamics, call me wrong. Very little. Must. Okay, so pressure, am I wrong? Pressure does not need to be contained. Pressure can be, there's, you know, pressure can be contained. There can be pressure without a container as well. So can two mediums of pressure be next to each other and coexist? Or do yeah. they need to have a barrier? Is there a barrier between the storm system and the air next to it? Between the storming system and the air next to it? Yeah, that's, that's a difference in, a, in, in pressure. A, in, a, in, a gradient, in, a, in a gradient, sure, because we are contained in a pressure system. But can right. we complete, can you... But can where's, you where's, the container, where's the container around that difference in pressure, though? What's that? Where's the container around the difference in pressure? Let's look at a plane. It's, it's, high, it's, it's high and low, like the temperature, high and yeah, low. Yeah, so, so where's the difference? Point. Where's the barrier containing those, the, you know, separating those two pressures? Um, that's, that's not exactly what I'm saying. Within pressure, there's going to be a, a gradient of pressure at, to a degree, of course. Do you know I what mean, a gradient that means? Makes sense. What's up? Do you know what yeah, a gradient means? A, What's a it gradient. Mean? A gradient. A, a yeah, scale. A scale of pressure. Right? A scale. I mean, am I really. am I completely wrong? A gradient is a scale. Am I wrong? A, yeah. You could have a, a shading gradient. You could have a pressure gradient. You could have a color gradient. Am I wrong? Yeah. So a gradient is something that goes from like low to high. It's not. A, you can have a scale that defines a gradient based on things, but no, no, it's, a gradient isn't a scale. But we have a pressure gradient, from, from, and that's the important thing. Low. That's the important thing. We have a pressure gradient, right? At sea level, we've got about 14.7 PSI. Um, at the top of Everest, we have about 6 PSI, right? And as you go further and further up, the pressure drops and drops and drops until you get to mm -hmm. 10 to the negative 17 torr, right? Mm -hmm. And that's it. There's just and, the pressure and gradient. And and then we, we go up higher and higher and higher, and then eventually there's just no pressure at all whatsoever. No, there is still pressure in space, just very, very little. There's no vacuum. Very, very little. Yeah. Very, very little. It's a vacuum. It's hardly anything. No, else. it's a, it's if, a low if, pressure if, system. If, Vacuums don't really if, exist. If, if men went to the moon, they would look like the Michelin man. They look like the Stay Puft Marshall man because their suits would expand, right? If you had a balloon well, not, space, Unless their suits were designed not to do that, of course. Which I mean, I mean, of course they probably did that, and we'll just say they yeah, did you it would design suits to not do the things sense. that would cause a problem, right? Yeah. I mean, how how I mean, do you know of any technology that you can prevent um, a movable cloth of any type of degree to not bulge out at some point because of the pressure? Yeah, diving I mean, suits. How would that be possible? Would that work underwater that way? Yeah. Uh, water has pressure on the outside, but yeah, the, the, there's suits that allow that to be the case. They, so they have suits that they had pressurized systems inside of their suits. Where they yeah, but it was about what? Well, um, I think the pressure inside the suits was about 4 PSI. Which should be the equivalent of the, the pressure on Earth. Am I wrong? Mm, very wrong. The pressure on Earth is about 14.7 PSI. They had much lower I PSI mean, now, in the suits. Now, that, that to me seems like a, a horrific thing to go through, that you could deal with that much pressure on, on space in a suit. That you have Why? That's not a lot of pressure. And, that's and, really, and it's not a lot of pressure. You're simulating a breathing environment that's completely improper for a human. Am I wrong? Like, how yeah, you are happen? wrong. If there's air inside the suit, then that's fine to breathe. There's, now, that's... wouldn't there be pressure, the equivalent of Earth, for that no. human to breathe to some degree? And now, humans if are not, used. If there was too much, if there was too humans much are used to that pressure enough, anyway. Die? What's that? No, humans are used to pressure, and humans are used to a change in pressure. Like we, you know, the difference in pressure, right, between. Um, the base of Everest and the summit of Everest. 
is a greater difference than the difference between the summit of Everest and what we call space. Humans are designed and capable of de dealing with quite severe pressure changes. To a certain degree of pressure, too much pressure will kill a human and not enough. Yeah, and there certainly isn't more pressure in a spacesuit than there is on Earth. Um, I would say, in, in my judgment of what I know Your about judgment physics is irrelevant. Being, being, sure, of course it is. But in my judgment of physics, I used to be a scuba diver. I've, I've have <clears throat> gone pretty low to mm -hmm. feel the pressure of Lake Michigan. I felt that pressure, right? You get out of the water, there's less pressure in the air. You go even higher, there's less pressure, of course, right? I've, I've been skydiving yes. before. You, and, and yes, the air is thin. You're breathing a lot heavier than when you're breathing on the ground. So these yes. men that are on the moon, they're breathing this very thin air, just jumping around, playing golf, having a good time, without their, without their suits expanding at all whatsoever. Why would the suit so this expand? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you want to believe the movie, Why would the suit it's expand? Gonna be, it's going to be realistic. Why but would the suit me, expand? Because it would need to have pressure beyond the outside, the vacuum. Yeah, and, it and it's, more pressure, it, uh, so more like pressure a on the inside. So like a variation of, say, four PSI, right? Um, I would, I would, I personally, I'm going by what you said, Craig, that four PSI is, is adequate. And you, you also yeah. said that 14 is the average on earth. I'll be yeah, completely sea, honest with you. I'm a humble yeah. man. I don't know that answer, but that seems very extreme to go from 14 to four and be that close to zero. Uh, again, again, the, the summit of Everest is six, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. That and the space like suits, the max. Most people don't make that. Now, how did the, these, how did these men have this, such a good time playing golf and uh, running again, around? They are golf, wearing you know? space suits. If you wear a suit and have extra oxygen and stuff, then, you know, going up Everest isn't really that much of a problem. And their but suits no, had like, wait, their suits didn't have like atmospheric air in. They had like an extremely high oxygen mix, you know, to keep them you know, fine. The suits were designed to do a job. I mean... If, if that's the movie that you want to believe and the story you want to believe... No, no movie. That's, you know, the, the, these suits can be shown to be operational. But, but that doesn't make any physical sense at all whatsoever. To you, because you don't understand physics. I, I actually think you're borderline just going to agree with anything that keeps your globe together. No, I, no I, 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 I research and find out facts. And I actually looked quite extensively into the design of the spacesuits. I mean, they're not just one layer of cloth, right? You... They're multiple layers of things. You just you know? told me a minute ago you didn't know they probably designed the suits this way, is what you said. You made an no, assumption No, I didn't. I yourself. said, do you think maybe they designed the suits that way? I was being sarcastic to you. Do you not understand I, sarcasm? That's the lowest form of wit, and you don't even get it. Um, I, honestly, I, I am having a hard time believing that a grown man thinks that men went to the moon still, and we haven't gone the back The majority to the of people that are saying <laughs> know that we went to the moon. You know what? Um, I, I went to an observatory in America and used their laser to bounce... Um, a signal off of the retro reflectors left on the moon and do a laser ranging experiment. That's cool. You can do it yourself, you know. That's cool. Men never do you know what, went to the moon, you know what I found out? I found out that <laughs> these those things put on the moon by men are definitely there and the moon's about a quarter of a million miles away. Um if if that's your observation, you're allowed to believe that, but I don't think so. I, I, it's not I a belief. Think, I don't think I it's did a quarter it. million miles away. I, I, I no, I, te that. I tested that. It is. I measured it. Um, you have no way of measuring it. I, I totally, did a laser ranging totally experiment. Use some type of tool. I did a laser ranging use, experiment. You, That's you, how you measure you, it. You you totally could use some type of tool propped up by NASA, and you could shine a laser. It was nothing to do with it, NASA. But, but you you have well, no. The only thing the only thing that NASA had to do with it was they put the retro reflectors on the moon when the astronauts went there. What I did was nothing to do with NASA. It was actually a university. And and I mean and how and how did the, how does that even calculate that you can shoot something up to the moon and test its distance? Well, we know the speed of light, right? The speed of What's light that? is three hundred. We know the speed of light three hundred thousand kilometers a second or one hundred eighty thousand miles a second. We know the speed of light. Therefore, if you fire a signal to something and then time how long that signal takes to get back to you, you can do a very basic bit of math and figure out how far away something is. Right, and that's what you think happened. I did it. Yeah, that's what. No, that, that's what you know happened. So something we pointed a laser at the, the moon, sun, and and we and you we tested the, yeah, the, we the speed the, of light. And, we and know the speed of light thing. is how, c. I how, don't do, mean, how do you test the speed of light? Like this is also something. The speed that of light has been measured. Science. The speed of light has been measured. Sure. By who and what? I mean, of course. I do know you want to go through every thing. experiment of everything ever, or do you want to try and stick to one point? No, 
know. I just, I just don't believe that. I mean, I don't care. But again, me, belief is irrelevant. We have measured the speed of light. The fact that you and I are talking now is because of our knowledge of the speed of light. Um. I'm, I'm talking to you right now because I don't believe the earth is round anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason that we are talking, the, the, the communication that's happening, that is functioning because of our knowledge of the speed of light. I disagree. Uh, I, doesn't matter if you disagree. That's a fact. It, it does, it, yeah, it doesn't matter what you read in a book either. I disagree. I believe, <laughs> you, I believe your knowledge is littered with, like, uh, science Facts. that's... Uh, over With your facts. head, uh, and it's designed to be that way. It's it's written in a book. You. It's not in my head. I, I tend to understand pass. things when I research. But but there is no That's way. having a brain cell does. You shot a you shot a laser off of a reflector on the moon. Yep. And then bounced it directly back down to you, and then you were able to tell me the distance of the moon. I yeah, it's done all the time. It's called a laser ranging experiment. And you going, I don't believe it, is again the fallacy of personal incredulity. Well, the laser experiment that I have learned about is a laser experiment where they show that there's no curvature on the Earth. They shot a laser across, and you're yeah. Gonna well, say lasers on Earth, like you're, you're going to have bend. something. You're going to have something that's going to make an excuse, but there's no reflection well, look of at, the look, moon. Look at that! Look at that laser bending. And, and and that's one that you're looking at. That's not what I looked at. Just like that, the mouse that's from thing. a flat Earther. I, I, that's the, I, that's not what I was looking what, at. What, so what, 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 but what I'm this not is showing, a monolith. What this I am is not showing, a what this is showing is that I'm lasers not, bend when they are shone I'm across a, the I'm, water. I'm, I'm not a religious person. I'm not You're here for very flat religious. earth to th thump the Bible personally. That's just not you, me. You have a religion you know, of I'm, flat earth. Um, you have a well, religion of a about science and NASA. No, I have different. Uh, no, I don't have a religion. The reason I don't have a religion is because I change my position based on actual evidence you as we've shown tonight no matter the evidence shown you don't care and you won't change your you position that don't have is evidence. a religion have, i have plenty of evidence web pages. i've measured the pages. rotation of the earth myself craig you actually even pulled up flat earth ws and i was yeah. trying to tell you that's a which you say it's a propaganda page because you don't like it can i tell you where i call it a propaganda page because you don't like it yeah can I, can I tell you, though, what I saw that made me believe it's a propaganda page? What? The 8 inches per mile squared page. So anybody that's following this, look up the 8 inches per mile squared and actually do your actual research. Because what they tell you, that it's usable under short distances approximately up to 100 miles. That's yeah, absolutely it, it, false. No, in right? the, the way that's that it's... absolutely was, false. In the way that it was being applied by flat earthers, that is false. When it's used um, correctly, it's, when it's used correctly as a cord measurement... Wrong. Uh, You're no. wrong. Again, and this is, and these, let this me. Is your uh, homework, you want to. You want to interrupt me? That's homework. fine. You want to interrupt me? That's fine. I'm gonna finish Go ahead, speaking first. You're right? wrong. Right. When it was used the way that flat earthers were trying to apply it, it was wrong. When you use it as a, a chord measurement, straight line, the way it's supposed to be applied, it is correct. But when it's used wrongly, the way the flat earthers were, it's only accurate up to a certain amount. Hold on. Um, I need to understand that a little bit more. Because you, you're you're saying flat earthers as if I'm part of this monolith of people. You are. I'm not. I'm not. I'm absolutely <clears throat> not at all whatsoever. Um, I I don't subscribe to every single last thing that every single la flat earther says. You've said I all of them so far. Everyone in the chat. Has I been don't there. exactly believe in everything. <clears throat> if you've noticed, most of my discussions are all you about have is belief. What I can what I can observe with my own eyes. What I can observe with my own eyes. And, yeah, so and the fact beliefs. that That's I, I can have. see stars still haven't moved in thousands of years they're still in the same place that's that makes me suspect that we're traveling two two and a half million miles an hour like uh, the stars told. move actually there's been recorded uh, the position of the stars barely, change. The, barely amount that, the, the amount the amount that they're supposed to with what's happening if we were moving at two and a half million miles an hour we should see a different set of constellations incorrect every, those stars least, are moving with least, us let's say at least every 10 years uh, again that. okay i'll give you that uh, uh, let's say the, even the, uh, every stop, 100 years stop stop those stars are moving with us right in a perfect sphere right around us right perfect no. sphere right around our solar system the, and us, the north star no 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 uh, stop Polaris. let me explain stop stop we're going our solar star stop stop our solar system and all of the stars that you see in the night sky are relatively close to each other, moving around the center of our galaxy together. Right. Right. That's what I was told in third grade, too. Right. You should have paid attention and more. And, and Polaris is right above us. It's a navigational star because it's, it's fixed. 
Right. It wasn't it's there. It, it's, it, yeah, all, Polaris all changes. Stars, Polaris is not fixed. It changes. The world again, Polaris is not. That, right? uh, again, Polaris is not fixed. It changes. Right. It moves just a little bit. Right. It moves the amount it should know, based on uh, I know, what happening. Ever so slightly. Right. Ever so slightly. So we're either traveling. A thousand years ago, it wasn't. Toward, it wasn't the North Star. We're we're direct. We're traveling directly toward or away from Polaris. And of course, if you read that in a book, sure. No, right? no, we're not moving directly. Uh, observationally, no one said that it's, you were right wrong. above us all the time. No, it's not. Everything, it is, it's changed. Everything is tidally locked to it. Every last star is tidally locked. I don't think to you know North what tidally star. locked means either. Um, we're not moving towards Polaris. Polaris is moving around the center of the galaxy with us. Our axis right. of tilt is in alignment with Polaris at the moment. Just that one special star. That's that. It wasn't always that one that special star. It's suspect. A long time ago. I mean, it wasn't the that, you know, that wasn't the North Star. In, in fact, in you know, approximately five thousand years, it'd be Thuban. I mean, that's what has said, and I still don't. Yeah, and your exactly personal incredulity is going to make you not you know listen to it. That's fine. I understand. All you have is personal incredulity. You don't can, believe it. You can don't you trust prove it, it though. Can you? Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, we've got measurements of the stars moving. Um, there's reports of sailors in like 800 AD um, saying that the, the, the north rotation point was a black space devoid of stars, which means that, you know, just like 1400 years ago, 1200 years ago, whatever, the Polaris even then wasn't the North Star. And and with the and with that being said about stars, do you know anything about the uh, the laws of lumens, the inverse laws? Yeah, the inverse square law means that light yeah. will never be zero. The inverse square law that every half distance that light travels, uh -huh. its lumens reduced by a quarter. Yeah, and that again, every that means distance, that means that it will never be zero. Every half distance, the lumens. Yes, you you just said that, and I responded to. You. Please stop repeating right. the same and thing. So uh, that means so, it will never be zero. You will always be able. You to know see what that it. also means? That means that a star being trillions of light years away is physically impossible too. That uh, means it's physically why? impossible. Uh, did because you not listen to the words light... I said? Again, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. The inverse yeah. square law will never reduce to zero. Okay. Therefore, um, that, you will always be able silly. to see. No, it's how, how can how wait, 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 wait. I gotta back that up. I'm trying to I'm trying to absorb you and not be disrespectful at the same time. But how can you say that a light won't ever reduce to zero, but it does reduce because your inverse square you, you the one that brought up the inverse square law the mass of the inverse square law shows that the amount of light we see would never reduce to zero and how is that possible because of the inverse square law okay so if i took a tree and for every half that it grew i cut it down to a quarter how would i eventually not have a tree left if you were just eventually to i would, I would it down not to have a quarter tree. no you would just have a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller tree until it gets down to a fraction of a molecule, right? Yep. And then you until keep doing until it's it. not not noticeable by the, by the eye. So and, and, and then then you would cut it into in atoms and subatomic particles, then quantum eye, waves. Sure, there could be millions of other stars right. that are getting the a thing. fraction of an atom. Our either, eyes, but eventually I'm not going to see that. Correct. Right. Stop. No, you will be able to see it because our eyes are literally capable of seeing like two or three photons. So, right. So no matter what. No matter what, no matter all the all the stars that are in the sky, these are all the stars. We don't. There's no other stars beyond the stars that we see. Oh yeah, probably right? the universe, universe expanding too fast for some of the lights to but reach us. But you just said you'll stars. never go to zero, so we should still be able to see all the stars. No, Why because can't we see uh, all the stars. Do you want me to answer? Yeah, I do. You're going to be quiet and let me answer. If if you can answer, sure. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So, <clears throat> the stars that we see are the limit of what we have in the universe because the universe is expanding faster than light can travel which means that there will be some stars where the light has never been able to reach us doesn't mean the light is zero it just means that it hasn't traveled far enough to reach us and it never will because the expansion of the universe is faster than that light is traveling which means there's stars that we will never be able to see but stars that have light that is able to reach us even though they're so far away like trillions of you know, miles uh, or billions of light years, right? We can still see those because if even a single photon reaches us, then we can determine that it's there. And what you're saying is the story that I also learned in third grade too, that the stars are trillions you of miles anything away. In third grade. The light's just getting to us and it's, these stars have been out trillions of years ago and the light's just traveling, right? 
to me. I'm sorry when when I personal incredulity in uh, three, two, the inverse one. Square, when I learned the inverse square law, and I also compared that to lumens. Like now, you have a you a formula to work with now, right? It is actually physically impossible for the sun to even get to us at 93 million miles away when traveling every half distance that it loses a, um, a quarter of its lumens. Like Can, absolutely, in, it's, it's absolutely one hundred percent incorrect. Show me the this maths. This is the pseudo science that, that I'm talking about. This is show the me the maths to back up. That, to no, believe it. Uh, show me the maths to back up your claim. Um, I, I totally can. If you go to the inverse um, square law wiki, there's a formula. Yeah, and right, go, and, go look uh, at so it. So now apply it's, that it's, formula. It's that simple as how I uh, wait, wait, it. wait, it's, Garrett, it's shut up. Garrett, apply that formula and show me that what you just said is true. If if I had the tools in front of me, I would love to. So, you think that the inverse square law means that we would not yes. be able to see the sun? Uh, yes, I do. At ninety three million mi miles away. Again, yes. I, I want to see the maps to back up and, that and, claim. And and then the heat tra transferring through a vacuum of space. I can hold my Yeti cup and with hot coffee in it, and I don't feel the heat going through it. But do you like, know the difference between heat and temperature? Ninety-three million miles of vacuum. Do you of know space the difference get... between heat and temperature? Yes or no? Um. Yes, I do know the difference. Explain the difference. Um, temperature is a, a gauge of scale. Heat. Temperature is, is a gauge hot. of scale. Those were words. It's a gauge of scale of 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 temperature of of. Of, um, of, of, of your scale of degrees, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Temperature is a scale. Heat is hot, cold is cold. There's a threshold typically based on, um, based on ice. If, if it's cold, it's, it's cold. It freezes at 32 degrees, right? I mean, none of that was the difference between heat and temperature. Do you want to try again? I'll, I'll give you another chance. Um, Temperature is a, a scale, scale of measurement, a of scale the of degrees measure. of heat or cold, and if and, and depending on your perspective of the scale, ninety degrees could be hot, five thousand degrees could be hot, but it is a scale of temperature. Oh fuck me! So. Um... Maybe you really should have paid attention in, in physics. Uh, temperature is a measure of me. um, kinetic energy, right? Average kinetic energy uh, of the, the, the particles in a substance. Uh, so temperature describes how hot or cold something is based on its kinetic energy uh, measured in you know, degrees, Celsius, Kelvin, whatever you want. Heat, right, um, is literally a form of energy that goes from one body to another as a result of the temperature difference between them right okay. uh, heat always goes from a hotter object to a cooler object and the amount of heat transferred depends on the temperature difference um and like whatever the materials are involved so uh, and that's measured in joules or calories you know because it's it's energy where um you know whereas temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy so they're very different, right? So um, how, based on that knowledge, how would you think the energy from the sun is transferred to Earth to heat us? I think the sun is local. I don't think it's 93 million miles oh, away. Oh, we've measured how far away the sun is, though. Um, yeah, we have, and so is Gleason as well. You, you have your measurements, we, I have mine. What did Gleason measure? Um, that the sun was approximately 3,500 to 4,000 miles away. And, and that how, makes more sense. How did he that measure that? That makes more sense that I'm being... I'm being how, how did Gleason up. measure that? How did he measure it? Yeah. By by coming up with the coordinates of it around the North Pole. No. And the triangular perspective of of the um, of the sun, so depending it, on the it, season. Um, the thing is, though, if you use what he said, um, you actually get conflicting positions for the sun, depending on where you are. Also, Gleason... His map yes. has a patent that says it's based on a globe that Gleason himself wrote. But actually, no, you're wrong about that. Gleason didn't no, write I'm that. No, I'm not. Um, that, that's the, Gleason's the patent. That, actually, it's it's the gentleman that made the map. Gleason no, no, no. It originator. literally says uh, in the patent, I, um, so and so Gleason, Alexander Gleason. You know, it's literally written. Alexander Gleason was the one that gave the patent for that map. So it wouldn't get be rejected by the patent office. Yes, that's a lovely claim. Right. Anyway, that's, so um, that's exactly what he did.
That's so exactly let, what he did. Anyway, you're so you're give you you're knowing by the patent office. No, he wrote it. He's the one that came up with the patent. He put that patent in, right? That's not true. It absolutely is true. You can look at the patent yourself that Alexander Gleason did. It was J.S. Christopher. J.S. Christopher is the guy. J.S. Christopher didn't the do the map. pattern of the Gleason's map. Um, yes, he did. did. No, he didn't. Alexander Gleason yes, did. Yes, he did. No, he did not. There is no Look patent that... I have looked it up. The patent is from Alexander Gleason. The, the, the patent is from a map that was originated by the design of Alexander Gleason. He did not file the patent. Christopher Alexander, filed the patent. He did, and he I, filed I will it read. As a, he you filed, read? It, as a, he filed you, it as a projection of a globe so it wouldn't be rejected when he went to file Alexander the patent. Gleason filed the patent, sense. though. Alexander Gleason filed the patent. And, and why and, is J.S. Christopher on the map? Because what is it's it, on, J.S. Christopher is a college. J.S. Christopher filed the patent for the Gleason. No, patent. he did not. It was Alexander Gleason. Designed by Alexander Gleason. Do you want me to show you the patent? I, I'm familiar. I've looked at it. Uh, and says I says that I Alexander Globe Gleason B, filed it. I was a Globe E2 once, and I used that as a as my deflection as well at one point so, in time. So there's the, a, there's a the patent that Alexander really, Gleason really put it in. Makes more sense. It makes more sense. Oh, so oh, it makes more sense. You want to ignore the patent and just go with what you he, he want to be true. You're fucking he, this dishonest. Is you, you, this is what you're doing. You're you're ignoring the fact that Alexander Gleason spent his entire time being a flat earther. At what point do you just say, you know what? I'm going to file this. And he I'm literally know it's was. A globe. He literally said that he, it was, was based a on a globe. Flat earth. You but know, he's, and, and his patent said it was based on a globe and explained the, how it's based on a globe. And also, we know the Gleason's map isn't accurate. That I filed it just like just like getting any other type of fake document to get into a bar. I'm not even 21 yet. Well, here's right. My so fake it was, it was fake. Exactly it was filed, but it's fake. It's fake. It's got to be fake because that's all you have, right? That's all you have about so, the moon, too. No, you know, I've, that, I've done that, laser that, ranging those experiments. Can't be fake. Uh, again, those I've done. Can't I've, be fake. They're they're not fake. They're just not bloopers. Um, the patent, be it known that I. Alexander Gleason, a citizen of the United States residing at Buffalo in the county of Erie and the state of New York, have invented a new and improved time chart of which the following is a specification. Thing is, it wasn't a map. It was a time chart. It is, it is a map. Then why does is, the patent say it's a time chart? That it is scientifically accurate as it is. It is as a, a time, time chart, chart yeah. Map. It, it's it, a perfect it, map. It's a time. It of, says of, it's a time chart. It's not a map, and it's not a perfect map because Australia doesn't look like that. And and you know what? There's there's many maps that maps that do have uh, distortions that you're probably used to looking at as seeing as normal. And like Australia that one, shaped it, like it, like the Mercator map. The Mercator map the, the, is, is the, what the, most people look at. They look at Google Maps and they think this is the Australia shaped exactly like that. That's what Australia is shaped like. Um, Australia is not shaped like that. The Australia is exactly shaped like that. We see that on a globe, and and our Antarctica isn't shaped like that either. Have you ever used Google Maps? Uh, I've I've, I've Antarctica? been to Antarctica. It is definitely shaped like that. Sure, you've been to Antarctica, but you haven't been through all of Antarctica. You might have been I, on I, the edge. I've sailed sure. around it, um, and so have many people. And so is a race that's done every three you, years. You you circumnavigated Antarctica. Yeah, did the you're Royal one of Navy. the only people in the world to ever do that. Uh, that's, it's done that's... every three years in a race. That's pretty exciting. It's done every three years in a race. You know that, right? Why does Antarctica not work with Google Maps? It does. You cannot, you cannot scale the area of, Google, of uh, Antarctica with Google Maps at all. You it glitches can. out. Because it's a, it's a made-up part of the map. Yeah, they don't have, and, like, and cars. And, yes, that is my assumption. They don't have cars and stuff the going area. there. They don't have cars and stuff going there the same as they do the rest of the world. They just rely on, like, satellite photos. So it's very different to the rest of it. I mean, of course, if that's what makes you happy to say, but it's a fact. You cannot, you cannot scale you, Antarctica. Literally, with, all you uh, have Google is personal Maps. incredulity. Again, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. There is a race done every three years called the Van der Globe race, where every contestant literally circumnavigates Antarctica every three years. You could do it yourself. Now, this is. How do you respond Antarctica? to that? How? No, I'm, I'm getting. How do you I'm, respond I'm to what I've just said? Um, I, I, I don't believe it. <laughs> do it yourself, then. I don't then. believe it. That's, anyone that's can, anyone can enter the race. And, and so when I try to close the area around Antarctica, this is what I get. I get an arc right around it. 
I can't, I can't even possibly even try to get the area of Antarctica. That to me is a flaw in the entire idea that the Earth is a globe and we're not hiding Antarctica with the Antarctica Treaty. No Wait, one's allowed me... to travel below negative 60 parallels. Yes, they are. So, Anyone it's, can it's, go to fucking Antarctica. Have, I, I, I go. guarantee you have never read the Antarctic Treaty. I have. I've read a lot of it. I've no, read you a haven't. lot of it. No, you haven't. That's a lie. And, and can you go to Antarctica? Sure. On a yeah. cruise. On no, a, on a special not just on a cruise. occasion. Anyone can go can there. You you freely, don't... Can you freely hop in your boat and travel yes. to Antarctica? No, you can't. 100% yes, you can. You cannot. Yes, you can. You cannot. Yes, you, there's at, nothing at in the Antarctic six, Treaty that negative, says you can't what's, do that. What's the point of the treaty? What's the point of the Antarctica Treaty? To stop anyone having ownership of Antarctica and ruining to the keep, natural beauty. That's it. To keep, middle, to keep military off of it. We don't care about the environment. Come on. This we is the do care about the environment quite a lot. Again. This is the longest treaty in history. Like, why again, is the longest again, thing that we can agree upon anyway? Nobody lives Because there, nobody wants to ruin it. Antarctica. But again, I mean, nothing... That's, right, that's, hey, shut up, shut up. You're lying right now. Like cute, cute, nothing cute in the Antarctic about. Treaty says you cannot go there. Read the part of the Antarctic Treaty right now that says that you can't go there. Go on, I dare you. And if you get in a it boat doesn't and travel exist. to Antarctica, you will be turned around by military. No, you won't. It happens all the time. And, you can go there. Then maybe in the isolated situation that nope, I saw nope. a group of um, gentlemen recently, off the coast of a seventeen-year-old girl traveled there by boat and then skied across the entire thing herself. No oh, one stopped her. I know her. who you're talking about, and that was, of course, orchestrated and chaperoned. Oh, of course and... it was. Anything that disproves you is orchestrated and, 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 and fake. You, know what? you, you know are what? a dishonest across... piece only, of she shit. She only went across a section of Antarctica. She, she didn't went go across, across the, the entire place. fucking thing. No, she did not. Yes, she did. No, she did not. Yes, she, she did. did not. She went yes, across the section of it, man. She went across she went the across entire thing. She went across she the entire thing, and it's been done Antarctica. many, 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 many times. One of the most dangerous, coldest places on Earth. No, she did not. Yes, she, she did. She went across a section of it. Again, personal incredulity doesn't change anything. Yes, she did. She did not. Yes, she, she did. did not. Uh, yeah, have you got, have you got anything other than your personal incredulity and denial? Because your the evidence shows that she read did something, and you're like, okay, that's the truth. I'm gonna believe it. But I've got evidence that it happened. All Actually, you've got I is saying somewhere. All you've got is that is you going, it didn't happen. But she's not the only one to do Craig, it. It's been done Craig, hundreds I of times. You if you look deeper into it, I guarantee I've looked, you. If you I've look looked very into deep it, into it. Right. That woman did not. That woman did not go across and. Hey, have you got any evidence? Have people. you got any evidence? Or are you just making fucking shit up because you're a lying piece of shit. That's all you have. Uh, don't, hey, don't don't call me a piece of shit. You're a lying piece of shit, man. All you have is lies. Uh, don't call me a piece of shit. Don't well, stop being a piece of shit. shit. I don't care then, if you're in Scotland or not. I'm ha I'm having a conversation with you. I haven't called. And you you're literally name, lying to my I, face. I'm sorry. I do not appreciate you lying to my face. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You're lying to my face. That makes you a piece of shit. I'm telling you what I read. You are not in my. You are lying to my face. You are lying about the Antarctic Treaty. You're not gonna call me a piece of shit. Well, don't be a piece of shit then. These are these are my studies that I don't be a lying piece of shit, and I won't call you a piece of shit. I'm that up. You I'm are. You're lying. Up. You told me a lie about the Antarctic see. Treaty. I said, I said, I said, wow, that woman went across Antarctica. I got yeah, a And you told me a lie about the Antarctic to find Treaty. Out she only, she only went across a section of it. She didn't just she go across a section of it. Section she went across the whole of Antarctica. Have and, you got and, any? And, and so, right. and so, just as quickly. Why did you lie about the Antarctic Treaty? Richard, Richard E. Bird said that there was more land past the South Pole. I mean, is he lying now too? Because it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, because there was, there is land. If you look, right here's the South Pole. And if you look, there is more land across the South Pole. Look at all this over on, here. On on flat Earth WS, I've seen that too. Look, I was look at all that. Look at all the land that. over the South Pole. Yes, there is. Right. Admiral right. Byrd was not a flat un, earther. Untouched, Admiral Byrd was not a flat earther. With enough resources to fuel the entire Earth. Right. Oh, they covered yeah. that also, do you know how big Antarctica is? It's a lot bigger than the United States. You know, uh, I have no well way of telling on Google Maps because it won't be able Google Earth because it won't let me uh, check the area. That's strange. You can totally check the size won't. of it. I could I could check every single continent on this Earth, but I can't check Antarctica. That's suspect. I'm you sorry. You can literally it is. check it the size suspicion. of Antarctica. What's up? You can literally check the size of Antarctica on Google Maps. On Google Earth, you cannot. You yes, cannot you can. check the area. No, you cannot. You can totally change. It. You I'm can not, totally check the size of Antarctica. You're, I, you're, again, I, I you're just making, you, you're just lying you again. You are. This is why I called you a piece of shit because you're just lying again. Show me. I just, I just showed you on my phone. Yeah, is I lying right. when I just? Are, are you it? saying you cannot check the size of Antarctica on Google Maps? I'm saying on Google Earth, if you try to check the area, of Google Antarctica, Earth or Google Maps, which one? 
I'm I'm using Google Earth. And when right. you try to oh, put and... points around it, it makes an arc and it will not sh show you the, the I got I got some crazy number. So you're telling me you cannot put a pin on two points of Antarctica and get a detail, a, a distance? I got, I, got, I got the total area of Antarctica, 7,259,915 miles. That's what happened when I tried to put an area around Antarctica. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that creates suspicion for me when, when I am reading information about this Antarctica Treaty, the longest treaty ever signed in history that still stands today. That it's not the longest treaty ever, actually. The, the Treaty of Windsor was signed in 630. And how long did those last? It's still going now. Okay, then touche. I, and, and again, Craig, I'm not opposed to information that I could be wrong, but it's one well, of the longest totally are because you just keep ignoring in the history it. of the world. I'll say it's one of the longest standing treaties in the history of the world. I'll change the way I describe it from now on. But it's one of the longest standing his, uh, treaties in the history of the world. Um, from what I'm told, you, we can't go to Antarctica freely. You, and then, um, you know, China we'll, break we'll, it we'll, quite. China weird, have actually can't... broken it loads. What's that? China have actually broken the Antarctic Treaty quite a lot. Right. Anyway, here's Antarctica. Oh, looks pretty good to me. Um, I don't really use Google Earth much. How, how do you put pins in to find distances? You know, I haven't used it on a, um, a desktop myself personally, but I, um, I used it on my phone. Maybe and the phone can, app uh, isn't very possibly, good. I'll, I'll see if I can meet you there. And um, I mean, it looks pretty good compared to the rest of the stuff to me. It's even got like I mean, unless you think I'm lying, but I showed you right on my phone. I'm telling you what my perspective maybe you're having is. issues with your phone. My Who knows? Is that what every time I've gone to check the area? What's up? Maybe you're having issues with your phone. Who knows? No, I, I actually watched this on on um, I watched this be presented, and and then I said, all right, I'm gonna look deeper into it myself, just like I would anything else, and ah oh, shit. And, and I attempted to do it myself, and clearly it didn't work. Oh, okay. Well, someone's just done it for me. Um, I'll just get that out here and so we can show you. Here we go. Um, oh, you managed to get use the Google Earth there to get the, the uh, area of Antarctica pretty fine. You put pins all around it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm glad it that, does that work. worked on the desktop and I'm and I'm telling you I'm I'm telling you exactly what I did on my phone and it didn't work and I'm not lying about that. I'm not a lying piece of shit about that at all either. That's what I did and that's what happened. So, if there's a so, difference in the in, in maybe the desktop and the mobile version, hey, maybe I'll agree with you there. Maybe but your phone's I'm just telling rubbish. You, what phone the are you using? the perspective that I have that there's suspicion under Antarctica, if I can't do that on my mobile version of my phone, yeah, that that gives me a right to draw a question to Antarctica. Well, again, I'm maybe there's crazy. an issue with your phone. I'm, what, I'm what, what a, phone, what phone have you got? I'm not trying to make up something stupid. I'm what not, phone I'm not do you trying have? to say that there's, there's lizards among us. I'm not saying yeah. something okay. crazy. Garrett, what I'm phone do you have? that draws suspicion. Garrett, what phone do you have? I have an iPhone uh, 13 Pro. So, well, relatively new. Which is the second to last model. Yeah, second to last model. Um, right here. I mean, it's kind of known that Google and Apple don't play nicely together. But it works fine on Google Earth. Um, I'll check it on my phone later. I reckon it'd be fine on my phone as well. I just want to make it clear this is what comes up whenever I've tried to make this happen on my phone. Mm. That's a ridiculous okay. shape I'm gonna ask that my I chat. really did not make. Uh, right. Anyone in the chat? Does anyone in the chat have an iPhone 13 um, or you know, an iPhone relatively new that has Google Earth on that you can check this? Because it may just be an issue with Garrett. Maybe. What? Sorry, something's gone on my computer. Point. It's uh, giving me low resources. I'll do this backwards as I'm trying to manage this, and I'm just showing you exactly what I what I what I did as far as you know. Seems to be working pretty well out. there. Going along here, this is what I did. It seems to be working pretty well. Right? Yeah. And I just, just have to connect this, right? This should be it. 
Oh, look at that. Hmm. I'm it not a liar piece seem, of shit. I'm just seems like an issue. Seems life. like an issue with your phone. I mean, or maybe it's an issue with Google's app. You know, it's not my phone. I have a standard iPhone 13. Yeah, you know that's the I mean? problem. Apple's shit. That's the issue, mate. Well, in my visual perspective, looks like Google's up to something. Uh, actually, it works fine on my phone, which is a Google phone. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Apple and Google don't get along, but I'm telling yeah. you what, I, what I'm looking for from my phone. This caused me to have suspicion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Earth is a globe and Antarctica is there, but this doesn't help the argument. It doesn't help the argument at all. Uh, I mean, it doesn't do anything bad for the argument either, just because an app doesn't work. I don't think Antarctica, the continent, is, is displayed properly. That's it, what I believe. It's displayed properly on the one that I... Properly. I literally just showed you it displayed properly. Um, again, I don't believe that it is displayed and, properly on again, your map. And, I don't believe that's uh, true. Well, we know it's true because we've mapped it, and it's you know the people that do the Van der Globe race every three years, they they need accurate information about Antarctica so they don't get lost. And you can track that race yourself. You know, who, you know. Do you know who knows the truth about maps? The people that make them. You and I don't know cartographers. The truth about maps. Well, no, I do. I know the truth we, about maps because I tested the globe map. We are we are left to use what has been given to us, but you don't design maps, and I don't design maps either. No, I, I've, I've tested. Many, I've tested there maps. There could though. be many. There could be many land masses left off of the map. Many. No, there isn't. We, we you would we, you would have no clue. Again, we tra I've traveled the world. I was in the Royal Navy. I've seen every continent. There is no missing land masses. And every time I tested the distances that are shown on a globe, they worked. So that validates that you've been in the army, that you know where all the land masses are on Earth? That isn't, that's I, Again, I, I've been to pretty much every continent on Earth. Um, and m as a sailor, I have to know where things are so that we can get there, right? That if, if something was hidden from you, you wouldn't know, Craig. You would not know. Apart you from the fact that I've tested the distances. Off the map. All right, so you're just making the assumptions people that control now. You're making the stuff map. up. No, you just wouldn't know. You know, you're you're speaking. Do you know you can so start a company yourself, yourself, and you can start a map company yourself. You you have a flat Earth channel speaking so surely of yourself. If you know these things, a matter of fact, but all you're doing yeah. is reciting things that we all have. No, I've tested these things. I have tested these things. <laughs> I've tested the curvature tested, of the Earth. You've I've tested, tested you know the I've tested the, 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 I've tested Earth, the right? distances. You know where all I the have are. tested that the Earth rotates. I've tested that gravity exists. I've done these things. Gravity doesn't exist. Gravity 100% exists. You have never tested mass being attracted to mass. I 100% have. It was again far apart of my physics degree. And and what what tools did you use to measure that two objects of mass are attracted to each other? Uh, a torsion balance. And and how does that work exactly? That you can you can it pulls test. the masses towards each other, and then you can see and by how ma much. What masses did you use that could be possibly use on a scale to be able to use that? I used massive wooden balls. And and those wooden balls, they they were drawn to each other. Yeah, the bigger, the smaller by, one was by drawn. By gravity. The smaller one was drawn to the bigger one. Uh, the amount predicted by Newton's law of universal gravitation. Uh, and then I used the results to um, deviate, uh, to derive um, the gravitational constant, G, myself. And so those two massive wooden balls were able to be attracted to each other. I don't mm -hmm. know how you could possibly measure how much the attraction is of, of well, two you, wooden balls. That you put a laser they're, on they're like the magnets. You put a laser like on magnets, the one that's moving. They came together. You put a laser on the one that's moving, right? And you see where that laser's pointing. And then once you move the masses closer to each other and you let it settle, you see where the, the laser is pointing now. And you find that when the masses move closer to each other because the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, um, you find that there is an, uh, an increase in the attractive force as predicted by gravity. But gravity has no control over smoke and water vapor, though. Buoyancy is a thing. Other forces also exist. So gravity has no um, holding on smoke or Again, water vapor or clouds. Listen to the but, words coming out of my mouth. Listen, listen to the words coming. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. Buoyancy yep. exists. Other forces exist as well. Of course they do. Yeah. So buoyancy, the reason why smoke and stuff rises, is actually a result of gravity. Because because. Because the, uh, gravity isn't pulling the smoke down. Because rho, rho GV. 
well, gravity is pulling everything down, but the mass of the air is higher than the mass of the smoke, which means that there's a stronger gravitational force applied to the air, which creates a force in the up opposite direction for the thing with Listen the less gravitational force. Yeah, that's, this is buoyancy. I was a submariner a in the Navy. Let's pretend you were a teacher and you were, to te you were teaching me that air has more mass than smoke. Do you think that would make sense to me? It does. This is just a fact. How, how does air, H2O, have more mass than carbon? Because the, the, the smoke, the amount of mass in the smoke is very, very, very little. It's the density of, of it as well, right? The air around it is more dense, more, more mass. There's more of it. So there's more gravitational force applied to it than that smoke. So that means that the smoke should continue to rise up and the layer of air should stay underneath the smoke, you're saying? It, it does. I mean, until there's a balance, right? It, the smoke will go to a point until um, the air is no longer more dense than it because the air gets less dense as you go up. Like if I have a smoke in my room, right? So, um, so let, me finish, let me finish what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm, let me finish what I'm saying, right? If I right. have a smoke in my room, um, you literally find that about here, you get a layer of smoke. Of, you can see it after a while. A layer of smoke that sits about here, right? That's because the smoke here has about the same density as the air, right? But the smoke won't sit down here because the air down here is slightly more dense. There's more mass than it, right? But as the smoke rises, because there's less air up here than there is down there, the smoke will settle there, where the force is balanced. The forces of buoyancy and gravity, they balance at this point to keep the smoke about here. So so from Craig, I'm learning that Craig. smoke... Craig, right? Am I saying it wrong? That, that was Craig. better. Yep. A long A. Egg. Craig, right? Yes, that's how the word is pronounced, yes. Yep, and I'm going to respectfully pronounce your name the right way. I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Mr. Craig. It's just Americans but, can't do it. <laughs> Yep, I, I, I'm an American. So you're telling me that the carbon molecule of smoke that is literally the matter of something burning, the matter of something burning that is floating away, and I'm, I'm assuming the temperature of this item is causing it to rise up, of course, right? Yeah, of it's course. Hot. It's hotter, so it's less dense. And But we're saying carbon, we're saying carbon has more mass than h2o then oxygen and hydrogen it's to do with the amount together. of mass in an area right so the, the density as well so when you have that carbon in the smoke spread out over such a large area there's lot, a, a lot less density and mass per area right mm -hmm. so there's less mass in like a ball this size of smoke than there is in a ball this size of air so as that smoke disperses in the air Technically, those molecules are exactly the same size, right? Yeah. They're not really getting any smaller or bigger, right? It's carbon. It's floating. So, and that, that's why the density and you level it out. And then once the, the forces of buoyancy uh, and gravity are balanced, it will stay at a level, right? And that's it. Um, it's the same It's in, with clouds. That's why balls float in water. That's why a helium balloon rises. It's all the same thing. It's because buoyancy is a force that creates something, uh, a force in the opposite direction to gravity, due to it having less gravitational force applied to it because less mass and density. But there's billions of gallons of water in the sky and clouds, and that just floats. That's not being pulled to the yeah, ground Yeah, again, um, you've got, well, rain happens, right? Right. Once, right. The, once the mass and density is big enough in that area, yep. the force of gravity overcomes the force of buoyancy, and rain happens. Once once the mass in, is large enough, yes, things go down, but that has been that has been confused and labeled as gravity. Um, no, it is mass, gravity. Mass, the mass of the Earth is not pulling the water molecules back down. Absolutely down. is. We, we've shown that mass attracts mass. The, the mass of the moon is not pulling the tides of our oceans either. No, we've shown that it is, actually. It, actually, it's not, because there's, there's uh, tidal nodes all over the Earth. Not every single body of water is... It moves by the moon. Now, if every well, no, body they're also of affected water, by flows of water around the earth. Every body of water moved with the moon. Then I would believe that. I would believe. Okay. Um, okay, what you maybe actually the moon find does have some bearing. Uh, 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 right. Even what, on a flat let me earth, let me respond. Let me respond. Earth, Garrett, stop. That. Garrett, stop. Let me respond. Right. What you find is if you take the vector points of all the the tides on Earth and average them, 
they do point to the moon, right? However, because Earth is not uniform shape, there, there's underwater mountains, there's different temperatures in water, the, the movement of the water is not going to be uniform because it's affected by more than just the gravity of the moon. But it is the gravity of the moon that creates the movement of the tides. That's not true. It is I true. Live in, I live in Michigan. I live in Michigan, and the moon doesn't have any swing on the lakes here. Well, we actually, have, no, the, we don't have Lake Michigan has, do, has, does have a tide, position. actually. Yeah, and it's not related to the moon. I said it, we, I, we don't have tides that are related to the moon here is what I said. Yeah, um, we do not right, have so tides that are in, related in a lake, to the moon. The in moon a lake, doesn't change let me finish. that has to do let with me the talk, tides in Michigan. Let me finish, right? Uh, in a lake, because there's, there's less mass of the water overall, the forces applied by the moon to the gra by the moon's mass to the water um, tend to be less than other forces in that lake. So um, just the forces of the movement of the water around the lake due to temperatures, um, the uh, you know the, the general density changes and stuff, that will be more than the gravitational forces applied by the moon. But when you take into account the average of all the forces applied, you see that what's happening is also due to the gravitational forces of the moon because that's one of the forces being applied. Why doesn't the moon pull smoke up to it? There will be a slight gravitational force on it, but the gravitational force of Earth is much larger. But so, so the moon can't pull smoke up, but it could pull heavy lakes up. You Again, see what I'm saying? The, the, you're, you're telling each, me that it can pull heavy individual molecules up. Hold on has the gravity second. of the moon Hold applied to it, right? You're telling me that it could that the moon has the ability to pull an entire heavy saltwater mineral dense ocean to make it move. We're talking hundreds of gallons of you know, this is what's pulling on the mass, right? But it does not have the ability to pull smoke to it. It doesn't have the ability to pull the clouds full of water to it. Like these things aren't moving or adjusting as the, the there's no sky tide of clouds. You would think if the moon were in the sky that naturally if it had a gravitational pull that clouds would accumulate underneath it to some degree, some degree. We're talking about suspended water for crying out loud. Shouldn't it some degree? We're talking halfway, not even halfway. Let me take that back. But we're talking, uh, uh, it, its measurement is starting to leave Earth's atmosphere when you start to get closer to the moon. So the moon should have a <clears throat> more of an effect on I mean, all you're cloud, doing is right? showing that you're ignorant of physics, okay? Um, this, this is from I'm something I'm challenging wrote... what is in a book that they've told yeah, us. Yeah, because That's you're ignorant of physics, right? So this is something from I wrote a while ago. The moon's gravitational forces affect everything on Earth, including the oceans um, and the atmosphere. However, the effects of the moon's gravity on the oceans are much more noticeable than its effects on smoke or the atmosphere in general. The moon's gravitational force creates a tidal bulge on the Earth's oceans, causing the water levels to rise and fall twice a day. The effect is due to the fact that the moon's gravity is stronger on the side of the Earth facing the moon than it is on the opposite side. The difference of gravitational force creates a distortion in the shape of Earth's oceans, resulting in high tides and low tides. On the other hand, the atmosphere is much less dense than the oceans and the effects on the moon's gravity are much weaker. The atmosphere also has a greater ability to flow and disperse in response to moon's gravitational forces, which makes it more difficult to observe the effects of the moon's gravity on the atmosphere. Additionally, smoke is made up of tiny particles that are much less massive than the Earth's oceans or the atmosphere. Therefore, the gravitational forces acting on smoke particles are much weaker than the forces acting on the much larger and more massive bodies of water in the oceans. Basic physics. That's not basic physics. That's pseudo. That's pretty basic physics. You're 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 owning both do dominations of gravity. You're owning the domination of the moon pulls it this way. Domination. This what are you on about? The sun. The sun has us tidally gravitationally locked as well. You know, and, and all these gravity. You don't know what tidally all... locked means, do you? Um, to my understanding, it's it's to be it's to be locked in sequence. No, which I could be wrong. Yeah, you are wrong. Tidally locked means okay. that one face will point towards the, the, the gravitationally attractive body. So so what I learned about the moon, I was using that terminology wrong, and I'm I'm humble enough to admit that. So the moon is tidally locked, right? Yeah. Am I wrong about there? Eight, about 80% okay. of the moons in the solar system are tidally locked to their host planets, yeah. Right, and that's corny too. That's corny too that we got this orb, this big old rock in, in space that's literally facing us at it's all. More times. personal incredulity. It's not rotating while it's up there. You yeah, know, the, do you know why that? You know, that this you know, gravity. You, you, yeah, right. this so you gravity. don't understand why it happens. That's why you think it's silly, right? No, I, I, I'm challenging what I've been told. What I well, okay. am challenging why, you believe. Well, you're challenging it, it. You're challenging it, but you don't know why it happens. If 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 you were if we were in fifth grade, you're trying to convince me Santa Claus still exists, and I'm telling you, I don't believe that shit. Uh, nothing to do with Santa Claus. I'm asking you about the moon, right? Do you know 
why um, title locking happens, yes or no? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know because I don't know everything. Because you've but never it doesn't make it. sense to me that the moon is facing us at all times. It doesn't make sense to you as because we, you've as never... we rotate around yeah, okay. the sun, as right. we rotate on our axis. So it doesn't make sense to you because you've never researched it. I have researched it. It still no, you don't. If you researched it, then you'd know what title locking was. I mean, I know what the pseudo ideal of it is. No, Craig, you don't. I understand. Right, explain the it then. Why does title locking but, happen? But in physics, explain it's not it. duplicatable. It's not duplicatable. Uh, no, no, uh, it's not no, no, wait, wait. So you're, you're, you're running away from the question. Explain I'm title not. locking and why it happens. I understand title locking, as I just said a moment ago. I thought it was one thing. You, you, sir, told so me. So you don't understand the it then? It's it's the moon being locked in yeah. in orbit. And why in does that happen? Pool, right, and and for us to have be an orb, and we have another orb facing us as it rotates around us in a perfect twenty eight days, thirteen times every single year in a perfect rotation, facing us the entire time without spinning to some degree as we're moving at 200, 200 um or uh, two and yeah, a half. You're avoiding miles the question quite nicely. What's that? Uh, you're avoiding the question quite nicely. On the heliocentric again, model, maybe on the heliocentric model, why does tidal locking happen? On the geocentric model, why no, does it happen? No, on the heliocentric model, on my model, on reality, why does tidal locking happen? In 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 your fake heliocentric model, I don't know why it happens. Right, so you don't know why it happens, but you think it can't happen. Because it doesn't make any physical sense. Yeah, that, you think it doesn't physics. make any physical sense, yet it's, you don't it's, know it's why given, it happens. It's given. No, no wait, I want you to listen. It, I want you to listen to what you're saying here. Something realistic. It's not realistic. I want you to listen to what you're saying here. You don't know why it happens, but you know it's ridiculous. Yeah, think about I, that, I, I know dumbass. This is, this is an element to me that says this is not what we have been told it is. That's what, that's what arises with me. You so don't even know enough, why I we're told why to it happens. Able... What's that? You don't even know why we're told why it happens. You don't even know what we're told. Yeah, physically it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Because you don't know the actual explanation. Either do you. Yes, I do. You know what's read in a book. That's what you know. No, I, you don't know. You I, don't I know, know the explanation as to Craig, why it happens. You've never been to the moon. I bounced lasers yeah. off of it. What you're doing now is the genetic fallacy. So well done. No Personal man has never been to the moon. You don't know what it is. You don't know the ionosphere. You don't know. You just know what you read in the book. You know what they told you. You know what Rockefeller told you. Fossil fuels aren't made from uh, There we go. So, so because you don't know, <laughs> education is now just all indoctrination. Brilliant, right? Yes. You don't I, know yes. what you're Rock talking about. The reason you don't understand. Shut up. I'm talking. I'm talking. The, public school system. the reason you don't know these things is because you've never studied them and you're dumb as fuck. I'm, I'm not actually. I'm not. You are. Um, there. You. You don't. I'll right, test the how that. Uh, right. So, um, I've got a triangle of sides one, one, and one. What are the internal angles? 180 degrees, man. Come on, that's well elementary done. school shit. Oh, you right? actually paid attention in elementary school. So, um, ten to the negative seventeen. I'm, I'm decent 17. at math. That's where I got the eight-inch parabola to figure that ten, out. I figured the, three different formulas. Ten to, to the negative too. seventeen. Is that a positive or a negative number? What's that? Ten to the negative seventeen. Is that a positive or a negative number? 10 to the negative 17? Yeah. I don't know how to answer that. I don't know. So you're not very good at maths then? Say what you want. I don't know. How do you, how do you convert kilometers to that um, question? How do you I don't for, know that answer. I'm not how do you gonna, convert kilometers like to meters? Do. I'm a humble enough man to say 10 to the neg negative 17 doesn't ring a bell for me mathematically. Could I study it? Sure. Does that mean I'm a dumbass? No, I just don't know. Yeah, it's a very basic thing. Uh, how do you I mean, how, how many how many years did the Tuskegee experiment happen? You know what I mean? Lots. Like you don't know everything, dude. Like, you said you were said you were, you said you were good at math. So you don't know you can't basic call me math, stupid math. because I don't know everything about the, <coughs> a number that you're throwing at me. I just don't know off the top of my head. You do I said know you're good at math. The internal angles of a, you said of you're good at triangle? maths, yeah. yet you don't know basic mathematical notation. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. Okay, cool. Of course it Thanks. is. 10 to the negative 17. It's 10 to the power of something. Of course it's positive. If you were good and, at math, I, you would if, know that. If I, had to, if I had to guess, I would have guessed positive because you didn't start it off with negative. You said 10 to the negative 17. I'll admit that. I don't know. I'm not familiar. But if I had to guess and I, I was on a game show, I would guess positive. I so don't how, know that. I'm humble enough to admit it. How do you My convert? My ego is not that big wrapped okay, around okay. this whole entire thing, man. I, 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 I really, it's I really to hurt myself, like climb your ego and jump to your IQ. But um, 
how do you convert kilometers to meters? How do you convert them? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I would use uh, some form of calculator to do that. What are you asking exactly? I'm, I'm American. I work with Miles most of my life. It's stupid. I wish we were on the Imperial system, but we're not. I, but I'm, I, in the UK, we use miles as well. We still know what a, a, a meter and a kilometer is. You know, typically people that are... How, are, how many meters usually, are in a kilometer? We understand both. And I am an American. We don't use the imperial system. We don't. Yeah, and okay, I'm sorry how many, that I don't. How you know, many meters like, are in... It's, it, you're, listen, you're it's a question. Stop, stop. Two stop Garrett, two stop. languages too. Garrett, how many meters are in a kilometer? How many meters are in a kilometer? If I'm not mistaken, a thousand. Right. So how do you convert kilometers to meters? How do I convert kilometers to meter? There's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So what do you do to a kilometer to convert it to meters? Divide it by no, proper measurement? You would times it by how many meters there are in a kilometer. Right, a thousand, right? So yeah. So if I wanted okay. to convert three kilometers meters to meters to one kilometer. Cool. So if I want if I wanted to convert three kilometers to meters, what do I do to that three kilometers? If you wanted if you wanted to convert three kilometers to meters, it would be yeah. what? Three thousand three thousand meters. So yeah, you times it by a thousand. There we go. See? Yeah. yeah. Right. Simple. Right? Simple. So you, yeah. you've listened and you learned. Right. And so why aren't you like, do, why aren't you basic. applying that to the rest everything. of the stuff? That's just in a What's book. That? What I've just told you is it's just maths in a book. Yet you accept that. Well, I'm not arguing with that. That's basic. I, a, a lot everything of else, everything is basic else is sharing, you're, is sharing a pseudo You're, you're arguing with Newton's first law, and that's pretty basic. It's not testable. You're sharing non-testable things that we were taught everything in second I say grade. Is testable. You and I were both taught the same thing. Now, if I Newton's was a blind first law student, and I, and I absorbed everything, and I just said yes, sir, to everything, then I, literally I would be a failure at everything that You'd I do. You'd be a sucky student. The, entire, because the you... entire education system. You know, the education system told me I needed to go to college to make money. I broke that mold. You know, I make money, and I didn't have to get a uh, doctorate's degree to do it. You know what I mean? I figured out how to do it. Yeah, that's nothing so, to do with that, education, that I'm though. stupid because I don't have a degree, but I figured out how to make money, and I know doctors are broke. You're stupid because you think the you earth is mean? flat. I, I figured and it you out. you don't understand I basic go physics. That path, and I found another path around it by yeah, denying cool. the that's path. That's nothing to do to with your ability to do physics. You don't have um, any knowledge of physics. That's why you're a fire a, earther. I do have a knowledge, a knowledge of physics. No, you don't. I took don't. physics in high school. I took a little physics in college, and it's not my profession. So you, you have no I'm, knowledge I'm, of physics. I'm probably, I'm probably you have not zero as knowledge as, of physics. As you. I'm probably not as crafted as you in physics. Like you're not as crafted as me as stage performance and music. You know what well, I mean? I, actually, I've skills. got a, actually I've got a, a HND in popular music. Um, I was in the band for many years. Um, I had record deals. Um, I've written thousands of songs. Um, I was also a, an actor for the Navy in uh, in pantomimes and stuff. So yeah, no, I'm pretty good at doing stuff on stage actually. And and I've and I've done those things. And if you couldn't read through the lines of my point, I'm trying to tell you we have two different skill sets of two different things that we are involved in, right? That's all I'm simply saying. I, I like, paid you, attention you to school. The, you that's get up one on this high horse, yeah. even have this YouTube channel to like bash people that are questioning something that's not it's in the a point third grade at book, stupid science people. book. You're, you're, you're regurgitating things that are in a third grade science book, and, and, and they're wrong. Things you're that using I've tested. Things that I've tested. Things that I've tested. propaganda. that I've tested. Things that I've tested. propaganda that I've tested. Things it, on on yeah. flat earth WS, it says that it's not usable past a hundred miles when it's in the way that flat earthers to, are applying it's, it. It's, it's completely, not. It's completely accurate with zero error beyond fifteen hundred miles. Not the way that flat earthers are using it. And and explain what you mean by that, because I don't understand what you mean by that. Well, you need to. If there's they, anything that I've spent, if there's anything that I've spent time on, it's the eight inch. Eight inch per mile squared thing. So how are quote unquote flat earthers uh, using it differently me. than globe believers? Because I'm just looking at a circle. I'm not you know talking what, about anything else. I really don't care. Do you know what a chord it's measurement basic. is? What's up? Do you know what a chord measurement is? Um, I do. I, I'm familiar with a chord measurement. What is it? Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, the direct line from one point to the other that would go right through the circle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that's how you use yeah. eight inches per mile squared, right? Uh, no, not directly. It, that's it, it, it's a chord an measurement. Option if that it's way. scaled right? with the right math equation, but that's not how I derive it. Well, that's the way that you would use it. 
But the way flat earthers use it is they um, expect that, you know, if they point a straight line, they go, oh, well, at this point, there should be this amount of, of that's hidden. That, that's not correct. That's not what it shows. If you're actually so, using it as a, as a line of sight, as a cord, you know, the, the maps so, for how much is missing doesn't match with what you guys are saying. All right. So I, I'm yes, not, I'm, not I'm, not I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. But right? I'm not familiar with that. But go right? ahead. A lot, a lot of people get it wrong, and I did for a long time, um, saying that it's just a parabola, um, uh, and it, it can't match. It can, but you've got to use it correctly. And the way that right. most flat earthers apply it is the incorrect application. And I'm telling you, I don't. I'm not familiar with this category of flat earthers that you're talking about and what they're saying. I'm familiar with with learning the math myself. I'm familiar with just about every single earth curvature calculator on the internet, which uses the eight inches per mile squared formula. Test it yourself, but find one that doesn't. Even the advanced one still uses eight inches per mile squared. So that's simply all I'm using. And I'm, the, and no, I'm going the advanced mostly one when uses, I do my measurements. Um, H equals going, R times one minus using, over I'm cos A. Using, I'm using a calculator. Most of the measurements are of the surface of the earth. I do have another calculator that I use that factors in um height of the observer and the formulas match the formulas match on multiple different formulas that i'm using one of the easiest ones that you could possibly use you take the observer's height and feet squared and you multiply it by 1.225 it's the easiest one and if you do that well that's just to find the distance to the horizon with no atmosphere um, that that would be that would be the distance to the horizon with no atmosphere. You're right. That gives you the shape of the Earth. Am I right? Yeah, with no atmosphere, but we've got an atmosphere, right? And that gives you the shape of the Earth, though, right? If I didn't say no anything about observation. Yeah. I said shape of the Earth. Well, any sphere. Oh no, the one point two two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, one point two two five, and that and that gives you the 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 geometric horizon of what you're looking at. Now, when I when I'm doing this math. And I'm and I'm figuring this out from a six foot observation, from an 18 inch, from a completely level observation. And we can see things that should be. And at 10 miles out, I believe it's 66 feet of curvature. Forgive me for not having the conversion for uh, kilometers. But if I can see things that are a boat that's six foot tall and it should have 66 feet of curvature, I'm sorry. That is, I'm, I'm, I'm suspect to believe that refraction is causing that boat to but that's just personal incredulity. What's up? That's just personal incredulity. So, um, I mean, is that what you think? You think it lifts it up sixty-six feet in the air? A light does that? How far From 10 away miles is it? Away and it just, it, it, but it ten makes miles it look flat. Ten miles, right? So, ten yeah. miles is how much curvature over the Earth in degrees? Um, to to my in degrees. Yeah. Um, I I know a lot of people want to take the circumference of the Earth. I believe in kilometers. It's forty thousand and thirty kilometers the circumference of the earth they want to take the miles 24,901 miles they think it's very simple that you could just divide that by 360 degrees you're really not going to get a great calculation that way exactly you're really not going to get a you great, would get a great, great calculation, great calculation Three... at all. so i'm i'm not doing that math well, you're proposed it i'm telling you that's a horrible route it's exactly the earth is a nearly a, a nearly perfect sphere then 360 degrees right sure. you would you'd be able to find out how many and... miles there is per degree, right? Right. So you're asking. On, you're asking an elementary on Earth, school question. On Earth, and if I were to simply just divide that on Earth by uh, wait, let me finish talking. On Earth, one degree is sixty-nine miles, right? Cool. One degree is sixty-nine. And? So, ten miles is yes. how much of curvature? Yeah. To my understanding, it's sixty-six feet. No, in degrees. In degrees. Curvature. Yes. You don't do um, curvature in feet. If 69 if, if miles I, is one I were, degree. If I, were, if I were to do that math, um, six, it's easy. 6.9 miles. Uh, sorry. Yeah. 10 miles. So it, right? it, would, it, would be, it would be a tenth. It would be a tenth roughly, right? Yeah. It, it would be. Right. So, sorry. So it's 10 miles for the observation and it's 69 miles per one degree. All right. Yep. So 10 miles is approximately one seventh of a degree, right? Yeah, just, right? I have a tenth so, of a degree. So light has to bend mm -hmm. one seventh of one degree for that observation to be able to be seen. That's it. To be light I, has to, to be eye level. one seventh of one degree. That's the amount that that light has to bend. Why it, that? And now it's eye level. 
Then, now you can see it. So, yeah. So, so as long as it's bending that one percent, just like the parabola that everybody wants to, you know, complain about. As long as is that one percent, it's gonna hug that globe all the way around, and you could see things from all this, all the way from the other yeah, side of the as, globe because it's hugging. That's the globe. exactly how refraction works. It allows you to see over a that curve, is as, as I explained. Shit. Personal bullshit. incredulity. Personal incredulity. That's all you have. I've shown that that no, happens. That's that's the bullshit that globies believe. That's impossible. Uh, again, I've shown you. Why is it impossible? You you showed me a hot water example. I listened to it, Cold bro. Water, it wasn't but it's, hot. it's absolutely impossible for why is it impossible to make an observation? It's impossible to make an observation from Milwaukee to, or I'm sorry, from Michigan to Milwaukee at 80 miles away. The tallest building in Milwaukee is 600 feet tall. It's absolutely impossible for that why is it impossible? You keep saying it's that, impossible. You keep saying it's way. impossible, so but why? I'm, I'm peering out. I'm peering out, and it, it right. appears, I, I would, it right, appears wait. to be flat. Garrett, stop. Garrett, can't stop. Garrett, flat, Garrett shut up. Listen to me. I was still me. talking. You asked yeah, me a you're, question. You're I'm not fucking and answering I, you. Right. I don't want you to just don't babble to and say up. it's impossible. I'm impo answering you. Just, you need to shut up and listen for a minute, right? Because you're not Be answering respectful. the question. You asked me a question. I was in the middle of the answer. Right, stop. Don't, don't tell me to shut up when I'm answering you. Lead, you're not answering the question, right? So I'm going to ask the question again, right? Why is it impossible? Because it's physically impossible for that light why? to make... Why? Cause, yes. Because refraction doesn't do that. Why? Light doesn't... Other, otherwise, you're saying it can bend in all different types of direction. It doesn't bend hugging the earth. Why? You're saying it doesn't, not, but we've I'm shown that you, light does that. Possible. We've shown it's that light bends possible. over a curve. You, why? You keep saying it's not physically possible. Tell me why. Because light doesn't operate in that fashion. L I've shown you that light bends over a curve. And it and it doesn't bend to be able to for you to see like you you gave me an example of a of of a something in a driveway right that's not sixty six feet of curvature you're never going what to be able fuck? to display that and be testable at all whatsoever you're never going to be able to display that you're never going to dump a hot bucket of water Lord, it's in front time, of Chicago you. and then all of a sudden the curve goes down you're never going to be able to do that yeah you so haven't that's, answered that's me the not, question like why the is it impossible thing. like you're, you're avoiding like the question kind of you are avoiding the question Garrett. What? Why is it impossible? Because light, my answer, light doesn't operate in that pseudo What way proof do you have that light doesn't work like that? Because I've shown it does. It does not work that way. You didn't show it. Prove it. I you showed light going around a curve. Driveway example. Yeah, you showed I driveway literally showed example. light bending over a curve. Therefore, light can bend light, over light, a curve. Light does not bend over the curvature of the earth in that fashion. Why not? Absolutely not. Why not? It's physically impossible. Why is it physically impossible? And, and 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 another thing too. What? No, stop, don't. No, not another thing. Shut up, Garrett. Another... No, Garrett, stop. No, we're gonna stick with this. Why right. is it physically impossible? Tell me. Why is it physically impossible? Yeah. Because light doesn't bend that much around the globe to be. Seen. What proof do you have that light doesn't bend that much? What proof do you have that it does? You don't have. I've to shown you light either. bends. And I and I can tell you that it doesn't bend that far. A, it like does, it, I've you, shown you the light you bends. Right, at at what, what like, point, Garrett? No, stop. At what point does light stop bending? Um, when it's bent enough. Well, like, what do you want me to say to that? You know what I mean? Like, so, when it, it's so bent light enough, can bend it, it, over. It, light can bend over ten can, meters, so how, but it can't how, bend how over ten miles. How far does refraction work? Let me ask you right, that. How right, far uh, can refraction make me see? Allow me to see something. How far? So wait. So light can bend over ten meters, but it can't bend over ten miles. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not bending hardly anything. You, you like. I literally showed about it bending. The whole bending light thing, right? So, so this is the thing. Like, if you're talking about bending light, right? You're talking about like looking through a waterfall. You know what I mean? Like, you're talking about this this object lifting up beyond the curve and arising, and then not. Yeah, that's what happens. I showed distance. you that happening. And it's not distorted. And it's not distorted. Refraction like, isn't always going to be showed distorted. Me was highly distorted. No, it wasn't. Now, for me to for me to. What I showed you was there that, wasn't distortion. Not in it. distorted. What is, point, yeah, you just lied to me, Garrett. Don't lie to there me. Would, there would be Garrett, you just lied there to me. Don't lie to somewhere. me, Garrett. Don't lie to me, Garrett. I showed you something lying. that was that not out, distorted. Man. I'm not lying about anything. I showed you something that was not distorted. You just lied about it. What, what you showed me, I saw the bottom of whatever that was, and that looked distorted. It did not look crisp and clean. It was it not, not distorted. Perfect it at was all whatsoever. exactly That was the, picture perfect? You would be. call that picture perfect? I wouldn't. It, you can watch the whole video, and you can see that it's not distorted. That's and and I will I will say I will say this again because we might have two different perspectives of what picture perfect and distorted look like looks like when you showed that that video of the water pouring that did not look picture perfect to me that looked distorted. Right. I'm still waiting for your evidence that it can't happen. You've claimed outright that light can't light doesn't behave like that. Prove it. 
Or is that just your religious belief? I think you have a religious belief that you could see anything beyond the curve because it's actually flat. Oh, I've shown that light bends around the curve. You add refraction to it. You could add refraction to it. I've shown that light bends around the curve. I've shown that light bends over a curve. And, and then you also think that lasers bend over the curve and yeah, lasers, lasers are light. The ionosphere. And, Laser, and if that you does. add all these things up, uh, right, uh, all of Garrett, these stop. Things that you're sharing, Shut up. Garrett, all stop. All of these things that Garrett, you're sharing stop. are pseudo. Garrett, stop. You have no way of testing it or proving it either. Garrett, stop. You keep avoiding the question. Why is it impossible for light to do that? Tell me. Because light doesn't bend that much, Craig. Prove it. Prove that it does. Refraction bends light. I've it shown that happening. Light, but it doesn't bend that much. We're, we're in a gray well, it, space, right? It do, so it doesn't bend, it it doesn't it, bend a seventh of a degree. Are you saying light you cannot bend that. one seventh of a degree? You can't prove that. Um, I showed light you're, bending more than one seventh of a degree. And you're ultimately saying military weapons, when they when they see something in the distance, refraction can totally move it from where it is. Military, less, never, military do not use line never, of sight. Military do not use line never, of sight like that. They will never. There be is able no to hit military that does saying. what you say that they do. Are you kidding me? No, there is no military that a targets weapons the way that you say they do. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. I'll actually, if if I, if I can take a moment, I can continue to talk to you. I'll pull up this weapon. You, you can do some research behind it. But there is a military sight weapon that is equipped on naval ships. That can hit a target. It's a sight weapon from over a hundred miles. Guarantee away. it's not. Okay, you can think what you want about it. You there's, remember, there's, there's you remember radar. our military, there's right? Radar, there's radar, commercial radar. You could add to your boat. That Radar's you got a radar horizon. The horizon. No, radar literally has a radar horizon. And Again, radar, military, radar sailor. Past, your supposed radar horizon. I believe it's what? It's either no. 25 or maybe 250 miles. And there's no. radar that can work well beyond Radar that. has a horizon based on the curvature of the Earth. Yeah, that's what they tell you. But that's no, not I've true. Tested it. Radar works beyond that. No, radar doesn't. works beyond that distance. No, it doesn't. It does. No, it doesn't. Again, military, Royal Navy. No, it doesn't. And there's a yeah, and actually, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because there's a Royal Navy, um, Royal Navy. Uh... Come on, where's this weapon? I'm waiting for this weapon. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm looking it up, and I'm clearly uh didn't didn't plan on talking about this directly, so I'm trying to see if I can pull this information. And Royal Navy, the Samson radar can see can see 400 kilometers. And how does it do that? And that's. That's the Royal Navy Samson radar can see 400 kilometers. Samsung or now, Samsung? Uh, the Samp Sun, S A M P S O N. Sa the the Royal Navy Samson radar can see 400 miles. Now, say what you want. I'm suspect, and that brings attention to the possibility that the Earth could be flat. If this radar can work past the horizon, have you ever looked at how it works? You were telling me, right? And, and, we're, and then what we're going to say, and this is and this is where my challenge comes into play with believing everything, because somebody comes along and they say, well, they're probably just bouncing it off the ionosphere, and I'm supposed to walk away and go, oh, okay, cool. I guess they're bouncing it off the ionosphere. When I'm looking at this information that doesn't say anything about the ionosphere, it's saying that it sends a signal out over the flat plane of water. Ha! Right. To okay. Be able uh, to pick so, up yeah. things. So the Samson radar, um, it can only detect things 400 miles in the sky. The, the, Samsung, the Samsung the Samsung radar, but it could also no no this this is for, this is, is from the Samsung ability. radar manual right the Samsung the Samsung radar is specifically a sky scanning radar a three hundred and sixty degree sky scanning radar yeah. um, so the Samsung radar achieves its long range capability through a com combination of advanced hardware and software features the radar u system uses an array of thousands of trans uh, transmit receive modules which allow it to scan the sky rapidly and detect targets with high accuracy. The AESA design also enables the radar to operate in multiple modes simultaneously, including long-range air surveillance, target tracking, and ground surveillance. Uh, in addition, the Samsung radar employs sophisticated signal processing algorithms to filter out clutter and noise from the environment. Ground surveillance has a maximum range of 200 to 250 miles, depending on um, height of radar. Allowing it to detect even smaller, low observable targets at long ranges. It also uses advanced waveform techniques to minimize the radar signature and avoid detection by the enemy systems.
So, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing there that says that it couldn't work on a globe. I mean, when I when I start doing exactly the math that you just uh, expressed to me, um, at if the radar can work at 250 miles, Craig, that would be approximately 7.89 miles of curvature. At 250 miles away, this radar is sensing things that are almost eight miles on the other side of the curve. Now, I'm sorry, okay. Craig. But so, that doesn't uh, have sound you, have like, you ever looked uh, into that it? That doesn't sound like a straight radio Again, signal have you ever to me. Looked that doesn't into sound it. like it. It sounds like ever, to me that the Have you ever looked into it, yes or no? Beep. Have you ever looked into it, yes or no? Have I looked into this? Yeah. So by using... I did look oh, into this. No, you haven't. So by using over-the-horizon radar, the Samsung radar can extend its range to distances beyond the line of sight imposed by Earth's curvature. However, this technique comes with some limitations and challenges, such as atmospheric variability and the need for sophisticated signal processing techniques to separate the ref ref reflected signals from the background noise. In addition right. to over-the-horizon radar, the Samsung radar also employs other techniques to extend its range, such as waveform optimization, advanced signal processing algorithms, and high-gain antennas. Um, mainly, the Samsung radar is used to detect things in the sky up to 400 miles away. Mainly, right. But it's a, it has a 360 degree ability. It actually has the ability to check for submarines underneath the uh, the ocean water as well. Yeah. And and then under underneath the water, of course, there's uh there's sonar shadows that also prove that you know the Earth isn't a globe because we would have sonar shadows. We wouldn't even be able to 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 communicate like su like submarines can for miles and miles and miles. Why? Uh, so because sound waves, sound waves would refract off of everything on the ground and it wouldn't be able yeah. to make it around the curve. So sound waves under the water actually travel in something called a sound channel. This is how whales can communicate thousands of miles. Yep. Um, yep. The, there's the, as the water gets more dense, as it goes down, it reflects sounds and it also reflects off of the, uh, the surface. So that makes a channel yep. that follows the curve of the earth that the sound wave yep. bounce in, matching the curve of the earth. Um, it, it wouldn't, there would be, there would be shadows. There would be sonar shadows from the curve. There is sonar curve. shadows. Yes, there is sonar we, shadows. Yes. We get sonar You're shadows quite right. often. Yep. Uh, they, 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 matching, yep. matching the globe. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is no globe. <laughs> there is no globe. Just, just like, uh, just like this, um, this. Oh, uh, oh so actually, um, just, radar, just so we go back to the Samsung radar, able, I was wrong about to, the brown tape capability. And, and, and again, do you know how Wait, wait, big wait, wait, stop one eight, sec, one sec. Before you, uh, Garrett, before you carry on, right, before you carry on, I was wrong yeah. about the Samsung radar. The ground surveillance technology uh, the capability is not 250 kilometers. It's a maximum of 93 miles in good weather conditions, according to the manufacturer, Lockheed Martin. Um, so ground range is a maximum of 93 miles and that depends on the weather conditions because refraction is a factor okay so yeah um please look into stuff before you start spouting nonsense. And, and 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 even at that still craig we're still looking at a mile of curvature a mile how many a degrees mile. how many degrees um how many degrees is is a mile out of no, uh, how many 69? degrees is 93 miles how many degrees is three miles? 90, 93 say, miles. How many degrees is 93 miles? Yeah, what, what the ra the Samsung radar can see for ground-based targets. Uh, that would roughly be, I'd say, about a degree and a half, give or take, right? Yeah. So for right. light to for the radar to be able to see that far, it just has to refract a degree and a half. No problem. Yeah, one mile. No big deal. Let's let's put it in like realistic time, like yeah, degrees. realistic uh, perspective. One it's mile. How much is no it is bending deal, right? in degrees? Yep, radio waves go straight. They don't bend. Remember that, right? Uh, they refract. They don't bend down. You remember you said they bend up. So how does no, it? No, I didn't say they bend up. I said they travel in a from the transmitter. They travel in a spherical nature, right? But if you were to take right. if you were to take like one line of that spherical nature, right? That one line will still refract over the curve. Yeah, refracting so, so over the curve. It, you're telling me that it's you're telling me it's doing this. Bloop. Yeah, because it's following it, the atmospheric refraction. Man, if that don't sound like pseudoscience, I don't know what does. I bro. don't think you know what pseudoscience is. Like, can you, you define you pseudoscience no for me? You, can you define like, I, I pseudoscience I, I, for me? I, I know you're the fight. Can the you define pseudoscience for me? 
But, can you define pseudoscience for me? Can you define pseudoscience for me? Can you you're define saying radio waves? Go Garrett, straight, but in your shut up! They curve. Garrett, listen. Your mind up. Can you define pseudoscience for me, please? Yeah, it's untestable science. It's science. No, that is not you, what pseudoscience uh, is. Can you um, define pseudoscience, yes or no? Yeah, it's bullshit talk science. It's no, so, so you don't know what pseudoscience is. You keep using what that is word. What pseudoscience, Greg? It's something that doesn't uh, adhere to the scientific method properly. It's something that is bu built on biases and assumptions. It it's something that will not rigorously test. It's something that does not follow what science actually follows. I could swear I just said it's bullshit science, made up science that doesn't follow shit. It's its own bullshit. I mean, forgive me for my. It's not its own shit. And... No, that is not yeah. right. It's 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 bullshit. It's untestable. It's unduplicatable. It's 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 literally saying that the the the, the ionosphere is x amount of feet in the air. You don't fucking know. How do you know that? There's no way to measure that. Just like to measure just like what the the. the Claiming that the solar system is moving at 2.5 million miles an hour We've compared measured to it. what stationary item? How do we measure that? How Look, do we measure to, that? Compared to the center of the galaxy. Go up against. Compared to the what? center of the galaxy. At, at what point? At what point is our physical point of reference to say this isn't this isn't this isn't is not moving? How do you uh, do it, that? That's you that's, take, that's pseudoscience. You take they put you together take, a guesstimation. You take a point in time back. and then you take another point in time and then you measure. And what do you measure? How what far unit? you've traveled. The parallax changes. How do you do that in free fall? This is what I'm saying. This is pseudoscience. This is, you believe it is fact. You keep saying pseudoscience, but you to. don't know what pseudoscience means. Nothing no, about I, I it is pseudoscience. Told, we just agreed. We just agree what pseudoscience is. It's something that's not testable by the scientific method. No, it's right? not. It's something that doesn't have evidence, right? It doesn't. You have no evidence that. I the have Earth is all the evidence. Million. Bro. You do not have evidence that the Earth and the solar system is moving at. Yes, two we do. We've measured it with parallax. Power. What's that? We've measured it with parallax. No, dude, I know you read something on the internet, but you have no way of measuring that to confirm We've measured it, it no with parallax. It. Re retest that for me, if you could, Craig. Retest that. Science has tested that? it all the time. No. Half a half of science that we get science blown, tests it all the time. Bullshit. Like, how do you possibly test that? There's no reference point. You can't yeah, test there the is. speed of something Parallax. if you don't have a, a stationary reference point. You need a stationary reference point to even come up with the speed of anything. Otherwise, what's the reference point? If speed you're is relative. Fall, if I, if speed I'm is relative. Away, away from you, Garrett, we're shut up. You're just babbling now. At Garrett. An hour, come on. Fuck's sake, you're just babbling now. How do you now. know? Speed is relative. We compare it to the center of the galaxy. That is our reference point. And what is that? What is what? What is the center of the gravity? Prove it. What is that? What's the center of the galaxy? It's Sagittarius A. What is that? It's a supermassive a black that hole. We, have we been there before? Has anyone been there before? Who, who is the master of telling us our speed? Who tells us that? We, we measure don't it. know. We can you, see that there's Craig, a black hole there at the center Craig, of the galaxy, and we Craig, can measure compared to it. I, I don't know everything. This is a point you have to humble yourself. You don't know anything. We don't know exactly that. We we've don't measured it. Again, we've measured it. We do know. You have to humble yourself that we have no point of reference to measure. Yes, we do. No, we don't. We, we literally have a place that we're told. We have a fantasy never, never. Oh, yes. Yeah, so just because you don't believe it. But right? you've never seen that. Right. Like, it's like Santa Claus's North Pole. Right. That's what you oh, believe in. And no, because you were told we have that, evidence of that. We have evidence that no exists. Reference. Shut up. Just stop fucking babbling and actually listen <laughs> to what is evidence. Right. So determining the speed of the solar system around the galaxy involves measuring the motion of the sun relative to the center of the Milky Way. There are several methods that astronomers use to make these measurements. Stellar motions. Uh, one way to determine the speed of the solar system around the galaxy is to measure the motions of nearby stars. By observing the positions and velocities of stars over time, astronomers can calculate the gravitational forces acting on the stars and infer the mass distribution of the galaxy. From this, they can estimate the orbital speed of the sun around the galactic center. You could also use Doppler shift, or you could use the cosmic microwave background radiation as a reference point. Uh, so overall, yeah. determining the speed of the solar system around the galaxy requires a combination of observations, calculations, and modeling. By using different methods and cross-checking the results, astronomers can refine their estimates and gain a better understanding of the structure and dynamics of the Milky Way galaxy. Right. I, can yeah. now, I could now present a whole bunch of scientific papers and experiments that back this up. You would just go, because it's fake, because you don't believe it, because you are a dishonest piece of shit. Let, let me ask you this. All scientific papers are true, huh? None of them are biased? I never said that. Well, I'm saying that, and what you're sharing, sharing to me sounds like biased bullshit.
right? You're, no, you're looking you're at evidence and basing your no position on evidence. Tested. No one's they, ever tested. They've you're literally up with tested a theoretical, it. This is my They've reply. They've literally now. tested you're, you're, you're it. You're coming up with a They've theoretical literally tested it. response. They've it's literally theoretical. tested it. It's theoretical. It's never been They've tested. Lit- You've never They've tested, literally tested, tested the it. Universe. They've literally Are you tested me? it. They've literally like, tested who, it. Who, who has that power? They've who literally the power tested it. Universe. You can keep saying they haven't, no, but they've they have literally it. tested it. No, they haven't. No, they you haven't. You can keep That's saying bullshit. that, but they have. fake bullshit. So all you've got, all you've got is denial and saying that it's fake, because you're a dishonest piece of shit. You are dishonest. No one's ever tested something. I can show you all the scientific papers behind it where they did the testing. Can you? You can't do the scientific method of the the the, the pace of the. Universe. You don't even know sorry, what the scientific method is. I do. I do. No, you don't. I do, what, sir. What's the five steps of the scientific method? Re, re, it's it's something being retestable. What is the five steps of the scientific method? Uh, um, retestable. No. Nope. Replicatable. No. Nope. Repeatable. No. Nope. Fucking. Uh, what is? None it? of that so, is the scientific so. method. None of that. What is it? What is it then? What is it? So you don't know what the scientific method is, do you? What is it? As you look it up, what is it? Is it off the top of your head, or do you need yeah. to look it up? Five observations. Five steps of the scientific right. method. Observation, hypothesis, prediction, experiment, analysis. Right, as you looked it up too. Come on, man. I'm looking like at the camera. The questions as you're reading it I'm looking the at the screen. camera. Right. <laughs> I've had this conversation... I've had this as conversation over 700 times. Screen. I see you looking at it. Come I've on, I've got man. monitors all around me. Right? right, but I've had this conversation I, I, I 700 times. I You're know what the science. Answer, right. I'm gonna mute you a sec because you just keep talking over me. Right. I've had this conversation over 700 times. I know what the scientific method is. You did not know what the scientific method is. Do not talk about the scientific method because you do not know what it is. I was so far off. Repeatable, observable, duplicatable. Yeah, it's I mean, not that at let's all. Just, let's just say I'm in the right ballpark, all right? No, you're I not. Mean, you're not anywhere I, near I, it. Oh, I, I said cupcakes, lions, and zebras. That was my answer? Or did I say repeatable, duplicatable, observable? Like, come on, man. What no, did you I didn't say, say observable right? at all. Okay. What, and what is it? Being you know duplicatable like, and repeatable is not part of the scientific method. All right. What is it again? Observable? You, ob- you make an observation. You right. form a hypothesis, you use okay. that hypothesis to create a prediction, you use that okay. prediction to design an experiment, you do that right. experiment and you analyze your results. That right. is the scientific method, not whatever the yeah, fuck I'm, you're I'm, on about. I'm sorry I was so off by saying that any of those things would be closely related to being repeatable or duplicatable. Yeah, that, that's, that's not in the scientific sense. method. That is right. not the scientific method. Right, right, right. Nowhere in the scientific method does it say repeatable, reproducible. Nowhere. So, so, You're making so science, that up. So science shouldn't be repeatable. No one said that, but the scientific method uh, is different from science. All I'm saying is if you're going to make a, like a, a claim at something, it definitely should be repeatable, right? I'll agree. It should be observable. I mean, am I wrong? It should be recordable. Yeah, but that's I mean, not the scientific are... method. You are not sure. talking about hey. the scientific method. Sue me, but none of these things that you're doing are in the scientific method or repeatable. Yes, no, repeatable. everything that I say is backed up by the scientific method. Um, everything you say is backed up by a 30 second Google search. No, the scientific method comes to the conclusions that, that I give you. And I don't actually use Google for my searches. That's good. <laughs> I don't like to either. So, you've got no evidence and you've got a lot of personal incredulity. Anything else? Um, I mean, not, not so much. I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I came on this show knowing that I was talking to a person that was going to have their own, um, you know, personal emotions wrapped up in defending the globe. I, you know, no, you it's have nothing a, about personal. You, you, I have, you I have all evidence people, and facts. You of you of all globe believers have a direct bias to support the globe. You have a YouTube channel I don't that you're have, monetizing. I, everyone, everyone's got a bias a in globe. the world. Every and, single person has a bias me, that's irrelevant. And, and this is the difference. This is the difference. If, if you propose difference is you're dumb. Me, you don't understand what you're talking my about. My ego, my ego isn't. Your ego is really high. I don't know. Your ego is so high. No, you, no, no, you, no! I told yeah, you is. multiple times in this, in this, in this. You have podcast such a big ego that that I said I don't know that. I said that multiple times. No, yeah, no. I'm, I'm humble <laughs> enough to admit that. But you're not you, humble. You, you are you really not humble in the slightest. You literally are you searching think you're for acting something humble. and coming up with the answer. Thirty seconds yeah. later, calling it a matter of fact. That's 
That's it debunks you. Work. This is how easy it is to debunk you, though. That's the point. That's not a debunk, bro. That's not a debunk. Going like, to Lockheed look Martin and, and looking wrong. at their manual is not a debunk. No. So, wait. No. Wait, wait, wait. Right, hold on one sec. So, going to the people that make the equipment that you were talking about and no. finding out that you were wrong is not a debunk. And and listen, I'm being respectful of your show. No, you're not. And there are people, there are people that design things that were consumed that aren't the people that I would go to to get the answer. Oh, Period. so there's more lies. So you wouldn't go to the people that make the thing to ask about no. the thing, because those you go to are someone biased. that doesn't it's, know about hey, it. They're right, biased. brilliant. S science, scientists want to sell their science. Doctors want to sell their 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 doctor Personal incredulity. Surgeons, surgeons want to cut something out of Personal your body. Personal incredulity, you know, nothing more. Uh, dentists want to work on your teeth. They're biased. Personal incredulity, nothing that more. Done. So a lot of personal incredulity. All right. A cook Brilliant. wants to feed you. You know, so my food's you, the best. Right. So you have You're nothing. Be biased. That's what I'm saying. So you have absolutely nothing, then, right? Doctors don't get paid off of surgery. Okay. Yep. Cool. I get it. You have nothing. Brilliant, I appreciate Scientists you coming on and displaying that Flat Earthers are all dumb as fuck. Thank you very much. NASA, NASA, do, NASA doesn't bring in $68 million a day and we're... What a fucking dumbass. Oh, I had a lot of fun. Um, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> and once again, guys, um, I'm looking at the fucking amount of support here and uh, I'm probably going to get emotional again. Can you not do this to me? I, I mean... I, I genuinely don't know what to say. That was an extremely fun debate. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. That was an extremely fun debate. His entire argument is, I don't believe it. It doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. That sounds ridiculous. Brilliant. Well, well, well done. You don't believe it. That doesn't really, you know change the fact that these things happened and you know i brought up the um uh, i brought up the the nasa video that he wanted to but then he didn't want to talk about it all of a sudden it was brilliant <laughs> oh my goodness me uh you guys make this so much fun i i love watching these streams back so that i can read the chat um the i obviously when i'm debating i can't really keep up with the chat but uh I love watching the debates back, not to watch myself. I mean, I know I'm gorgeous, right? But not to watch myself, but to, to read the chat, um, you know, and see what you guys have been saying. And did you know, on average, that during my streams, I get about 10,000 messages in the chat. I think that's quite a lot. I think that's, that's awesome. Uh, it shows how much you guys, you know, the community that's here and how much you, you talk and interact. It's, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, Connell Silverfair for $10 says, $10 just for trouncing Garrett Morgan. Personally dealt with him, been blocked twice by him on Facebook. I can safely say this foul mouth dunce in his embarrassment to Michigan. <laughs> yes. Um, I think people in Michigan have, have disowned him. <laughs> oh shit, Leo. Yeah, he did say that air is H2O, didn't he? I did miss that. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Leo, the all chemist, says, FTFE, can you please not disappoint me and tell me you noticed that he said that air is H2O, please? No, I actually, there was so much stupid, I must have missed that. But, yeah, he did, didn't he? He said that air is H2O, oh my god. <laughs> um, classic Glober rage quit. No, at the end of the debate, there's no rage quit, it's just finished. Like... What do you mean, Rebel? There, there's, the debate was done. I got him to make his final thoughts. It was over with. The, 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 there was no debate. Uh, Andreas Elvich, 12 sex, all the sex. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Alison for $5 says, Good morning. Why do even the simplest of navigation techniques, such as calculating our flight distances, require us to account for the globe? Because it, it's a globe, and you know he wouldn't answer it. Uh, another 12 sex from Andreas, thank you. And five Canadian dollars from Bandit. Stringer News 1, $5, says, The Pacific Ocean is the largest body of water on Earth. Lake Baki is the largest freshwater lake. Michigan is not near them. Yeah. Um, lakes do have tides, right, that are affected by the moon. But the other forces in lakes, because they're generally too small, um, the other forces, like from the water moving around the, the, the basin of the lake, from underwater currents and stuff, those forces are 
bigger than the forces created by the moon on the tide. So even though tides, you know, lakes do have tides, it, it, it's very hard to kind of determine how much of that is influenced by the moon. Uh, Andrea Zeldich for 24 sex. I mean, that's that's 48 sex so far, dude. That's a lot of sex. Four times 12 is 180, according to some. Yeah, but according to some, we also have 128 seasons in a year, so. Sarcastic Barman for £2 says, hang on, fish in air. What the fuck? Not, not the same, no. Oh my god, yeah. The whole argument of rockets need a thing to push off of. No, they don't. Here's someone on a skateboard being pushed back by throwing the ball. No, they're not! Yeah, they are. They're, it's literally happening. Right, right there. <laughs> um, Jason Starnes for $5 says, ask him if all the curve calculators use the 8-inch mile formula and try not to laugh too hard. Yeah, no, he did say that. Um, and that was quite funny. But here's the thing, right? Um, eight inches per mile squared. Us Globers, we, we've we've been attacking flat earthers a long time for using eight inches per mile squared, saying it's not accurate. Even me, you know. But we've been wrong. Because eight inches per mile squared actually does work. And, and not just for, like, cord measurements through the earth, but for, you know, a, the correct... There is a correct way to use it and where it's always going to be accurate. Um... The problem is the application of it has always been wrong. Um, and because eight, inch, 8 inches per mile squared it technically is a par parabolic formula, you know, we will assume that it would just be a parabola, but that's not the way it's applied. So, um, MC Tune did a better explanation of it. String News, uh, Draco Fire, sorry, member for 30 months says, nah, sounds fake, I don't think it works like that. Argument dismissed. Yeah, that, that's pretty much his entire argument, right? Stringer is one for two dollars says way to disrespect the flag a hole. <sighs> he was a fucking asshole, right? Not that Luke Perry member for three months says even as a newbie flurf already fluent in nut uh yeah. Um he's not savable. He is instantly someone that you can tell is never gonna listen to evidence. Kurt B, who's been a member for 24 months, that's exactly twice around the sun, says, I would really like FTFE versus McFlatty for charity. See what we can do. Kirk B for two pounds says, can we vote on it, please? Um, a dumb flat earther gave me money. And I'm not going to read out his message. I'm just going to say thank you for the money, you dumb flat earther. Uh, Snipey McSendit for five pounds says, Flurf sits in front of a boob flag, pretends to know things. Flurfs always pretend to know things. Uh, Pat in the chat for five dollars says, great. Garrett, for your information... Nothing says I'm in the closet like that abomination of an American flag. Just come out, man. It's okay. We know Dubai is daddy. Yeah, I apologize for him having that there. Moosey for ten pounds for ten dollars says your videos motivated me to have my first discussion with a flirt the other day. I'm I'm sorry. Um, it is as fun as it appears. Therefore, I ask for final confirmation. Is the moon surface as bright as the sun? No. No, it's not. A flurf said that to you, I'm sorry. Guys, I mean, like... I've already been reading the Super Chats for like five minutes, and... Um, I've not touched how many's there. This, the support, I honestly, in the past few days, the, 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 amount, the level of support is, is insane. Thank you. Uh, Connell Silver for five dollars says Garrett clearly ran track before dropping out of school. Look how fast he runs away from Craig question. Yeah, whenever I ask a question, he just skips to something else, right? <laughs> Canon Carol says this channel proves there's an enemy to the truth. Why else FTFE? Is it so silly? Yeah, well, Flat Earth is silly, and an enemy to the truth. Um, Space Tomato member for 13 months says German had much technology, such advance. And Space Tomato for two pounds says, I'm in space. Connor Silverfer for two dollars says, Garrett, I disagree with your math. Now what? Yeah, Garrett can't do math. Ted Loca for $4.99 says, refraction is just a fraction of a percent, but yet Chicago can disappear. Double standard. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I was saying to him. So there's times where it's not there? Yeah. And why is that? Oh, because of the atmosphere. 
All right, so it can make it disappear, but not appear. No, Siggy. No more crying. Um, Aaron L one two one two for twenty dollars says um, this, and this is their first super chat as well. Thank you. I'm Evan. This is my wife's channel, but I wanted to say that I'm one year opioid free, and you're a big inspiration to keep going. I'd also love to make you a flirt song. Let me know if you'd be interested in it. Well, hell yes. Um, and Evan, yeah, being opioid free is amazing. Um, yeah, if you guys don't know. You know, I've, I've, I'm a sufferer from chronic pain and I have been for many, many, many years. And for a long time, I was on opioid pills and highly addicted to them. They, they, you know, they could have ruined my life and it was so hard to get off of them. Uh, so anyone that's able to, you know, just put on opioids and stuff for a prescription and, and it grips you with, because it does. If you're able to get rid of that, fucking respect you. It was not, it was like, um, that's my, I guess, my only experience of coming down from something, right? And it was for the whole of Christmas that year, I, I couldn't move. It was hideous. But thank you, Aaron, Evan. Uh, yeah, hit me up. Do a song. Love it. Siggy Sigwell for $20 says, give him hell, Craig. Why can't Americans say my name right? <laughs> Tim Pryor for $10 says, for newbie, he's in deep already. Automatically believes when he saw on YouTube without questioning it, but demanding FTFE to prove everything and denying it away. Toon draw flurf number three. Um, they are a pseudoscientist when flat earth evidence is presented, but when evidence of the globe is presented, they are ultra harsh on it. Tim Tully for $5 says, 60 years back when I did drugs, I thought I was a genius too. Garrett, don't do amphetamines. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. All right, I'm going to be back in two seconds, guys. I do need to grab a drink. So, um, talk amongst yourselves, and here's a picture of Dave. Go to studio mode. I'm back. I'm just going to have a bong before I carry on because you guys are giving me so many super chats. I'm going to be here all night. <laughs> oh, what fun, hey? Still 633 of you watching. What did it peak at, guys? I, I didn't actually catch it. Did we see what the uh, the top number was? I'm uh, smoking a bit of banana kush today. Oh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> That's better. Eight fifteen. That's not bad, guys. Honestly, I, it blows my mind. <coughs> That's the bomb, don't worry. Hmm. All right. Here we go. Oh, Gary. My, my AI, Gary Webbenenga, gave me $5. A man studying radio waves for years would never have understood how they interacted with the atmosphere. That just doesn't make sense. Oh, that's not the real Gary Webbenenga. That's Wenbenga. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Mar Marconi... No, they... <sighs> That year, they had discovered that stuff bounces off of the upper atmosphere, right? Um, so that was taken into account when Mercury did his experiment. Uh, Stringer News 1 for $2 says, Ham radio isn't kosher. <laughs> and a Siggy Sigwald gifted another 20 memberships, right? Um, Siggy, in the past week or so, you've given me like a couple of hundred members. So... 
if you're green in the chat right now and you haven't done it yourself, it's probably Ziggy, all right? Um, so if you have been given a membership by Siggy Sigwald, then please, I'd like to see in the chat right now a thank you, Siggy, right? I guarantee the majority of the people in the chat that are members right now are because of Siggy. So please, please, for me, can you say thank you, Ziggy, if he's given you a member? Um, Oflamo for five dollars says physics don't care about your logic. No, they do not. <clears throat> there we go. Thank you, Ziggy. You are appreciated, my friend. Um, not just by me, but by this community. So thank you. Uh, Tim Pryor for five dollars says, "Let me get this straight. It's okay for him to do a thirty-second search and believe it, but not FTFE." Yeah. Yeah, I did do a 30 second search on the weapon that he found, that he was on about, found the Lockhead Manual um, article about it and used that. It would have taken him 30 seconds to not make such a stupid argument. Ted Loka for 199 says, sell shorter wave than Marconi, totally different. Yeah, I love this when flat earthers are like, Ugh, I can't even get a cell signal, yet we sent a signal to the moon. Yeah, we, we didn't use mobile phones to call the moon dude and gps is fucking cell tower why do i get gps in the middle of the ocean why can you get it in the middle of the antarctic why can you why is there on the top of planes gps receivers oh fucking morons king crew for one month says ziggy you demand yes fucking ziggy you are show your support for ziggy thank you dude uh, and then ziggy sigwell for 225 ars always hilarious to see someone trying to use uh, to cuke, not understanding what that implies for their position. They never get what they're saying. Um, Jake the Surgeon for $10 says, if, uh, if I said legs weren't originally meant for walking, I'm sure that would, would be hard to believe at face value. But once the evidence is given and you still deny it, then you're being willfully ignorant. Yeah, willful ignorance was strong in this stream. Pardon me. Uh... Eon Dust, for, I'm, I'm not even a third of the way through the fucking Super Chats, guys. Like, you're, you're blowing my mind here. Um, uh, Eon Dust, $5 Australian, says, Honey, your argument can just be summed up as, I don't understand, therefore wrong. That was his entire argument. Absolutely. Um, uh, and for people in the chat asking this, um, yeah, my, my wife got me a meat clear for Christmas, and then I nearly cut my fingers off of it earlier. So, <laughs> Donald Trump's Bone Spur has been a, been a member for 34 months. You know what, Lord? I'm going to rent you. I'm, uh, I'm going to give you a standard moderator, uh, Lord, it's probing time. Donald Trump's Bone Spur has been a member for 34 months, says, Who's the Papa Flurf? D Marble, Nathan Thompson. I think he's too young for a Papa Flurf. Um, he kind of had a mixture of all of them, to be honest. Eddie Reese for $5 says, I don't know the actual shape of the earth, but I know it's not flat. It's one of the most unscientific things flurfs can say. Yeah. They never know. Oh, it's, I don't know what you're on about, but I, I know it's not a globe. Ah. How do you know if you don't know? You know? <laughs> Draco. You, my friend, I'm going to remove you as a moderator. And then add you as a managing moderator. Because you deserve that. Uh, there we go. Eddie Reese for $5 says, I don't know. Just read that one. Aaron L1212, who's actually Evan on his wife's account, for $2 says, we need a Flurfs Anonymous. Hey, Aaron, if you're on your wife's account and you're giving me super chats, is that linked to her Google wallet or yours? <laughs> Stringer News 1 for $2 says, tra trains don't account for Coriolis. Checkmate. I know. The thing is, a train would be affected by Coriolis. Of course it would. A train is going to have a Coriolis force applied to it. But it's also on tracks. And the friction and the force applied by the walls of those tracks is way more than Coriolis. Um, Zumi. You can also be a managing mod. All right. 
That's it for now. I've got five managing mods. Uh, Snipey McSendit for five dollars says, "I hate fire of people bringing up snipers." Yeah, it looks like you might be a sniper. Um, now, generally, right? Snipers don't fire like say over a kilometer, and and under a kilometer, you you don't really need to take it into account. But over a kilometer, yes, you do, of course. And long range shooting has manuals for adjusting. Uh, JS Tiger for five dollars says Coriolis is an adjustment of about one point five miles per hour every minute of going north. Tiny, yeah. They don't understand that forces can exist that are very small. Well, I, I could just finish that with they don't understand, understand couldn't I? Um, right, guys. I, there's still six hundred you watching right now, and, and I I want to say something. Like, um, I've got like what fifty three thousand subs. Uh, so there's about like one, just over one percent of my fan base watching, which is pretty big, right? That's, that's a lot, because I I've got fifty two. I was watching Riona Poison the other day. who's a scam baiter. She's brilliant. She's got like one hundred twenty five thousand subs, right? But she only had like four hundred watching, and I, I, the I don't get it. I feel like the bigger channel, she should have so much more. Um, I don't know, maybe that's because she doesn't do many lives, but I see it a, a lot. Like, even channels like, you know, New Rockstar and that, that do a stream, they'll have just like one and a half thousand. They've got millions of subscribers. I feel like the amount of people that I get watching my streams compared to my subscribers is extremely high. And that, you know, that's incredible for me to see that you guys want to keep coming back here and putting your brains in danger. So, you know... Thank you so, so much. And also, do check out Riona Poison. It's my favorite channel at the moment. <laughs> um, Alison for $5 says, Flurf thinks it's okay to tell us about aviation with pilots present. What a dishonest prick. Yeah, he doesn't believe pilots, I guess. Uh, a string of news one for $2. Rats and tomatoes in space. Yes, because space tomato is in space. <laughs> space tomato for five dollars says small fact they're growing tomatoes in space in order to test the psychological impact on the astronauts aboard the iss of eating fresh tomatoes yeah now interest in the way that they're growing tomatoes in space is in a centrifuge so um it's it's constantly spinning right and what that does is for the tomatoes creates an artificial gravity which allows the seed to germinate the correct way because seeds need gravity or a force directing them down and up. Yeah, Steve Wilson, you're right. I reckon they should. Uh, no, Brenda, it's Riona Poison. That's the name of the channel that I'm enjoying right now. Riona Poison. Uh, in fact, could one of my mods just fight, get Riona's channel and put it in, in the chat? Because she needs a, she's brilliant. Uh, Jason Starnes for $2 says, tell him sick Jason said hey. Uh, I'll, I'll send him a screenshot of that, sick Jason. Thanks, mate. You've supported me for so long. Even before I was a, uh, a YouTuber, you kind of supported me on Facebook. Dude, thank you. There we go. Um, Draco Fires put Riona Poison's channel in the chat. Um, I know she's already got more subs than me, but she deserves more. She is, I think she's probably the best scam baiter. Uh, the way that... She, She's got my ability to make people angry. Like. <laughs> uh, Sarah Jones for two pounds says, shout out to the SpaceX Studio Rat family. It's not just one, it's a whole bunch. You know, I showed him that video. He's like, I didn't see that one. I saw a different one. It was definitely a rodent. So why on this one is it not a rodent, but on your one it was? Also, do you know how big those fucking engines are? The rodents will have to be as big as me. Uh, Borks uh, one for five dollars Australian says, "Please tell me this guy is new to flat Earth. I'm on my second bingo card. Yeah, three months, man. Scary, right? Uh, I'm I'm still not only halfway through my super chats, guys. Um, I'm gonna be here all night. <laughs> I don't know. What, honestly, I don't know what to say. It's blowing my mind." <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't like being mods on people's channel, Mary, either, because I would just boot people as well. Uh, Sid Elman for four... Oh, my God. Uh, Cataliana, um, Kate, Cataliana, Cataliana, 
another... That's... Oh my God. I'll get to that. If, if you're one of these people, say thank you. <laughs> Sid Alman for 4 99 says, Is this guy new? It's like listening to a bad DJ playing all the fur hits. Hefty FE, how do you manage to remain sane? Who says I'm sane? <laughs> I'm not... Well, I wouldn't do this if I was sane. Um, Stringer News 1 for $2 says, Give up, Craig. He's too dumb. <laughs> if I gave up when people were too dumb, I'd never be here. Fatty, member for one month, says, Poe or just stupid? I don't think he was a Poe. I think he's just gone deep into that rabbit hole. Let, let's put a poll up and see what we think. All right. Was Garrett a Poe or just really dumb? Well, uh, I did that wrong. <laughs> Was Garrett a Poe or just really dumb? Poe, dumb. There we go. Let's see what we think. Poe or dumb? I, I can't believe that, honestly, <laughs> how many people have supported me is insane. <laughs> Eon Dust for $5 Australian says, I think the title for this debate should be Baby's First Flat Earth Debate, since most of this was all entry-level flurf junk. Um, I think that's going to be something like Newbie Flurf Gets Ruined. Uh, Tim Tully for $5 says, In Vietnam, the USNC had radios that bounced off the troposphere. That was part of my job there. Yeah, he just directly denies that that's a thing that can happen. Like... Yeah, people tend to think he's dumb and not just a Poe. I think you're right. I don't think he was a Poe. But I've been wrong before. Uh, Nerd Alert for 31 months has been a member. Wow. Says, Q Sleepy Riley. I'm a dumb flat earther. Um... I'm a dumb flat earther. And I don't understand science. Yeah, we know, Riley. We, 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 we know. When I was a young boy, I grew up on the farm. I'm a, a country boy. And um, I used to fuck the cows that, that, and, and the pigs. I used to fuck the pigs and the cows would come and I would pat them and and look into their eyes. Sorry. He would fuck the pigs and the cows would come. That's impressive. <laughs> uh, Stringer News 1 for $2 says, Garrett for top left. Garrett for top left. If he carries on, might be there next year. Uh, Rach Bot for... Uh, oh, wait. JSS Tiger for $5 says, Within pressure, there's going to be a gradient of pressure. Flat earther. So much stupid. I couldn't respond to all the stupid he said. <laughs> um, Rachbot, my favourite AI, for $5 Australian says, this is an automated message, stupidity overload, your bot has crashed. Oh, um... Uh, Rachbot... Uh, .exe forward slash reboot... Uh, sorry, Rach. Um, you should be coming back online. I apologize. Blunt Man for $2 says, CB radio has the ability to bounce off the ionosphere. No, it doesn't. That's a lie! Uh, Connor Silverfair for $2 says, From all Michigandians, I apologize for Garrett. Yeah, I, I, they accept your apology. Don't worry. Uh, Connor Silverfair for $2 says, A scuba diver, his brain is oxygen starved. Yeah, is there anyone that is suffering from the bends? It's, it's that guy, right? <laughs> Baby flat earther gets spanked. Uh, the Sun Express for $5 says, Level B. 
Bev. <clears throat> Ted the Cooker for one ninety nine dollars says this guy fails compared to my seventh graders. Bad. Hey, are flat earthers smarter than seven year olds? That sounds like a viral video, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Rach. Sorry, I should have rebooted you sooner. My bad. <laughs> Tommy Gronville for 50 Nokias. Uh, this guy truly did his own research. He binge watched all the Flat Earth videos on YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook in just three months as well. Impressive. Tommy Gronville for another 20 Nokias. That's 70 Nokias. And um, the collected name for 70 Nokias is Thermonuclear Weapon. Uh, for 20 Nokias, it says the Google Foo is weak with this one. <laughs> Steve6464 for $5 says, Garrett, on one of your skydiving trips, did you land on your head? Yeah, you just forgot the parachute. Clearly. Tim Pryor for $20. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, perfect example of why flat earthers are a very, very tiny percent of the world's population that can't get out of the internet and mean something in the real world. Yes. I challenge you. Find me one useful invention. That was made by a flat earther. Did my TV just turn off? Can't have that. And pretty colours up there. Oh, I'll put it back on now. Oh, no, I'm, now I'm playing my own debate, don't worry. Oh, look, it's me. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> um, String News 1 for $2 says JM Truth Jr. Oh, God. You know, you're right. There was a lot of JM Truthish there, wasn't there? <clears throat> yeah, low tech. Infinity Craigs. That's not good. Connor Silverfer for $2 says he says third grade because he dropped out after that. Oh, man. Um, I mean... Third grade was probably a struggle for him. In fact, he's probably still in third grade. Uh, Tim Pryor for $5 says they're both in different countries. He doesn't believe in the speed of light, but he accepts that it can communicate in real time. Yeah. Literally, our knowledge of the speed of light is how this is happening. Excuse me. Uh, do, 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 do. Eon Dust for $5 Australian. Maybe if you spent more time listening in third grade and less time flicking boogers at girls, you wouldn't think the earth is flat, honey. <laughs> uh, Tim Pryor for five dollars says, but yet repeats everything flat earthers say. Imagine that. Yeah, flurfs are parrots. We know this. Steve six four six four five dollars. Garrett, so you've measured the stars for the last thousand years and have data showing the stars don't move. Let's see it. No, he 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 doesn't because I've got data showing it does move. Janos Takos for one thousand and twenty four huffs says physicists only got the inverse square law right. But they're wrong about everything else. Radio waves, gravity, pressure, rockets, etc. Sounds legit. I love that about the inverse square law. He kept going on about it. Without realising what I was saying. The inverse square law does not reduce to zero. It cannot. Therefore, the light will always be there. The Sun Express for $5 says, This flirt is seriously threatening using Cation's guy throne. Absurping Cation's, uh, Cation's guy throne. Yeah, uh... <laughs> The Cation guy was great. Uh, I don't think he's ever coming back, though. Siggy Sigwell for $5 says this guy is a clown. Absolutely. Talking about clowns. The sun, we're told, is a big gaseous ball burning in, in space in a vacuum. By the way, since we're on the subject of vacuum, fire, the element by which the sun exerts its energy, and I don't care if it's nuclear fission or what, it's still fire. No, you don't Needs care, what do element, you? folks, in order to continue to burn? Oxygen. Oxygen. I'll never fucking get bored of that clip, honestly. <laughs> oh, um... 
So you don't need the toilet anymore. Why? Because your body has reabsorbed all of what was contained in your bladder that you would consider waste. Well, it's not waste, or you, your body would, there's no way it would reabsorb it. For example, transparency, subpar. Hello. Oh, that's just piss. That's just straight up piss. <laughs> I could watch that all day, honestly. All right, let's, let's get my ugly face back on camera. <coughs> uh, Ernie, Matt Powell ain't real. Uh, <laughs> uh, Siggy Sigwell, no, read that one. Tim Pryor for five dollars says, "In other words, I could put my hand in a three hundred and fifty degree oven, but I can't touch the metal in it." Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you couldn't put your hand in a pot of water, right? A pot of you can, but you boil that water, and you can't even put your hand in that, right? But you can go to a steam room, and that steams the same temperature as that pot of boiling water, but like it's all spread out. There's less heat being transferred. Magic, right? And then we got Siggy Sigweld giving 20 gifted memberships. Like, like I said, Siggy, from the bottom of my heart, dude, your support's incredible. Uh, about two thirds of the way through the super chats, guys. I'm getting there. Thank you. Uh, Cody Payne for $10. Craig, have you considered adopting the debate strategy of just saying, I'm not convinced to every other point? It's so much easier than actual critical thought or inte intellectual honesty. Yeah, maybe I should just do a debate acting like a flurf. I'll just use their standards of evidence for everything. What do you reckon? Tim Pryor for $5 says, I went to Antarctica freely, so he's full of it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go there freely. I was kind of ordered to. But yeah, people can go there. Stringers won $2. I'm not crazy, is what crazy people say. Yes, it is. Um, K Doc for 3001 I think. Uh, Angular Portuguese Treaty of 1373. Yeah, there's lots of treaties that have been going for a long time. <laughs> Tim Pryor for five dollars says millions of people have lost jobs depending have millions of people literally have jobs depending on gravity. But sure, it doesn't exist. PhD Tony, he knows gravity exists because he uses it in his job. Uh, Low Tech became a new member. Welcome to Destroyers. Thank you very much. Stringer News one for two dollars. He thinks that Tide Pods cause things. <laughs> no, he's too busy eating the Tide Pods. And then another two dollars says move over Witless. There's a new dumpster king. Aye. Uh, um, I need to get him in that Discord. Because I... Oh, fucking hell. Draco Fire. How you doing, my friend? For $5, actually we do. If you take literally any American high school science class that isn't biology, you, you use the metric system. Always. <laughs> he didn't go to high school. Steve6464 for $5. Garrett, call your local community college, talk to a counsellor and ask about getting your GED. Um, he, he needs to finish, like, junior school first. Connor Silver for $2. Not a dumbass. Doesn't know miles equals imperial units. Hey, at least he got the internal angles right, guys. The Sun Express for five dollars. I am an American. I don't know how to use the imperial system. Flurf's can't metric right. Flurf's can't math right, man. PhD Tony, the only real person in the room for ten dollars Australian, says I have a doctorate, but not a lot of money. This is because I think people who are most interested in money are generally cunts. <laughs> Oh, Tony, you don't need a lot of money because you're still one of the most awesome people I know. Uh, or, um, even though you don't have money um, or a lot of money, thank you for supporting me the way you do. Tim Pryor for $5. I didn't go to college. I make good money, but I'll admit I'm kind of ignorant to physics. But when explained to me, I totally get it. That's because you're not willfully ignorant, Tim. You are willing to listen to people. Uh, Lord, it's probing time. 666. Two hundred Australian dollars. I I, I, I I don't know what to say. Uh, that's that's a stupid amount of money to, to give me. Um, like, I genuinely speechless. Thank you. Gonna, I'm getting goosebumps. I feel like I'm, I might tear up. So please don't. He says it's been a while, so here's a catch up. I won't complain if you wrench, uh, if you wrench me either. So call it a bribe if you like. Uh, 
I'll take no offense if you refuse. Um, I thought you were wrenched. Yeah, you are. You've got a wrench, Lord. It's probing time. You're you're already one of my um, moderators, dude. But um, thank you for that. Like two hundred dollars, bud. From from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Uh, Tim Pryor, five dollars. I'm going with the Earth curvature calculator, but going to use the eight inch per mile squared. Well, well, that's a lie. Yeah, most Earth curve calculators use something like h equals r times one um, over cos a, uh, or they use calculators to take into account the height of the person. You know, PhD Tony for five dollars Australian says uh, isobaric surfaces follow the curve of the Earth. Yeah, most. You know, a lot of things follow the curve of the earth because gravity makes it do that. Tim Pryor for $5 says, well, I tried again. I cannot drink myself this stupid. Don't try. You will die. <laughs> um, Alan Marju for $2 says the one mile is not 90 degrees going up, then turn. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Uh, they don't get that it's like, you know, not straight line of sight. That and then PhD Tony again for $10 Australian. Oh, thank you, Tony. Dude, seriously. We can determine the shape of the Earth and the propagation of seismic and atmospheric pressure waves, repropial, scenic angles, global navigation, satellite systems, and dozens of other techniques. Yeah, but um, I'm going to read that super chat again, Tony, right? But I'm going to read it as a flat earther would hear it, okay? That's when when you're a flat earther, what you just said, that's how it sounds. Okay? Uh Pitbull 420, member for 23 months, so close to twice around the sun. Uh says denial, denial, denial. Much denial. <laughs> Ultimate reductionist says, Can I send you a trillion FTX coins, Craig? Yeah, why not? They're probably worth negative something now, right? <laughs> Siggy Sigweld. Thank you, buddy. For another $2 says, the Nile is a river in Egypt. Yep, he should definitely go there because he's already in it. James Hogarth for £5 says, I'm familiar with it. Equals, I have no idea and I refuse to listen to the actual answer. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Well, tell me what it is then. I don't know. Um... Glenn Riley for £2.50 says, Gary brings all the dumb. Yeah, like I said, I'm sorry about the Gary bot. Uh, I'm not good at programming stuff. I know Draco, it's a good one, right? <laughs> Eon Dust for um, $2 Australian. No step on snack. Thank you. I, it's, I've just seen what else. More. This, I. Siggy Sigwell, two dollars. Want to see Craig cry? Of I'm, I'm getting fucking close. <laughs> Tell software for ten dollars. Thanks for being a great source of entertainment and knowledge over the years. I fucking love doing this. I love it because you people are amazing, and it's so much fun. And I'm gonna keep being your source of entertainment and knowledge. Um, ten years, all right. I promised you guys. 10 years of this channel, all right? That, that's my plan. 10 years, and then I retire. All right? And maybe even after then, the channel will kind of keep going. But um, this, this channel will be doing what I would love doing at least for the next 10 years. Because you guys... You, mm. Mr. Toffee's member for 14 months. Oh, fuck's sake. I've just seen that come in. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Toffee's member for 14 months says, I've stopped with pills. Weed all the way for me. Raman to that, brother. Dude, you guys. Lord, it's probing time for five dollars Australian says I just want to say I don't mean to make you get overly emotional. We appreciate you and you value your work. Um I am I am an emotional person. I am. I I cry, I, I show my emotions, uh, I it's just how I am and right now seeing this stupid level of support 
like I'm struggling to keep it down. I, 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 I can't say enough what this means to me and how much I love doing what I do because of you guys. And I don't need this. You know, you don't need to do, I'm going to do this whether I make no money on a stream or not. I, I love you. All of you. Not you, Gary. <laughs> Matt Patak for 199 says FTFE. Tip for the US say be quiet, not shut up. I know Sharp seemed to work that trigger in pretty well. Sniping McSend it for $10 says if you ever need an actual sniper to debunk them, let me know, man. I got you. I would love that, actually. Come into the Discord server with me on a Monday one day. Um, Caitlin Veron, uh, sorry, Cataliana Veron became a new member. Welcome to Destroyers. Thank you very much. Uh, Adrian Bell, for a member for 30 months, says, Did I miss a dumpster fire? Stay awesome, Craig. It was a dumpster fire, yes. And you're very close to seeing me cry. So stay around. <laughs> NANA for $6.66 says, We are a little demented. You have to be to watch this. <laughs> and then, get this, guys. Cataliana Veren, who's a new member. Not, they're just here. And then they gifted 50 memberships. 50! As, if, again, a lot of you said thank you to Ziggy, but you know, if you've, if, if one of you were the people that got a membership from um, Katiana, say thank you to them because I mean, that's fifty at four ninety nine a pot, guys. I, you don't understand. Albias for five Canadian dollars says, "Who can see Jupiter and Venus tonight? They're still this far apart." Also, we're here because you, awesome Craig. Um, they're, they're a lot further apart than that, honest. <laughs> um, it's been cloudy here, unfortunately. I would love to see it. Um, no, and you're awesome. All the fucking flashing lights. Hugh Jars for seven ninety nine Australian dollars says, from the biggest YouTuber ever. He is the biggest ever. A super chat to keep Craig talking and away from bed. Let Emma sleep, you rock. <laughs> my kids get up to go to bed, uh, to go to, my, my kids get up to go to school in like four hours. All right, I'm going to, you know, and then I go swimming and stuff. So uh, he needs sleep. I'd stay up all night for you guys. <laughs> Albias for two Canadian dollars says, does water get the bends? Uh, uh, what? <laughs> Wizard of Ozo, mel welcome to Scrappers, new member, thank you. An industrial nerd upgraded his membership to Destroyers. Fucking get in. Glenn Riley for two pound. Oh my God. My last message meant to say Garrett, not Gary. Oh, Gary works though, because Gary's also a fucking idiot, but thank you. Jason Starnes for two pounds says, I think we met in Nathan Thompson's original group. Very possibly. I was only there for like a week and a half before I got booted, but. <laughs> uh, Nerd Alert for 5.99 euros. Lumens are also wrong unit for talking about the inverse square law. That's for, lu that's for luminous flux, total app, but he should have used lux or luminance, yeah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Of course he doesn't. <sighs> Matt Tack for 199 says he changed from can't go there to she did a part. Yeah, um, that's because he's dishonest. <sighs> Tim Pryor for $50. <laughs> well, $50 just because you're awesome. <laughs> Don't cry again. You didn't need to do that. Thank you. And then string a new... <laughs> string a new one, $100. A fucking $100. Grand gesture. Dude, Stringer, you know how much you supported me and what, what it means. Like, you don't... You've been here since the beginning, dude, and my channel wouldn't exist without you. With um, what you did when my laptop died and helped me get my new setup. Like, then you're doing that. <sighs> Literally, love. Tim Pryor for $10 says, damn, you guys are awesome. I'm not going to go that high, though. <laughs> no, come on, he did 100. You've got to do two. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Oh, my. Uh, Siggy Sigweld, $6.66. Hail Sagan. It's not about the money, bro. It's about the love. And the love comes back. Believe me, the love comes back. Uh, Katliana Verin for $20. Uh, 
Um, says, by the way, the name is pronounced Catalina. It was a good try, though. All right, thank you. Catalina, thank you. So you can be 50 members today. Became a member yourself and you're chucking me super chats. Like, I can't say thank you enough on it. Say, uh, guys, please say thank you to Catalina. Uh, Catalina. Because, um, you know, for someone who's new to the channel, the support they show me is, is mental. Oh, what's Garrett saying? The earth is still flat. No, it's not, Garrett. You're just a fucking moron. Garrett, is this flat? No. But your brain is. Uh, Connor Silver for $5 says, You've built a community, Craig. And while I can't go to the same level others can, you need to know we all love you and support you. Stay healthy. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I've had some health issues lately, I, I know. Um, I'm going to explain a bit more about those in the video in the next couple of days. But uh, this community means so much to me and i love honestly I, I love you all finally i got to the last super chat um kind of started reading them an hour ago <laughs> the copper in quarter for two canadian dollars says thank you for your service sir thank you for your support all of you there's like still 520 of you watching right now just like watching me read out super chats Oh, love it. Um, <laughs> here is a picture that Space Tomato just sent me. <laughs> Where'd it go? Here we go. <laughs> so, Garrett, there's the globe. And my cat, Dave, with a helmet on. <laughs> Thank you, Zumi. Dave's in space. <laughs> oh. Um, you, get, you deserve it tonight, guys. So, uh, you get the song. Enjoy. <laughs> We pretend that airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars. Should we wish for a brain, brain right, right now? now? Brain right now, now. brain right now. Morning. These words come with a storm warning. Better batten down the hatches, grab some matches and brace yourself for a long day of misery. YouTube has given me the power to reach up into the sky and show you all that we live on the ball. I bring you science that's comprehensible. Your view is indefensible. You're reprehensible. No one is sensible. When I was young I never thought I would be here to see this. A pile of random monsters dressed up as bulls. Your ignorance will be the death of us all Like running head first full speed into a wall You could always read a book by a telescope Set it up and take a photo of the moon Or just be a buffoon I send you in a balloon Onto the stratosphere of page three You're a few fries short of a happy meal You're dumber than a box of hair The wheel's spinning but the hamster's dead And you're as smart as bait you forgot to pay your brain bill You're missing a few buttons on the remote control 24 cents short of a quarter You're surfing in Nebraska You're as bright as Alaska in December And you fell out of your family tree You don't have all the cornflakes in one box You got an IQ of two and it takes three to grunt The elevator doesn't go all the way up And there's a vacancy on the top floor Your antenna doesn't pick up all the channels you're several not short of a You Mr. Cake. Sensible, calm down, don't go too hard You don't need the Hasselberian flubs in your backyard You're a man of science, poison grace Mage, who did everything to wipe the grins off the face So Nathan, Nathan, get away, get away from those, those kids. kids The world is not flat and it doesn't have a lip Recognise the differences between the textbook and the Bible And control yourself, lay off your slander and your lie. You're a bunch of knobs poisoning the well of the youth Spreading lies that you like to claim as knowledge and truth Stop spreading fresh bullshit like the butter on your bread Maybe your musical assault knocks some sense into your head I hope one day you'll hear these lyrics and smile And you realise you used to be a 40 year old child Now it's time to wake up, open your eyes and see And acknowledge the existence of You're a few clowns short of a circus Your phone is off the hook Your sewing machine is out of thread Your 
rock foam and no beer. You don't have all your doubts and one leash, your intellect rivaled only by garden tools. There's no grain in your silo, and your skylight leaks a little. Your belt doesn't go through all the loops. You couldn't pour water out of a boot without instructions on the heel. Your slinky's kinked, and you'll prove that evolution can work in reverse. A few feathers short of a whole duck, one fruit short of a whole bowl. Tell me if I had airplanes bowl. in the night sky, I like shooting stars. Should be wishing for a brain right now. It was over? Well, I'm still standing while you're swinging, flinging feces, talking shit just like the human centipede. You've got the mind of a chimp, and I'm here to expedite your shore leave. Because I'm a seaman, but not the kind I writ up on your mum's gums. I'm the kind that sells submarines and fired guns. I could float a boat across the ocean with my eyes closed. So I could navigate the globe with a compass and a bag of sausage rolls. Well, all you can do is nibble on your toes. I smack you with the hose that you pour the water level, sit and swivel. You nasal gaze in Muppet, you can stuff it harder than the wallet stuffed by Warren Buffett. And I don't care about your sauces unless you're serving them. And I don't care about your lines unless you're curving them. A step away from me, you're sucking up my oxygen with the vacuum where your brain should be, you dumb fuck. Dave's in space. Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight the fight. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight the fight. Fight the flat. 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 Fight the fight the fight the flat. 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 Fight the flat